I just need to research everything all the time. It's like the last year I've been pretty much reprogramming my brain and, and just trying to really learn history and, and, and learn how things really happened. Yeah, well, what happened is um, I was just watching some, some stuff on Netflix and I saw a movie called The World Trade Center, okay? And it was a movie with Nicolas Cage and some other people in it. And what it was about, it was about the firefighters. And it was about them being trapped under the rubble and it showed that perspective for the whole movie. And it was like hell on earth, you know what I mean? Uh, it was a real, real, you know, depressing, sad movie. And after seeing that, um, I wanted to see more. I wanted to learn more about 9-11 because I had only learned what I had seen on the news. At this time, I had still trusted the news, though. I didn't know about, you know, how they, how they, you know, basically put out tons of disinformation and, and hide information from you and all that. Um, so what I did is I just, all I did is I searched 9-11 in the little search box. It's the first thing that went through your head just after initially seeing it. I just wanted to cry, to be honest with you. It's terrible. Thank you, Lieutenant. Stay safe. Yeah, you know, they were planning yeah. to take down a building. Boom, 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 boom. All the way down. I was watching it and running. It just ran up And then you just saw the, this cloud of shit chasing you down. Could not run it. Could not run it. I, could not run it. I jumped behind a battalion car. I hit under the car. I was swinging the car. You never really think about it when, you know, things are moving so fast and everything's, you know, they, it's kind of all hidden behind the emotions. But when you start to analyze it, I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous to think that three buildings can turn to dust. Uh, it's ridiculous to think that any buildings can turn to dust, never mind all the contents in it. And it's, you know, to think that two airplanes hitting two buildings made a third building come down too. And, you know, most Americans don't even know about Tower 7. I mean, they don't have any clue about it. I mean, I, I realize that if they're going to lie to us about this, they're going to lie to us about everything. So, I mean, not even just September 11th, I started looking at this. Everything. So my whole focus changed. All these people that say they saw explosions, heard explosions and all this, and all the firefighters that say they saw it. So once I saw that, I was, like, really taken back. So I had to investigate everything. Watch every documentary they had. Watch every clip on YouTube. Try and get, you know, the whole story. And, you know, for a long time, I was preaching that to everybody. I used a lot of it to wake a lot of people up. But, you know, now looking back upon it, it was a lot of uh, disinfo. But it's still good that I saw it because, it, you know, it, like I said, it was like a switch for me. And it just made me want to be aware of everything that's going on around me now. tell people you know it's kind of like this um, you know when you're first when you're first just still believing the official story and you believe in everything you see on the news it's almost like you know you're in their mental box and when you break out of that box and you think you're free now and you start getting all this other information you're really inside another box that they threw you in and, and what it is 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 they give you they disguise it by giving you 80% of the truth but then they'll mislead you on the other 20% and they have to give you 80% of the truth. You'll never trust them, and they know that. So they talk about all these things that, that are already out there, like GMO food and vaccines and this and that. But when it comes to 9-11, oh boy, they're not going to tell you the truth. They're going to they're gonna lie to you and mislead you, and hopefully by that time... So Building 7 was a 47-story steel frame building. And it fell at 5.20 in the afternoon on 9-11, having not been hit by a plane.
And if you look at it, you can go on the internet, put in YouTube Building 7 Collapse. You will see the most obvious controlled demolition you will ever see. Uh, this is Building 7 in the World Trade Center. Uh, area is, is collapsing. Uh, now whether uh, we don't we, we don't even know whether this was uh, something that was uh, engineered for safety reasons or it just happened uh, as a consequence of the the two collisions. The first 2.5 seconds of that building falling were in free fall speed because what was below, as the top fell, had already gone because it was a controlled demolition. You see. Um, Every now and again, you see on the news, you see stadiums blown up and big towers come down and they fall. They don't fall over where they can hit other buildings. They fall on their own footprint. It's exactly what Building 7 did. I think because I am willing to look at anything, okay? Um, I looked into a theory in regarding 9-11 that I knew was totally wrong. Uh, it's, it sounded outlandish to me. Uh, these other little bells that rang in my head would have never went off, and I would have never discovered the real information because it kind of it kind of led me in, in an indirect route to the real information. And if some people, uh, you know, if you want to get the whole story behind anything, and not even just September 11th, I mean, behind anything, I mean, how can you expect to get it if you're not willing to listen to all sides? There's value even in listening to people that are telling a falsehood because there might be little bits of truth in there that you can pick out, and if you're good enough recognize it and pick it out you know you, you can use that and that's exactly what happened uh, this woman was trying to explain a totally different theory and I started noticing things in the pictures that I'd never noticed before um, and this is the official government explanation of why building 7 fell was because of office furnishings fires. Freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward. Come here! Come here! I mean, it absolutely made me realize that the whole Bin Laden tale was absolutely, totally false. I mean, there was no way this guy did any of the things they said. Every part of the official story was uh, pretty much proven wrong. I mean, whether it be scientifically or just, I mean, just common sense. Just so many things that can't happen in the world supposedly all happened on that day. I can't sit on information like this. I mean, I can't. I have to tell people. That would just eat away at me every day of my life if I knew this and I didn't tell people. And I didn't pass it on. Um, I'm actually, I'm, I'm so glad that uh, I, I'm able to, to be part of, of, you know, the group of people that's going to, you know, put this message forward and, and hopefully get everybody to realize what a fraud it was. Sound it out. Get ready. What word? Hit. Yes, hit. Boys and girls, sound this word out. Get ready. Steal. What word? Steal. Yes, steal. Read these words the fast way. Get ready. Play. Yes, play. Get ready. Must. Yes, must. Let's read these words the fast way without making a mistake. Get ready. Kite. Yes, kite. Get ready. Kick. Yes, kick. Get ready. Steal. Yes, steal. Get ready. Play. Yes, play. Get ready. Must. Yes, must. Open your book up to lesson 60 on page 150.
All right, everyone. Welcome back. Dose of reality. And if you're watching on April 7th, the day before the eclipse that everybody's talking about, April 7th, 2024 is today's date. If you're watching, this is live. And I did mean to get the date up on the screen. Starting off a little fun today. The trolls are out in full force, as we can see. Trying to throw me off my game. Good luck with that. <laughs> you guys are dealing with a professional. <clears throat> Let's tell everybody the plan. You know what? I did forget one thing before I started. Let me just see. I wanted to tape my camera with another piece of tape because I think it's about to fall off. Um, but if it falls, I guess I'll just grab it if the tape's not here. Uh, yeah, I think the tape might be out in my car. Oh, well, hopefully it'll hold the way it is. So, welcome to the show. Uh, tell everybody the game plan. We'll get a shout-out going, and then I guess we'll get rolling on out, right? So, game plan today. Uh, I am multi-streaming on all the platforms that I use. Um, so, today, that means we are live on the YouTube main channel. We're live on Rumble. We're live on Rockfin, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, and it will be uploaded to Odyssey and BitChute uh, tomorrow, basically, usually how I do it. Um, so uh, I do plan on streaming the entire show everywhere. Of course, getting into some of the things I'm going to get into today, there's always the chance I might need to cut YouTube, so just keep that in mind, depending on how far we take the conversation. Uh, if that's the case, it's streaming everywhere. The only one that's a paid site is Rockfin. Everywhere else is free. There's plenty of places to find it, which I just told you all about. And if you can't find me on other platforms by now, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but I do plan on streaming the whole thing and trying to keep it uh, safe enough to keep up. Um, but on top of that, I think later on, I'm going to bring some uh, guests on. Did I upgrade my green screen, says David? Uh, no, I have the same green screen that I had at the house at, with Karen and Ted, uh, but the light is different in this room. Uh, a lot more sunlight comes in, even though the blinds are closed, so it, it lights it up more evenly. I'm using the same green screen and the same backdrop, but there's definitely more light uh, and different type of light that comes in here, so it's completely uh, different. Um, so I do plan on multi-streaming the whole show, uh, but after I talk for a while, I think I'm gonna bring some guests on. And when I say guests, I mean um, <clears throat> members. So I saw Double D signed up for a subscription. Thank you very much. I have members on Ko-fi and on Patreon. If you're considering signing up, please do Ko-fi because Patreon takes a sizable cut. Um, and all that means is uh, people that want to support me monthly. You don't have to do that. Um, but I do like to throw people a bone and thank them for that. And also... I'm not, I like to bring people on the panel besides just the people I invite that have channels and stuff. Um, but I don't like to drop a link in the chat. I got burned with that so many times in the beginning of my YouTube days, porn bomb, the whole thing. And I don't really, it's not my vibe to have like trolls roll up on my show and argue with them. I don't really give a fuck about all that. Um, but I do like to bring members on because they're people of my community, people I know, people that I definitely know aren't trolls. Um, so... Sometimes I do members only streams or sometimes I do a stream like I'm going to do tonight. I'll do a multi stream. But at some point during the show, typically when I would be ready to open phones normally, I'll take the Zoom link and I'll send all you guys an email. OK, so everybody that's on Kofi or Patreon, we usually get an email for the private streams, wherever your email is. Um, when I'm ready, I'm going to send all you guys a Zoom link. All you have to do is click it and you'll be able to come up on the panel on video and join the show. OK. Um, there's an automated thing that sends out if somebody signs up during the show. There might be a link that says, hey, tonight's private stream. That's just because it's from last time. I haven't changed it yet. Um, but I will send an email to all members uh, when I'm ready to go ahead and do that. You guys will all get a fresh email with a Zoom link. All right. So let's give everybody a shout out because <clears throat> I got some important stuff to get into tonight. So let's see. Over on Rockfin, we got nine people so far. Uh, Sean Alke with the $5 Super Chat. Thank you so much, brother. Uh, David McDonald asked the same thing about the green screen. Oh, was that him that I saw that I read off the screen? Because I have all my chats integrated. Uh, but yeah, thank you, David. It does, it does look better. Uh, it's just more evenly lit. Um, so 
Oh, also, the other thing, too, is I did uh, get a stand that, you know, I can show you, but I'll show you after because I don't want to move my camera right now. I won't have trouble getting it up. But I got like a stand for it with clips so it's holding it the way it's meant to be, whereas I just had it tacked into a wall and it was like just draping down behind me uh, before. So that is a big difference. Rumble, we have two sis, uh, 23DD67, Centerville Effect, Uncle Toto. Uh, amongst the 25 people on Rumble already, which is good to see. And 112 on YouTube so far. And let's scroll on up as far as it'll let me go, which I know won't be all the way to the top, but let's go from there. So we have Push and Buttons. We have Treble C, Diane Red Heifer, uh, Julio Lua, uh, Raven Wolf, C3PO's Golden Calf, Loosh Factory, Josh Davidson, RT, uh, Joyce B, C-3PO, Three Fingers, uh, No Despair Bear, Raven Wolf, Loosh Factory, Saddlebum, Mr. Trice Megas Tus. I don't know what the fuck that means, but cool. Uh, or Master Trice Megas Tus. Joyce B, Rogier, Tom, 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 uh, Red Pilled Rants, Tanner Johnson, uh, Ruled by Saturn. Uh, I wonder if that's the same Tanner that used to get triggered over on Max channel when we would talk about the Mandela effect. There's a lot of those types of people. Tonight's show is not going to be mostly about the Mandela effect, though. I'm getting into other stuff tonight. Fear porn, the truth community, stuff like that. We will get to some Mandela effect later, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, deniers are liars. It's funny. Uh, Joshua, who wrote, uh, Brian, can you make a video of the weird encounters you've had similar to the piano guy singing the Souls song? I, well, I actually have that whole encounter with the piano guy actually on video. I have, I have all that. Um, it's hard to search things on YouTube. Um, but if you go to my Odyssey and you use the search feature on my channel there and just type, like, piano, uh, it'll come up. Um, Neo. Uh, let's see, who else? Julio Lua, Kim Ray, M.E. Funny, Conscious Writer, Rethink, Guitar Bear, J. Dogs, Tony Coriolis, uh, Puzzle Boxes. This thing skipped all over on me, so I'm going to miss a lot of people, but it ain't on purpose. But yeah, I guess that'll about do it for right now. Unindoctrinated. Um, J. Dogs, if I didn't say J. Dogs. Thank you. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's get resituated here with my windows. All right. Perfect. <clears throat> So, welcome. Welcome to the show. Tonight, we're going to take it back. Way back. Way back into, like, why I do what I do and why it's still so relevant right now and why my message never changes as far as that goes. Uh, but we're going to get into some specifics of uh, some of the things that the normies believe, some of the things that the truthers believe. We're actually going to get into a lot of these things. And we're going to discuss it. Uh, but before we get into all of that. Um, <clears throat> past shows. I just did a show on Caravan of Consciousness. With Amanda McLeod. She's in the chat right now. Raven Wolf. Make sure you sub and bell her channel. Make sure you sub and bell and check out that interview on her channel. And it is also mirrored uh, up on my channels. Um, I mirrored it on Friday. I was on her show on Wednesday. Um, I also was on Flatsoids uh, yesterday. I put that up on all my platforms except YouTube. I didn't, just didn't want to put two videos up today because YouTube sucks in a million ways. And one of the things they do that they've been doing for like the last year, sometimes if you put a video up and then you put a second video up in the same day, the notification on people's phones for the second video, even if it's a live stream, it'll tell you Brian Stavely uploaded two videos. And it's like, no, fucking Brian Stavely's live right now. And I didn't want that to happen for tonight's show, so... I held off on Mirror and that, but you can find it up on all my other platforms. Uh, yeah, so me and Amanda talked a lot about probably some of the things I'm going to touch on today for sure. Um, even though it was probably two-thirds of the show is about the Mandela effect. Um, but again, the Mandela effect is just the word. And I mean, we're really talking about the function of reality and what this place is. So, so many things fall under that umbrella. But the first hour or so was about the start of my journey and a lot to do with that day in September. We're not going to do a, another... Uh, September breakdown uh, right here. We're actually not going to go too deep into it. We're going to touch on it and some other things because it is the basis for a lot of this discussion, um, which I think is very important. So 
I gotta <clears throat> I gotta remember to plug a few things coming up too. So let me get let me get rolling here and get this all out of the way. Um, this Wednesday I'm doing another interview. Okay, I've been doing an interview like every Wednesday because that's been my day off from work, uh, other than on the weekend. So I've been planning my interviews there and then you know doing these shows as I'm ready to do them. I kind of like this Sunday night thing, honestly. Saturday is hard for me, man. I'm I'm recovering all day Saturday. If I'm literally beat from work from Thursday and Friday. And like, and it's, it's a good day for me to just chill, get out, have a nice dinner, do some show prep. That's what I did last night. Um, enjoy my Saturday and then just do the, do the shows on Sunday. So I never really have a schedule. Anybody that's been watching me for six years on here or have been following me for 14 years knows I don't really do a schedule much. But I did have a schedule when me and Karen were doing our shows on Thursday nights. Um, and... I did have a schedule way back in the day with some of my 9-11 shows. Um, you can typically expect to see me Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. Um, as far as Wednesday nights interview, is it live? I'm not sure. Uh, the last one wasn't on the typical Skeptic podcast or Amanda's. They were both pre-recorded and then I put them up. Um, I hope it's live. I like the interaction with the live audience, um, especially... Uh, what am I going there to talk about? I think I'm going there to talk about the Mandela effect. Um, and that, that's one you really need the interaction with the audience. I mean, it adds so much to the conversation, I think. More so than a lot of the other topics. Getting that interaction, uh, going through that, just blowing minds. So hopefully it is, but if it isn't, I'll premiere it on my channel like I do. And then you'll see me back again with another live show probably a week from today. Um, <clears throat> somebody wrote in the chat earlier... Uh, insinuate asking if I was still a grifter uh, promoting the Mandela effect listen if I was a fucking grifter I wouldn't have decided to step back away from the truth movement a little bit do less streams and be working 50 hours a week now behind the fucking bar if I was a grifter my message wouldn't be what it's going to be about today which is to not live in and not promote fucking bullshit fear if I was a grifter, I would tell you how the world's going to end tomorrow, how they're going to kill you with the thing that they're going to stick in you, how the military is going to come down the street, they're going to black out everybody in the country, starve you out. And my numbers would go up because people love fear. I already know this, but that's not what I'm about. I'm just somebody here speaking my mind, trying to get people to not live in fear, trying to get people to trust their senses and try and get people to not limit their thoughts on what they think they know about what this reality is when the journey keeps continuing. Do I make some money off here? Yeah, you're right. You're damn right I do, and I deserve to. Never thought about doing it until actually I think Christian suggested it to me in like the beginning of 2020. Hey, you should do like Patreon streams. People would support you. I was like, ah, you know, I never even taken a donation at that point. Well, I'm glad I did. Because now that gives me enough income on the side where I can do this and do my other thing and continue to do what I need to do. So much love to everybody that's ever donated to the show. It is extremely helpful. <clears throat> so no, I'm not a grifter. But like I said in the chat to you, if you consider, uh, you know, all things considered, I guess I am a grifter because your mom Dukes is still paying me to tap the skin, son. You know what I mean? So there's that. All right, let's just go right to 14 years ago. 14 years ago, uh, I realized uh, all of a sudden, not a gradual thing, just all of a sudden, because of some stuff I stumbled onto and it kind of opened a light, uh, turned a light on in my head, whatever, not opened a light, that sounds stupid, right? Um, that what we were told about on 9-11 was complete bullshit. Okay. What you have to understand is what I keep repeating over and over and over and over and over again. They know that a good amount of people are going to know that these things are bullshit. 9-11, the moon landing, the last four years, take your pick of a fucking event that they've portrayed to us. Do you not think that there's a plan for you when you think you have moved out of Normieville. Of course there is. So you know what I believe about that day, that it's complete media fakery. 
a complete movie chopped up to look like newscasts with actors and Hollywood trickery and everything. And these things don't work if real people are perishing. And I don't mean because of their lack of knowledge. I mean because of governments dropping buildings on the head in broad daylight. Now, let's talk about what people believe as, as, a, as a normie, right? You're a normie, right? Let's talk about this. If you're a normie, and you guys can type things in the chat to add to the list. I'll try and glance over when I can. But some of the things that you're most likely afraid of if you're a normie, right? Terrorists, right? Probably pretty scared of terrorists, Muslim terrorists, right? Rogue nations. Korea's got nukes and blah, 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 and add nukes to that list, okay? Deadly viruses, right? School shooters. Child abduction. These are probably the things that you're scared of, right? And I'm sure there's more, but those are, I think, the big ones, right? Terrorists, rogue nations, school shooters, deadly viruses, child abduction. And I see in the chat people are writing meteors and stuff, and I get that, and we laugh at the NASA stories and stuff. But I generally think that most people don't really pay too much attention to that shit. I really don't. I really think they don't really pay too much attention when they're told the media is coming close to the earth and all that. We get a laugh out of it. Uh, <laughs> Rachel wrote trans people. <laughs> oh, fucking hilarious. Um, so let's take a look now at not only what truthers fear, but I'm not just doing this to compile a list and show you where you think my message is going. I have another, another underlying point about what the, what the normies can actually do about it versus the truthers. The truthers are going to tell you that you're going to be killed by chemtrails. They don't just think this. They make sure they get vocal and tell you. You're going to be killed by chemtrails, forced jabs, 5G is going to make you drop, you're going to be thrown in a FEMA camp. Military is going to be in the street. There's going to be no food. There's going to be worldwide blackouts. This whole place is going to be reset on you. And there's going to be the rise of the motherfucking Antichrist walking amongst us. Woo! Obviously, there's many more things you could add to the list. We could sit here probably all day and compile a fucking list like that Chris Jericho list when you see the meme and he's got the, he's reading off. I think that's when he told Dean Malenko how many holes he had. He's like a thousand, three holes or something. He's got this huge paper. Uh, you could list all these things that the truthers promote. Now, none of us know what's really going to happen in the end of this big picture. This movie earth production that we seem to live in on this fluid reality, right? We don't know the ending. So I can't say some really bad shit isn't going to happen to us, but I don't ever think about that. And I've been here for 14 years as far as paying attention to these types of things, right? And, well, I'm not dead. Are you dead? I'm not dead. Anybody here been thrown in a FEMA camp? Anybody? Anybody here been starved out because they refused to sell you food? And don't tell me, oh, uh, you know, 2020 and you had a, you still got food. And they were never going to let it get to the point where you didn't get food. They were definitely going to make it a fucking hassle. And they were going to psyop you and try and mentally beat you down. But you got to understand, we're like, you know, <clears throat> the majority of people are like just slaves to their system. They run the system. They're going to feed the fucking slaves. They're going to give you food. They're going to give you electricity. How are they going to brainwash you if the power's out? <laughs> the last thing they're going to do is starve you and cut the power. The last thing they're going to do is a worldwide genocide and wipe out the entire population when the entire population does their bidding and is a bunch of fucking lemmings. Who pushes more fear? The normies 
or the truthers. I don't even think it's close at this point. It's not even a legit question anymore. I mean, it's not even, I mean, it's a legit question, but it's not even, of course it's the truthers. Sure, the really, really, really scared normies that are still wearing four masks over their face and staring at CNN all day long. Yeah, they're, they're definitely worse off than probably any truther. However, most normies that go about their life, and I'm not saying you should just go about your life and be oblivious to things. But do you think that they live in more fear than the truthers you know? I don't even think it's close. And here's where it gets even more interesting. Now, we know the government is not here to protect us. We know all of this shit is bullshit, right? However, if you are a normie and you think the terrorists are going to kill you, well, you've got the good old nation of USA and its allies to protect you in the Air Force and all of this. You have protection. Although you could still be vulnerable, but you have some protection. Same thing with the rogue nations. If you have a deadly virus, you've got, you've got the wonderful health professionals to fall back on because they're going to save you. <laughs> School shooters, you've got the great, the great boys in blue, right? I mean, they're just remarkable. Such dignity and honor. Same thing with the child abduction and the nukes. Now, if you're a truther... You think you're going to die from a forced vaccination or the chemtrails or you're going to be thrown in a FEMA camp? Who are you going to call? Who's coming to protect you? Worse off than the normies. Worse off. By a long shot. So, we have all this shit coming up now because the eclipse. And I talked about some of this on my last stream, but listen. I don't fucking know exactly what this place is. I know we're lied to about it. And they give us a whole bunch of fake bullshit to try and show us what this place is and our for everything. Space, history, everything in between. Right? Pretty bold to say I actually know what this place is or where we are or what our purpose is, right? But I can tell you a few things that I, I believe strongly. I could totally be wrong. Whatever happens, first of all, nothing's going to happen, right? Nothing is going to happen tomorrow. I mean, there's going to be some traffic, right? There's going to be like people looking at the sky and shit. Nothing catastrophic is going to happen because there's a fucking eclipse in the sky. However, if something did or there was a huge, uh, you know, a huge magnetic disruption and some power went out or whatever, right? Why would that be anything to fear? I mean, okay, it's a function of this reality, what's happening in the sky. What you can't do is let these people trick you and to believe in all a bunch of bullshit about how they're causing whatever's going on. Like, for instance, oh, well, haven't you heard they're turning CERN on tomorrow, same day as the eclipse, blah, blah, blah. They're going to open a portal to the fucking dark side. Dude, CERN can suck my fucking dick, okay? I said it the other day, seriously. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. I'm so sick of hearing about CERN every spring and how they're going to turn on the... Oh, well, what do you think? It, it's just doing nothing down there? Oh, I don't know. You got a space station that supposedly costs like trillions of dollars that's just doing nothing because it ain't really up there. Why would I believe in that? You got the same actors. The same actors that push the other lies, push these lies. Brian Cox is the lead uh, physicist there. So we believe this? Oh, Brian, haven't you seen the video? The guy with the bond sign. Mandela. They're telling you they're causing it. 
Yeah, they would love for you to believe that. Just like they would love for you to believe that they're traveling to distant fucking planets. I think whoever these motherfuckers are that somehow got in control of the physical reality and the media and all the deceptions that they run. They're stuck in here with us. And they fucking know it. They damn well know it. So, nothing to fear, especially claims by science, okay? I've been saying it since day one, and I know it triggers a lot of people. And it's fucking weird. It's weird how people would know all of this shit is fake. Oh, but they're fucking manipulating reality with the fucking CERN fucking machine. Under haven't you seen how long the tunnels are? I don't know. I haven't been in the tunnels. Have you? We could frame pictures in this fucking 1,200 square foot apartment to make it look like it's a fucking 17 mile tunnel. I don't care if they have a long tunnel. You tell me how they're going back through the fabric of time and changing matter retroactively. You tell me how they're creating the God particle and recreating the Big Bang and all this fucking bullshit. I don't buy it. I also can see rabbit trails when they're left for me. And no more rabbit trail is obvious than them pointing you in the direction of CERN and D-Wave computers manipulating this reality. That's where they always point you. They'll never point you outside of this realm to what might have created it. It's never even mentioned. So back to my, I don't want to go too much into the Mandela effect right now. Maybe a little bit later. I want to stay a little more focused on uh, what I was talking about. But I do have some stuff to get into regarding that. And, so, and some things I want to show for sure. But let's get away from the fan mongers. They're proven wrong every fucking time. Let's get away from the people that push prediction rates dates. They're proven wrong every fucking time. Right? Such an important message to give no... It's not only to not live in fear, because you have to graduate past that as well. That's, that, that remains. That's the basis of my foundation. I don't live in fear. I know this reality is fluid. I know I've been lied to about where we are, right? Those are bases, huge bases of my, you know, growth here. Um, and I forgot I fucking lost my point for a second. <laughs> But yeah, uh, promoting fear, absolutely fucking not. Absolutely not. These people are proven wrong every time. I'm sorry, and I know a lot of people still refuse to dive deep into that day in September. But so many of you still believe in fear porn because you take 9-11 for granted that in one way or the other, the government dropped buildings on thousands of people in New York, and that's such bullshit. Such bullshit. How can you see the last four years is completely not legit at all? And you can't use those eyes and go back and look. So we have this one in the last four years. You got the moon landing. I think everybody in this chat must have looked at these two things a little bit. Probably came to the conclusion that neither one are real. Why is this one real in the middle? Why is this one real? It's got the actors. It's got the green screens. It's got the Hollywood CGI. When it comes to the Mandela effect, because I get loud and passionate, right? I'll keep stressing the point. No matter how much I like my theories and might not like yours, none of us know. Lots of shit is on the table. I'm down with it. Doesn't mean I have to like it. However, again, I'll reiterate, I can clearly see how they always push everybody to CERN and to quantum computers and D-Wave computers. If you're going to say, fuck no, this isn't false memory. I know the Monopoly man had a monocle. I know it was House Avocados. You're not going to gaslight me. Something is taking place here. Oh, yeah. Well, we, we, 
Did you know we're on the pit of Apollo and we're ripping open the space-time continuum? We've got fucking Marty McFly down on the Hadron Collider giving Tom Hanks a handy while he flips the switch. And he don't even got to move his hand. Because <laughs> his whole body's shaking. <laughs> uh, is that too fucked up? You guys are fucked. <laughs> it's a script. Everything they're giving you is a script, and most of the stuff that the truthers push is a script. And they just share it, and they like it, and they share what they what fits into what they believe, just like the normies do. In fact, they're kind of addicted to sharing and sharing and sharing. So it gets to the point where the pool of truth community people is starting to actually have less discernment than the normies in many cases. Doesn't go for everybody. But man... A lot of people peed in the fucking pool of truth is, I'll tell you that. And it fucking smells like urine. And I want to get out. That's how I feel about it. Just to let you know. So, it sucks too, because I have to keep repeating this message. I literally have to make the same type of video every spring, because every spring, oh, they're going to turn shirt on. Be on the lookout for more Mandela effects. Be on the lookout for the fucking Antichrist. He's coming through. <laughs> okay, I'll be at the beach. <sighs> Give me a fucking break, man. So, oh, Brian, you're too, you're too into this Mandela effect. I'm the one that's fucking telling you since day one that the media is completely fake. Don't buy any of this shit. The truth is all promote fear. But here's the next step. Not, 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 hey, here's the Mandela effect. Here's the step in between. You got to stop giving your energy to everything you know that's fake and starting to look within and to look to the deeper meanings of this reality. Now, here we are. Time and what we thought of matter are completely out the window. Most fascinating thing ever. I'm going to talk about it. Too bad most people don't have the balls or the courage to because they're fucking cowards or they're liars. Some people legitimately don't understand. I get it, but most are just liars. Some conversations came up at work. Again, this was funny. So I'm sitting there. I think I might have told this first story already on a stream, but it was just a few days ago, so I'll tell it again, then we'll tell the second one. Uh, I was sitting there, and uh, I'm at the bar, and this, this woman's there. She's like trying to sell people vouchers to her salon or whatever. And then she sees my shirt. I have my Dose Reality shirt on, one of them. Oh, that's a really nice logo, she says. I said, thank you, you know. And then she had to, like, say it again, like how she wanted to order one or something. And I'm like, okay, well, that's the uh, logo to my show, to my podcast. I just say podcast. People know what that means. Um, Rachel says, truth is, you simply read headlines as their entire show, a total clone. Yeah, I can't listen to anything like that. You won't see me around that type of shit. <laughs> it's all fake. It's all fake. Uh, so she says to me, um, oh, so what do you talk about on, on it? I said, well, I talk about a lot of stuff. You know, I started mostly by telling people to not live in fear over the, what the media puts out. I try and say it that way to not trigger people too quickly if I use the words CV or 9-11, like to, to gauge where they're at, right? And then I said, now more, it's more of like a spiritual thing. Have you ever heard of the Mandela effect? She said, oh, yeah. Now, usually when people have heard about it, it's, you know. So I said, well, what's your understanding of what it is? She looked me dead in the face and she says, I had a friend that worked at the Smithsonian. So I know. Because <laughs> for those that don't know, the Smithsonian Institute which every fucking truther has quoted in their videos many times. It's never existed. It's always been the Smithsonian Institution now. I keep running into people that actually kind of understand this, which is very promising. I would actually like to think I have a pot to do with that. <laughs> so then I'm sitting there and my boss, the guy that owns the restaurant, he knows what I talk about. He's actually watched several of the streams, as I told you. He said something. I think he might have been quoting something from the A-team. Or somehow the A-team came up. And I said, oh, A-team. He said, oh, why? Is there a Mandela effect involved with this? I said, actually, there is. I said, what color was the A-team van? 
He said, well, it's all black with a red stripe. <laughs> I said, not anymore, bud. And I explained how it's black, red stripe, and then gray on the top, which of course nobody remembers. Why? Well, because it was never with fucking gray on the top. It was all black. So interesting how these conversations keep coming up and uh, I'm going to keep at it. And I don't tell everybody about the show, but like when it comes up and they ask, you know, I tell them and uh, some people just don't get it, wrap their head around it. I'd say I'm like 50, 50. There's several people that just couldn't wrap their head around it. But then there's like several people that totally understood. Like I said, I told the other story. One of the girls, I was training her and you know, she asked about the show and I said, oh, I talked about the Mandela effect. You know what that is? And she looked me dead in the face and said, I know that Chick-fil-A never had a K. That, that was her response when I asked her if she knew what it was. <clears throat> so, all right, let's, and I'm going to bring some people on the panel soon. Just give me a few. I'm going to talk for a few more minutes. I'm going to show a couple things here. And uh, I'm gonna, when I get ready for break, I'm going to send the Zoom link out to all members. All right, all members uh, Kofi and Patreon. I'm going to email you guys all a link when I go on break. Okay. I'm going to show you a couple of things. So I think this one is hilarious. Let's get into this video. Oh, and Shua Lutha, if you're in chat, the video you sent me, the music one with the Feel the Dreams residue, I can't play. YouTube blocked it worldwide when I checked it for copyright. But I do want to play this other video. And let's get this up on the screen. These characters will be familiar to a lot of you. So we have here a video from Modern Day Debate with McToon and a guy named Dustin Nemos. And basically, this is going to be the end of their discussion. Uh, McToon and this guy, they're going to go yelling over each other back and forth for a minute. And... Um, then this guy asks McToon if he's a pedophile, and then McToon gets him kicked off the stream and, like, this whole thing. But the reason I'm showing it is watch what they're saying in their conversation that's going back and forth with each other because it's absolutely hilarious. You have two guys screaming two things at each other that literally don't even exist in this reality because both of them are fucking Mandela effects. You See? avoided it. I didn't avoid it. So the topic, though, that you are definitely uh, scared to address is the prediction to the second of the, the eclipse that's happening in just a couple days using the globe and the fact that, that no flat earth geometry can even determine the, the amount. We don't of have the billion dollar budget of NASA to hire an astronomer. But if we didn't, neither, we would be better. Neither did Edmund Haley, who did the first prediction in 1715. He did it as a hobby. They've been so predicting could, eclipses. Did you catch that? Edmund Haley. You know who Edmund Haley is, right? Well, surely McToon remembers them. Edmund Haley is who Haley's fucking comet was named after. But Edmund Haley doesn't exist anymore, and neither does Haley's comet, because now he's Edmund Halley with a short A and a double L, and it's Halley's comet. But the Mandela effect's on over, because wait to hear the response from Dustin. It's fucking hilarious to me. It's for How could, thousands of years, friend. No, they have not been. Mandela yes, effects have. the best. They and have not celestial been. alignments of the planets. Awesome. The then show me a, an eclipse prediction before 1715 showing the path of totality and the Look time. Look up the Mayan calendar. I mean, The Mayan calendar does not include the path of totality. It's not even an eclipse thing. You're thinking sorrow cycles, but sorrow cycles only gives you oh, the approximate you get, day. You get it does not give the path of totality or the you had no so say the path of totality time inaccuracies has in, nothing in the ancient to world has nothing have, to do with that you have so inaccuracies in the modern you, way i'm asking Ancients you were more accurate. why is it that the globe can accurately predict to the second the time that the eclipse will be seen for anywhere and there is nothing for flat earth at all not even remotely because what they're using do? our tax dollars to do it uh, that's the short answer nothing to now, do, do you with want that the because Edmund Haley. Math? Edmund Haley did it himself who? without any who? text. Who the fuck is Edmund Haley? Stop making shit up, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> I thought the Mandela effect wasn't real, McDoon. Don't you specialize in this topic? Shouldn't you know the guy's name before getting in a debate? Because a Edmund Haley... Math. Edmund Haley did it himself without any tax dollars at all. He did it as a hobbyist. So uh, if you say how so, how did he do that? I don't know his story. However, uh, they were doing how it more accurately he... in the ancient world. This oh, is more. Oh, wait, this is more. Bring it up. 
also er Eratosthenes. No, no, no. They did it more accurately in the in the ancient world. Bring it up right now. That's your uh, okay. Or so are you lying? They didn't need daylight that. savings time, and they are you lying about? That? Didn't need what? Little liar, Dustin. Well, I don't have it about... with me at the no, moment. No, you don't have any... it. <laughs> daylight savings time. Edmund Haley. <laughs> Neither exist. And it's actually said again by both of them, I think. I think this guy even says daylight savings a couple more times. Um, it's just fucking hilarious. It is just hilarious observing human consciousness. And like, and this isn't, you know, it's not even to make fun of these guys. It's, it's just showing that everybody's affected by this because our reality is fluid. No matter how much that triggers you or you hate it or you want to say it's woo-woo and it can't happen. And, oh, we can't prove it in an experiment and blah, blah, blah. Experiment, my dick. How about that? We know what's taking place. Right? You're not going to box us in to denying our own reality because it doesn't fit with your strict rules of your scientific paradigm that was laid out for you to keep you in the physical reality. I'm not playing that game. I'm just saying. All right. Let's get into a little bit of visual residue that I have, and then I will get that link out and bring members up on the panel. Uh, let's see. Images. Memes. Always great stuff. This again, these are great too because it shows you how much of this shit is everywhere. This is all over Facebook, this type of stuff. I may not be a smart man. Okay. I totally remember him saying I may not be a smart man, but I know what love is. <coughs> now he just says I'm not a smart man. Then of course there's this classic. If Star Wars was filmed in 2024 and it shows a Lady Vader, right? Luke, I am your father. Well, yeah. Then there's this, which has nothing really to do with the Mandela effect, but I thought it was hilarious. So you guys have all heard me talk about how I am going to do my grocery store experiment, lock 100 people in a grocery store, and ask them things like what the queen said in the mirror in Snow White, and make my point very proven that damn near 100 out of 100 they are going to tell me something which never existed. But while that's going down to make sure nobody tries to leave the grocery store... We got Nathan, the Colonel Sanders, out front, doing security, holding down the front door. <laughs> what do you guys think? Hadouken! Hadouken! Tatsumak Shabruken! All right. The Colonel. Running security, baby. Next. Another huge Mandela effect for me. With the etch sketches on the wall. It was only a minor earthquake, but the Etch-a-Sketch gallery was ruined. What's the Mandela effect? Well, these people, like myself, clearly remember the dashes in Etch-a-Sketch, but they now never existed in this reality, much like the Kit Kat, which now has never had a dash in this reality. I won't ignore all these changes. I'm not delusional. You're not going to gaslight me. I don't care about your perceived uh, paradigm, you know? I'll trust myself over this reality or another man or woman any day of the week. I don't care what it says in a book. I don't care what it says in a movie. I don't care what uh, the, the experts tell me. I'll trust myself. Thank you. <clears throat> so I was looking for a meme that I was going to use for a thumbnail. So I wrote like lemmings off a cliff. As you could tell by the title, I did not be using it, but look at the flag. I wasn't even looking for a flag. Red stripe under the blue. Which is everywhere, by the way. You know, kind of like, let's see. Come on, load up. I hate when my computer slows me down. I'm fucking rolling here. Come on. Someone posted this and Mandela Reality Residue Hunters Group. This is hanging at the Moose Lodge in my area. We support our troops by putting the wrong flag up that doesn't exist anywhere. <laughs> Great show of support and show you really care. You butchered the fucking flag according to this reality. But I don't think you're an idiot because I remember the flag looking just like that as well. Here's a good one from the movie Left Behind 2. Somebody posted this on my Facebook. I forget who it was, but thank you so much. Boom, baby. 
How about that bad, Larry? For those of you new to the topic or refuse to look into the topic of the Mandela effect, if you say, what's the big deal with this airplane? Well, go to your local airport and you try and find an airplane that looks like that. With the engines underneath the wings like that. Even go through your old photographs that you might have taken at the airport. When you know the engines are under the wings. And they're not going to be under the wings like this. They're going to be way forward, hanging off by this little bracket. Because that's how they've been now in this reality. Might have shown this one the other day. But it might have been the only thing i shown. But I'll show it again. This is uh, HBO. Written in Spanish, and oh, wow, that's interesting. Sex in the city in Spanish. Well, if it's never been sex in the city, and it's always been sex and the city, why do all the people, so many I know, including not only people I know, but people that actually acted on the show, and the person who wrote it, why do they remember sex in the city, and why does HBO also match that memory? There clearly must not be anything going on, and the Mandela Effect people are just retarded, right? No. The people telling you to not look into this topic are gaslighting you. Your senses aren't failing. It was fucking sex in the city. Just like it was turmeric. And if it was never turmeric, why am I able to just keep showing you endless, endless residue from grocery stores? Look at this. Here's the new packaging, the new spelling but look still in the computer system of the grocery stores, spelled the way in which we're told never existed and we're just a bunch of bumbling idiots without any evidence and we just don't know what the fucking Monopoly man looks like and we confused him with Mr. Peanut and fucking we mixed up our underwear with Thanksgiving and fuck you, fuck you, the fuck out of here. Just get out of the truth game. To say nothing's going on, you're a willing slave of the Matrix, the ultimate NPC. How much will you deny? It's fucking sad, man. I'm going to play a song. When I come back, we're going to bring people up. So if you're a member, be on the lookout in your email in the next five minutes or so. You're going to get a Zoom link, and everybody that's a member will have the opportunity to come up on the stream. I just got to get a song up so I can go ahead and do that. Give me one second here. If you appreciate the stream, consider a super chat or a membership. The link is pinned at the top. The one link will bring you to both places. You can click one time or membership. And I'm just looking for a song. Sorry. Well, can't lose with this one. Remember in a different earth as we curse Did we shift getting missing lurk And limbo and living similar worse Realities where the challenge be where your vision hurt Cause it's wild to see a smirk with no risen host Like I thought I had some sofas top stuffing Never existed, had it with biscuits While in my memory with the cabbage and spinach How's you thankful? Think to yourself I remember the star circle up on the outer ankle Always the inner though Realities like never cemented, yo See, I remember the image upon a penny, yo I also remember the time Eisenhower Always been Roosevelt Here they promoting hell Things changing, it's more than just a slogan to sell Seeing the strangers, shit done changing I ain't holding the L You swearing you knew it, it's this way And now you bugging out dismay You thinking you going this ain't crazy And just started noticing lately You swearing you knew it, it's this way and now you're bugging out dismay You thinking you're going the same crazy And just thought he noticed lately I remember FLAVA for flavor But it's always been OR I remember rushing Alaska so far Now you need to swim in trunks in a boat No motor and no coast guard Palmer's on at 1S Have your show card No memos or letters with postmarks Emails and just let us know all This mess is so gone Volkswagen with the W and B Had no space even your call Now agreeance is a word for agreement And since when? New word for me Never heard of it, now they pencil it in Great Wall of India Great Wall of Pakistan Only heard of China on the map, man Now your heart showing up in the middle Up on a cat scan And not the left like we all remember We can't leave like fall of September I remember Adam Walsh never found Not his body dismembered You like me, you really like me Never said by Sally's book Swearing you know it is this way, and now you bugging out dismay. You thinking you going the same crazy, and just thought he noticed it lately. You swearing you know it is this way, and now you bugging out dismay. You thinking you going the same crazy, and just thought he. 
it and you now notice the solid bone that's right behind your eyes. Remember, you must learn from BDP and Eli Whitney. The cotton gin created member of history. Well, it's a white man. No, I sound drunk or high is the biggest fig tree. Well, it's true. Look it up and then you'll dig me. It's all quantum. Dig me. Dig me. You tell me I ain't crazy, yo. Fuck. You swear and you know it is this way. And now you bugging out this man. You thinking you go and it ain't crazy. You just started noticing lately. You swear and you knew it is this way. And now you bugging out this man. You thinking you go and it ain't crazy. You just started noticing lately. All right, everyone. In two or three minutes, we'll be back. One more song, but while you're waiting, all members have the link. It's in your email. Check your email. And I'll be right back after this one song. It's a short song. And in case there are any conspiracy theorists out there, how would you prove to us that you're in zero gravity? to reality and let's see if anybody is backstage give me one second and not yet but the link is out i will go ahead probably and open the phones up until we get some guests up on here uh everybody that is a kofi member or a patreon member though you guys all have a link in your email it's a zoom link go to your email click the zoom link and come on up on the panel all right and in the meantime i am going to go ahead and Bring up the phone lines. Uh, excuse me. Take a couple. How about the people that like they always they, they go around when I'm on other channels? Like so recently I did a few interviews on other channels, right? So hold on, what's this guy saying? People leave me voicemails too. Did you guys ever hear when I played the voicemails? <laughs> like over the last five years, I you know, one day I decided, hey, I'm gonna actually go through some of these voicemails. Holy shit, man. Just so you know, people, you leave voicemails. I don't check them for five years, if I ever check them at all. Don't leave voicemails on the, on the Google Voice phone for the show. It's completely ridiculous. Um, cool. We already got a call. I didn't even have to put the number up. <laughs> I like the name. Hey, man, I love the name that pops up on the screen, man. Now it's different than it used to be. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, how says, are you doing on this wonderful evening, sir? Can, it, Trying to tell the people this crazy shit on not to live in fear. Don't you know they're all coming to get us, Brian? Oh, yeah, man. Oh, JM, it's, the world's going to end tomorrow, JM, because there's never been an eclipse before and the world has kept going. Oh, Jesus, I forgot about that, Brian. I better make sure I'm okay. 
oh my god i got i gotta i gotta warn my family let me call them after i get done talking with you sir <laughs> so what do you think about what i had to say about uh have you been here for a good portion of the show yeah i've been i've been here for most of the show i basically i, I finally got a notification again i was like wait a minute i got a notification brian's live and it's not late at night perfect let me let me tune in oh yeah cool um so what did you what did you think about what I've been saying about how the truthers are not only living in but promoting way more fear than the normies at this point? It's it's like jump the shark this whole thing. I 100% agree. The more that I've dug in and looked at things I'm like holy shit, they have baited us along all the way. Mm -hmm. You know, they've given us the the little droppings we need as as I've heard on another channel. Um, you all have probably heard this this expression, following the pissed on breadcrumbs. Mm -hmm. And we followed it, but as we get deeper in, as we start digging deeper into what's going on, getting a better connection to what is really truly happening, we go, wait a minute, this is all part of a script. Just like the, 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 the P. Diddy, whoever the fuck this idiot is, it's like really so he's a head friggin child trafficker i, I love how people crazy. are posting all these memes of him on the run he's like literally like in miami just hanging out like he didn't go anywhere <laughs> i mean what what are they gonna tell me next the nfl isn't scripted i mean is that just coming oh i'm sorry did i say that out loud i apologize brian <laughs> oh before i forget i want to tell you this though is did you see that uh, WrestleMania last night? The no, end match. I did. I didn't see any of it. Okay, The Rock is back, but the guy he was battling against has a tattoo on his neck because he's Mister Anti America or Mister Bad America, whatever his. Is it? Is it? Was it Cody Rhodes? Was it Dusty Rhodes' son, Cody? Was it Cody Rhodes? I think yeah. so. The blonde kid. The blonde kid. Yeah, he's got a Mandela what? affected USA flag tattooed on his neck with the red stripe under the blue. Okay, good, good. You noticed, you know, okay, you know who I'm talking about that. Yeah, I, just, oh, yeah. I, I saw that last night. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on it. Oh, I got to let Stavely. <laughs> oh, you, you were tell, you're about to tell me about the flag? And I was about to tell you about the flag. Oh, yeah, I was like, yeah, oh, I, yeah. I got to let Stavely <laughs> know if he knows. I mean, I know, you're, I know you watched the wrestling. I only turned it on because I went on there because I actually wanted to watch Ted, the show. And I was like, wait a minute, I got to see. I heard The Rock's coming back, dude. I, I forgot how scripted. Yeah, and the rock, shit. the rock's Ooh, a fucking. Yeah. And by the way, the rock used to be cool, but he's such a fucking bitch, and he was such a promoter of what was going on in 2020 and all of this. Fuck the rock. Rock can suck my dick just like CERN. Oh yeah. He, Sorry, he, Jam. He, I know sometimes you don't really like the strong language, but the rock can fucking blow me. All right. I don't mean literally. You know. You know how you say it to people. Yeah, fucking blow me. I mean, fuck you, rock, bitch. <laughs> Oh, I do have to ask you this, because I have noticed your visual looks really great. Did you did you get that camera I, I recommended? No, it's funny. Other people mentioned, too. I didn't do anything other than the fact that now the biggest factor is just the room that I'm in has a lot more sunlight than the room I was in uh, at Karen's. And I actually have a thing that's meant to hang the, the green screen now rather than me just tacking it up to the wall. That's the only difference. I didn't get a camera yet. I don't do anything. I didn't even you're, buy you're, any. You're I didn't even buy any good, good lights. I, I got like this one cheap ten dollars stand up lamp from Target in this room. Yeah, you don't need to buy anybody that's going to do a green screen. You don't need to buy high dollar lights. You got. You got to remember is you got to diffuse the light. Well, last time I checked, a lampshade diffuses light. Mm -hmm. So just get a cheap light with a lampshade on it, and that'll take care of your issue. You may have to get a couple of them, but they're cheap. You know who else is a fucking bitch, JM? Mick Foley. He's a COVID-loving coward, dude. He was going around yelling at people about not wearing things over their face. and it was, I should be a little more careful with what I'm saying, but, dude, he was one of the worst ones promoting it. He was way over the top, being loud with people, telling people if they don't get jabbed, he hopes they, you know, go bye-bye and all this, dude. Like, fuck that guy, too. He used to be cool. He's a piece was, of shit. It was... It was pathetic what was going on on that thing last night. And I, I mean, I like I said, I haven't seen wrestling in years. You bought it? And How did you see it? You no, I didn't it? buy it. No, no, no. If, if you have a subscription to Peacock Network, yeah. it's free. It comes, it comes with it. Oh, you and don't have to buy just the W. So what else comes with Peacock? Uh, I got it because I wanted to watch the TED TV show. Oh, okay. it's, it's friggin' hysterical, dude. The if they, hey, if they, if they made a TV show about TED, that'd be a great show. I want to tune in, too. 
You get this white yeah, dude yeah, that yeah. drives a Civic and he pulls a trailer and he's got dreads and he tells everyone the earth is flat. I love it. Yeah, no, it's it's now the Ted the Ted TV show is worth the month subscription to get it. It's it's hysterical. But I saw the wrestling on and I was like, it's free. Does it cost me any extra? Heck, I'll I'll watch this and the Rock is on there. Oh man, the symbolism, all the stuff they're promoting was just being pushed bigger than bigger than shit, dude. It was it was horrible. What are you gonna do tomorrow when CERN raises the Antichrist, JM? I don't know. I, I, I was having a conversation <laughs> with my I was having a conversation with my son. He goes, I don't think you understand, Dad. They're summoning demons. I said they've been summoning demons for a long time, son. Relax. I wouldn't recommend being driving at this time, but relax. It's yeah. gonna, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> the world's not gonna come to an end. We're gonna be in a very I think we're at ninety four percent where I'm at, so we've got a good a good view of what's happening, but I mean, it's, it's crazy. They're launching rockets at it. They're doing this. CERN's being activated. Oh no. Even the eclipse. The best thing is they tell you it's like once every so often, we'll probably have one next year again. <laughs> it's just, it's the more I look at what's happening, it's like they're doing all this stuff, but let's be honest. If we really look at what's going on and we start seeing how stuff is going, let me ask you this, Brian. Do you think the intelligence of people today is greater or less than it was just 20 years ago? Oh, definitely less. Okay. Have you ever tried to pay cash to a cashier at a store today? Dude, they get so fucking... I do it all the time. I did it twice today because I try and, you know, I get rid of all the ones I have from work and whatnot, you know? Um, yeah, they get really confused. Sometimes they freak out. Have you ever tried giving them rounding up? You should Have see, you you should see giving... people look at me that I, weird because I don't use the, you know, when you I use a POS system and you punch in the, the cash that you give them to tell you the change. I don't ever use that. I just hit cash, open the draw and make the change. Like I don't use the calculator at all at work, you know, or anywhere. I, I've always just done it in my head. People think I'm like really strange. <laughs> They don't know what to do, Brian. Yeah. They, they, they cannot do simple math. And then they look at you like you're trying to trick them and steal from them. And you do the simple math for them. I literally have people when I give them, like if my order is $12.54, I'll give them $22.54. And they try to hand me back the $2. Like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Oh, you gave me too much. Put it into your computer, type it in. It's going to tell you to give me back $10. And they look at me like I'm trying to trick them. And they punch it in and it, huh, you're right. And yeah. they still begrudgingly hand you the $10 like they know their register is going to be short at the end of the night. Yeah. But I say all that is, think about it. The controlling elites don't want to massively kill everybody they're doing a pretty good of job course not toxic. yeah that, that, killing massively killing people causes problems jm how if about you really... you, you could sum it all up to this and i will let you elaborate it's bad for business <laughs> yes yes are do you want your slaves alive and cooperative or dead and angry and fighting yep you definitely want, want them alive you you want to give them enough bread and circus to think that oh this is fantastic but meanwhile yeah it, oh we get our football games and we get this and oh yeah we don't care that the government takes like half of our paycheck and we just go along with it. everybody does it everybody pays their taxes you know and every other and every other and every other fucking lifelong scam they got you in that's just tip of the iceberg for christ's sake it's 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 disgusting but if we look at it, it wasn't too long in this world that we call Earth. There was a thing called a caste system. C-A-S-T-E, caste system. I'm not familiar with that term. What's, what is it? Okay, let's go back to the medieval times. You had three classes of people. You had the peasants, the merchants, and the kings. Okay. We'll start with the, the first class, the peasants. They were kind of dumb. They weren't too smart. 
They couldn't read. They couldn't write. But if you told them to go pick up the shit, they picked it up. If you told them to go clean the shit, they cleaned the shit. If you needed some cannon fodder for a war coming up so you didn't have your knights killed off really quickly, they would go, I'll go go fight for the king because that's my job. They were given a small shack. They were given um, food, grub to live on, and they went along about their lives and did what they're supposed to do and had a good time. Then you have the merchants are people that actually have businesses doing okay, know what's going on a little bit, but they're like, you know what? I don't want to ruffle the feathers too with too much. I'm making a good living. I'm selling my merchandise to the uh, higher ups, the king's you know, main people, and I'm selling my merchandise to the peasants. I'm doing all right. I got a better house, and I don't have to eat the grub that the peasants eat. And then you have the kings and the people at the top. They're building the same system back today across the entire plain in every country. They are in the process of dumbing the people down. And here's something that I'm going to drop that I think a lot of people may call me crazy for. But if you think about it, wars cause too much problems. People Mm -hmm. fighting amongst themselves Mm -hmm. causes too many problems with controlling the slaves. But you make money in wars. You make profit in wars. Yes, there's a little bit of money. There's a little bit of profit. I understand all of that. Well, I wouldn't say a a little bit. I would say a lot of profit. Yes. But if I can get these peasants to do what I need them to do 24-7 and take the majority of the, the energy and income and the, and the labor they produce and take 70, 80% of that, I think I'm making a little more profit than off of a war and yeah. killing people and having people fighting amongst themselves. Yeah, well, most of the war is probably an emotional thing. And I'm not saying nothing's going on, but I would say probably most of it is overblown and an emotional thing and more about like re uh, you know redoing over areas and whatnot and, and restructuring everything than it is actually like what we're being told you know that's, that's exactly. probably that's probably they're, a big big that's getting, like a big they're part getting of the chessboard laid out they're getting yeah. the chessboard laid out yeah and they do it under the guise of war and how much is really going on i really don't know um, but I, I know what you're saying. So there has to be, there has to be a balance and the, the, the balance, the balance is the, the balance probably is like portrayed to us as the balance is like 50, 50, but it's probably really 80, 20 in their favor because we're really seeing, uh, exaggerated examples of what the wars are. Does that make sense? Exactly. I'm not, I'm not saying war doesn't happen. That's not what I'm saying. I'm yeah. saying it does happen. However, yeah. it's bad business to control the slaves. Yeah. If you want to have a good cooperative people, you give them housing, you give them food, and you give them the ability to reproduce the way, at the levels you want them to reproduce, which, trust me, they've done an incredible job at controlling how populations are reproduced. That's what they're using for population control, along with, of course, we have their wonderful, how should I put it, um, Trusted medicine. We'll just leave it at that. I'll let people discern what I'm saying. And and fantastic additives to to ingredients for everything, not just medicines, food, and et cetera. Exactly. Exactly. So they've got that part handled. Now, let me ask you this. What, if, if we can give people shelter and food, that keeps the people a lot happier. If we can keep them filled with entertainment, such as the wonderful foosball, because that's so realistic. And mark my words, within five years, the NFL will be flag football. If you look at what happened with the new rule that came into the NFL this year, it's hysterical. But that's another story entirely. The fact is, what causes people to fight amongst themselves? The first thing is, Well, well, wait a minute. Stress that's caused by fucking unfair wages and the government taking a good chunk of your money is one thing. I I understand that, but major things that cause war amongst people is, you know what, Brian? 
religion. You're a different religion than me. Yeah. Fuck religion. You don't believe in the same God I do. You probably want you know, them crazy you, Muslims. You know, yeah, yeah, can you guess what I think about religion? I'll give you a hint. It's the same thing I think about CERN and the rock. Well, let, 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 me, let me point this out, though. Do you realize in the United States of America, less than 50% of people report themselves as any religion? However, however, a lot of those re- people that say they aren't part of a religion actually are, and they are religious, too. And well, then on top yeah, of it, but, it's but, like, how much do we really believe any percentage of a poll? I mean, that's just whatever. I, I understand that, but follow it when you talk to the younger people. Yeah. They're not religious, but they're all spiritual. Yeah. They're all on a spiritual journey and a whole, you know, it gets out there in left <laughs> field. So if we eliminate religion and then replace the quote-unquote religion with a religion of the state or the government, the world government, that gets everybody along in a nice line there. The other issue we have is another thing that causes wars. You know what, Brian? I don't like that fella over there. He looked different than me. Yeah. Well, it's division. It's all division. Fear and division are the two main things, and that's what they use against us, and that's exactly what you're talking about. Exactly. However, look at the agenda that's being pushed. They are pushing the merging of, how should I put it, people. I don't Mm. want to come off as some crazy wacko, but if you look at what's happening, (laughs) and if you look at our celebrities, and you look at our major athletes, I'll just mention the name Patty Mahomes, yeah. They are of a mixed breed. Yeah. If we can now eliminate religion and we can now eliminate a culture of people, black, white, Hispanic, whatever the culture is, and merge everybody into one culture. We have to remember, these controlling elite do stuff in 100 year time spans. They don't do stuff in next Friday night like the average American person. And when you start talking with the younger people and seeing what's going on, it's like, these people are fucking retarded. Excuse my French, but they are literally not, they're not all there. Yeah. And somebody in chat wrote, who's this guy talking to Brian? He's right on the money. Well, it's funny you say that because I'm talking to JM Money McKinley. (laughs) Thank you, brother. (laughs) <laughs> I, I i appreciate it but literally his nickname it, it's 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 yeah literally money is is one of my nicknames but uh, that's a whole nother story entirely but the the thing is is it's genius what they're doing and i say all this to say is we need to understand Stuff is changing, stuff is manipulating and as much as you and i remember the great old days of the friggin 90s God, those were good. The 90s times, were right? the best, man. I love the 90s. It was fucking incredible. There was no racist bullshit. And yeah, there you, you all, you're always going to have that idiocracy, okay? That's always going to be there. But it was just good times. We were out living life, enjoying life. We had good music. We had all kinds of wonderful things. Yep. And they have completely destroyed it. It's not coming back. However, if we can see what the system is doing and realize at the end of the day, the power is us. We were given this place by a creator. And I don't want to be religious, but this place was clearly created. If you can't see that, I'm sorry. But you have to really start looking and looking at what these people are doing to try to destroy anything of creation and make it into some magical, mythical tale. Don't get me wrong. I still like my Star Trek, but man, it's so fictional. And it's, it's hysterical looking at it now. <laughs> but... The yeah, and it's, it's not much different than looking at what NASA gives us, so that's even funnier. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and we have to understand, we have the power. Our creator, who was a creative being, gave us his power. Not saying we're gods. That's not what I'm trying to say. However, this was our place to be able to manifest and create things. We have to create the reality we want And the more that we learn and the more we become educated on what's really happening and be able to have intelligent conversations. I had some wonderful people over at my house last night, and they're from New Zealand. 
and we were sitting down talking with his son and his mother. We were going over some stuff, and I just, something came over me. I got to start dropping some truth on these folks. And I brought up one of my favorite truth drops, because she started talking about, she goes, what do you think about the moon landing? I said, oh, <laughs> let's talk. I'd love to talk about the yeah. magical moon landing. Yeah. Now, this is a woman who is probably 65-ish, okay? Yeah. So she remembers all of this time. And we started chatting a little bit, and she goes, you know, I don't think it's real. I said, I I'm glad you bring that up. So instead of going right to the moon pictures and the moon videos, I brought up the NASA logo, because everybody knows what the NASA logo was. Yeah. And I showed her that, and her son that. And her son is 36. And I said, okay, I'm going to remove this veil, and once I do, you'll never, ever be able to unsee this. And I told her about the serpent's tongue, and they looked at me. And then I pulled up pictures of a serpent mm -hmm. tongue. Mm -hmm. And she went, oh, my God. I just got chills up my spine. And now Why they... would they do that? And I said, do you trust anyone who speaks with a serpent's tongue? No. I rest my case. Yep. And then after that point, you shouldn't trust anything from these known liars. And it doesn't just go for NASA and not just the space agencies, the entire fucking worldwide media and all the politicians and all of them. Why would you believe anything these people say? If they didn't want you to hear it, it would never make it onto the screen. Period. They have complete control of the airwaves. Let's not kid ourselves. Exactly. Why on earth would they let any truth get out that they don't want to get out. Yeah. They want this stuff out because even though you're dropping a lot of truth, I'm dropping some truth here. There's other people dropping they, truth. Okay? They want it out in the way that you'll give it energy. If you're, if you're out here telling people to not give it any energy and move past it because it's all completely fake and don't tie any emotions to it, that's what they don't want. That's why my videos get taken down when I go deep into this stuff. Now, if I was out here telling you that, oh, you know, they evaporated 3,000 people in New York that day, well, they would love that. They, they want you to go down all these rabbit trails and validify all their events. Oh, it was the second shooter in the grassy knoll, and the aliens told us we couldn't show the real footage from the moon, but we actually went, and all this bullshit. You know, leaks from a Wuhan lab. You, you know the deal, bro. Exactly. They want to enslave this world. And I'll bring up Scripture right now. If you look at Scripture and look at all the tales in Scripture, Old Testament, New Testament, it, I can break it down to something simple. It's story after story after story of telling people how to be a free people mm -hmm. and how not to be enslaved. That's preaching that you should take a Bible. That's what you should run by. But damn it, that's what it's talking about. And look at what these people do continually. They want to enslave People. They want to take our power. They want to take what we have. And if we look at everything they produce, it's nothing but lies. Anything that comes on that screen is a friggin' lie from all of the sports. Yep. You know, it, it, once you realize that and start digging into it, it's like, oh my God. I used to watch that shit and think, I, oh yeah, great, my team and this team and that team and that, and that team. <laughs> all fucking bullshit i was it's gonna be a sports broadcaster long. that's the whole reason i went to broadcast in school and then i worked at the radio station producing red sox games like i was gonna do that for a career thank god i didn't and thank god i didn't continue to just fill my head with all that useless knowledge if you want to call it knowledge you know stats and all this bullshit you know they fill your head full of nonsense so you don't dig inside yourself Inside is where your power is. Inside is where you have to look. Inside is how you grow yourself. And then you connect with other people. And they're growing. And you compare notes. And you look at things. And you start expanding where you're at. That's why I love our community. Because you know what? We don't know everything. And most of us don't claim to know everything. But damn it, we get a lot of knowledge from each other. And allow our brains and our minds to expand and better our lives.
yes, this world kind of sucks right now. I'm, I'm going to admit to it. I take a look around. I see what's happening in my town. I see what's happening in my city. I'm like, how the hell did we let this shit happen and stand by? Because everybody's a fucking oh. proud coward, man. Everybody's a pussy. That's how. Yeah. Not, not you, not me, but most so-called men. They've been completely turned into fucking pussies over the last decade or two. Rolled out just in time to roll out the 2020 thing. And everybody lay down like a bitch. I live in a town, Brian, that used to be known as a friggin' incredibly wonderful, nice, beautiful friggin' place. We have car shows every month where they have some badass friggin' cars on display. Matter of fact, me and my dogs, when we were out walking early this morning, I didn't realize the car show was going on. And we get there, and I start looking around, and I'm going, what the fuck is going on here? Why is there security guards everywhere? Why are there police everywhere? You'd always have a couple of police because they had to kind of cordon off the whole shopping area so people wouldn't drive in and do all that other stuff. But every friggin' 10 feet, Brian, there was police or security. It's like, what the fuck is going on here? Oh, you can, thank, oh you can thank a lot. And you can thank a lot of that being accepted to the other side up from 2001. Absolutely, that that's one of the main effects of it. The, what they ramped up all these police forces to look like military and this accepted presence and surveillance and all the shit. That's all because of nine eleven. I mean, of course, there were other things too that are factors, but that man really pushed through some shit, man. And of course, everything we go through at the airports and we could go on for days with all the shit that got pushed through because of that fucking lie, absolute lie. Media production. It's all media productions, bro. That's why Movie Earth, it's still on the table for me, bro. It's like a big Truman show, dude. I mean, whew. Pretty hard to say that's not a legitimate theory as to, like, what's going on here. Like, everywhere, everything. Think about this, right? I know some people think that sounds ridiculous. But think of everything you looked into, JM, right? Let's just say, uh, I know you've looked into the 2020 thing, and I know you've seen stuff from the September thing and the school in Connecticut and the moon landing, and everywhere you've looked, what have you seen? You've seen Hollywood trickery and actors and green screens and wire harnesses and everywhere you've looked. So I'm just saying, calling this place like a big movie set, it's not really a stretch. It's kind of almost a logical conclusion at this point. <laughs> it's that and a whole lot more, you know? <laughs> But it makes sense, Brian, if we think about it. If our creator is a creative being and he is truth and he has made laws that even he can't violate his own laws or he wouldn't be who he claims to be, his opposition is 180 degrees opposite. His opposition is creating this world that he created for us to make it exactly opposite of what our creator created. Most people are living lies and everything. Let's be honest, Brian. What I do for a living is I give people money and I make it up on a computer. I don't. Mm -hmm. The companies that I work for and the mm -hmm. other companies, it ain't just my company, it's all the companies. It's all made on a computer 24 to 48 hours before the transaction ever happens. And it's not just me, it's your credit cards, it's your friggin' bank loans, it's all of it, Brian. It's all of it. It's all fantasy and bullshit, lies and deception. There's no reality to it, and they're sucking us deeper into that fake world. That's why it's so important we get back to the real world. This world that was created for us is alive. My animals have showed me so much of that. My son getting more into the earth and planting and growing things. Seeing that stuff uh, uh, Karen's husband, Ted, does. It's mm -hmm. freaking awesome with that garden he's got going. He's got I, didn't, I, I, that, that, I, I guess I missed the wedding. They got married? Uh, well, you know what I mean. I mean, heck, I mean. <laughs> JM just broke the news. Ted and Karen eloped. You all heard it here first. And JM, JM keep talking. I'm listening. I'm just getting a, a run to the bathroom, but I have my headphones on. Yeah, but I mean, look at the stuff he's doing with the chicken coop. I know you went over and helped him with that badass chicken coop. That's a friggin' that made KFC jealous. <laughs> with that chicken coop. But it's things like that. It's connecting back with people. That's what we have to do. We have to get connected back with our fellow people. We have to get connected back to this earth. And I don't want to sound like a tr hippie tree hugger, but damn it, this earth is alive just like you and I are alive. We got earthquakes going on. We got all this stuff going on. Well, the more I look at the earthquakes happening and all that other shit happened, maybe that's the earth crying out to the creator going, what the fuck is going on here, sir? Help me. I'm being destroyed. 
And that's what Lucifer, or whatever you want to call him, the opposition to the Creator, is doing. He's trying to turn this place exactly the opposite of what it was meant to be. Yep. And I'm back. <clears throat> Everything here is alive, Brian. Everything is alive. From my dogs, to, to the cats out on the street, to the trees, to the friggin' earth Of course itself. the earth is alive. You... Yeah. Once I realize that, it's like, oh my God. Yep. It, 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 the best, I used to love toys. I used to love electronics. I used to love all that stuff. I still do. It's fun. It's nice. But you know where I get the most joy? When I go out with my son and my dog, and he takes us out into nature and shows us all this cool stuff he's found. And I watch my son and my dogs run around and play and be alive. It's frigging incredible, man. And my dog comes over to me. He's like, oh, are you happy, human? Are you happy? I'm like, oh, yes, I love watching you be alive. My dog is battling cancer, and I am curing him, Brian. My dog is 110 What are you giving him, RSO? What, what are you giving ago. him? What are you doing for the dog? We, are, we completely changed his diet. None of that kibble food dog shit. That stuff is poison. If there's oh, yeah. anybody out there feeding their dog that kibble food, it's friggin' poison. Yeah, fuck that shit. All regular food. Me and my son started making it ourselves because we were getting the farmer's dog, but I ain't going to lie. That stuff's expensive. We, just, we can't afford this anymore. We started making it ourselves now. Matter of fact, I got a batch right now. I just got done cooking turkey batch. And they love it. It has healed him. It has slimmed him down. He's 13 years old. His heart, he had a heart condition. It was because of the bad friggin' food they feed dogs. Which yeah, dude. Dogs are getting heart conditions that sh now. That, that shit's nasty. But listen, I got to let other people call in. So give me some last words before Tom Hanks and Sinbad flip the switch on CERN tomorrow and evaporate the universe into a black hole and recreate the Antichrist. Hey, Brian, I appreciate what you do. You do a fantastic job, and I appreciate you getting on here and letting everybody know, hey, we got to stop living in fear. We've got to start realizing that this is all bullshit. We've got to take control, and we've got to create the reality that we want, not this bullshit these people are trying to create for us. Yep, exactly. All right, brother, thank you. I appreciate you. you, brother. I appreciate right, man. you, man. You take care, man. All right, buddy. Bye. Bye. All right. Phones are open, 978-435-0006. You just heard from JM. JM is the man. Um, Long-time caller of the show. JM also has an Awakening interview on my channel. Um, if it's not on my YouTube, as you know, they've deleted a lot of the Awakening interviews. It's definitely on my Odyssey. I forget what number. I want to say it's somewhere around like 55-ish or so. I think it's somewhere in the 50s. <clears throat> Dose of reality. All right. I guess you didn't really want to talk to me. I think that was an international number, too. Had the little plus sign in front of it. Um, but, yeah, JM. Press 1 in the chat if you think Lucky Haskins should come on the stream. I see Lucky in the chat. 978-435-0006. Yes, JM, a longtime caller of this show. Uh, probably as far back as four or five years ago. Um, and then eventually I had him on for an interview. I've got to hang out with him several times uh, at the events that Karen threw. Um, I think several times, at least twice, right, JM? What was it? Just once. I don't know. But we got to hang out. JM's fucking mad cool. And his nickname is Money because JM sells mortgages. It's not because he's like super materialistic or something. <laughs> I know people like, your name's Money and you're a truth. <laughs> He's, he's J.M. Money McKinley. Let's go, Lucky. You want me to send you a link? Let me know. I'll send you a link. <clears throat> Otherwise, somebody call in 978-435. There's a lot of ones in that chat, man. I mean, you really don't want to let all these people down. I mean, they're fucking pretty rough, dude. You'd be like the Grinch who stole Christmas, even though he's never existed. 978-435. Here we go. <clears throat> Dose of reality. What's up, brother? It's David Wright. Dave, what's up, man? <laughs> nice shit, man. Me and Jenny Spark are in the car on the way to Ohio to meet Austin to be in the uh, path of totality. Oh, cool, We're just man. catching your show. <laughs> awesome, yeah. bro. 
Da- and so towards Chicago right now. <laughs> that's cool, man. That's awesome that you guys are going. I'll be working tomorrow. I start work at four, so I know it's gonna be around like three thirty ish or something, right? So I'm just gonna like make sure I get to work like an hour or two early, just park my car, and just I'm just gonna watch it from there. I think. Yeah, man, it's awesome. It's like it's like coming to uh, like full circle for me because like if you remember when we uh, my story a little bit. I prayed for like discernment during the last eclipse, and I was I was at the in Greenville, so I was in the path of totality just through dumb luck, like last time. And I was looking up praying for discernment, and it was like two weeks later that I found about out about the Mandela effect, and then two weeks after that, flat Earth. So I count the last eclipse as like my awakening, is when it happened in my mind, and then now it's like seven seven years later, completion, and all this stuff going on about it. It's just trippy, man. Dude, and so I, I remember I, you told me this at um at at um at Flat Toberfest at the park when we did that video. You you told me about that. That's fucking mad cool, dude. And for anybody that doesn't yeah. know, David is the one that found the King Tut in the box in the back of Flat Toberfest that you guys all saw me make the video about. Like that was that was fucking. <laughs> it's <was> crazy, man. <laughs> That was the crazy shit. Oh, man. <laughs> I can't believe it, dude. Oh, I, man. I still oh, go yeah, wild shit, about that. It. I go wild about that. And, like, you tried to get my attention a few times during the day about it. I didn't really grasp what you were telling me until we were like, you're like, no, you got to come outside. He's like, oh, back. <laughs> yeah, I was talking to Mark Sargent, and I was telling him about it. You're like, wait, what? And I'm like, yeah, there's a king shot out there. You're like, no way. Let's play it. I was like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we took off out there. It was awesome. That was hilarious. Oh, man, that was that was hilarious. Um, can you tell uh, people while you're on the phone? Do you have a little bit of time to just shoot the shit and tell some stories? Oh, oh yeah, dude. I'm driving for like the next six hours. <laughs> All right. Make sure I tell <laughs> <or> the <dirt. laughs> uh, So <laughs> after the la- after the last eclipse, you said two weeks later you realized the Mandela effect, and then a few weeks later, flat Earth. Uh, what what was the Mandela effect that you realized? I don't remember that detail of the story. Oh, dude, it, it was just a, the cliche thing. You know, I was sitting at home and I, I did, I, it was like the weekend. I, I was laying brick and I was like, just oh, oh, it was in the middle of the night. I was laying in bed and I saw something, the Mandela effect. And I was like, what the hell is this? And I started watching about it. And it was it, it just uh, the Berenstain Bears. It was the Berenstain Bears. And like after that first video, I was like, no way. And I thought it was bullshit. So I went and I watched. I was like, it really is the Barrett's Stain Bears. And I'm like, what? no way. Dude, yeah. no way it is. Yeah. But I had all those books. So I knew for sure. I was like, something's screwy. And so I just kept watching and binge watch all night, like all these compilation videos for, for years before that. <laughs> And you well, say you say it's kind of cliche, but the fact that it's cliche is, you know, because we all had that same experience, and that should tell you something that this is fucking real, bro. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, bro, that works exactly, in our favor. Man. Just like it's all like, the residue, they try and use I, the residue I, against us. It's like, like I was saying earlier, you know, God, it's just fucking pathetic. Yeah, man. I mean, if the, anybody will find any excuse to, to back up their bias. I mean, why why are all these lion and lamb ministries, right? If it was been the wolf and the lamb, have you ever heard of a single wolf and lamb ministries? Not yet. Before, probably like, not for not yet, ago? and probably not for another decade. Once it starts to really seep into this reality yeah. as the permanent backdrop, you know. Yeah, exactly, man. It's just it's ridiculous. There's so much residue, and then like with me and you, remember when the Flintstones flip flopped on us? Yep. And the video disappeared, mm-hmm. the video in the Walmart, and it went and it had the tea, and then the tea disappeared, and then the video disappeared, and the tea came back. <laughs> like, when we, we saw that, and, um, like, dude, like, C-3PO's leg, anybody who tries to tell me that his leg was silver the whole time, like, I just, I don't even want to talk to him anymore, man. <laughs> <laughs> his leg was absolutely gold, dude. <laughs> so, let me ask you this. Uh, you're going to meet uh, Austin, uh, awesome Austin, and and who else? Uh, his family, and who else is going to be there? And and do you? So obviously, actually, you do. You already answered the question because you started to see the Mandela effect right after the last eclipse. So you think that this definitely ties in with it in some way? And you want you have a theory uh, you want to elaborate on at all, or you just think in some way it's connected and you and you're interested in it? Well, see, it's interesting, right? So like. 
I had already thought for years that there was something funny about it, right? Because I, I woke up, like, I, I became a Christian while I was, like, in the years before that, and I was praying for discernment. And I just think it was really odd that it happened right after I was praying for discernment and for my eyes to be opened and for me to be shown everything. And God has answered supernatural prayers for me, so I wouldn't put it past him. And then, like, whenever I, I, I met Jenny, right, she told me her story. Jenny was at the same summer time. Of 2016, well, I, well, like, summer of 2016. Like, summer of 2016, like, my eyes were open to Flat Earth and Mandela and, like, I couldn't deny that there was enough proof that these people weren't crazy for thinking the things that they were thinking. And, you know, I started to look into it and after, like, I go out to lunch and like stare up at the sky for like, you know, Oh my God, what's, you know? And so when the eclipse happened, I was actually pregnant and I was, I couldn't see the eclipse from where I was. I wasn't in the path of totality. Somebody online that I didn't know told me I should meditate inside because I was pregnant and I had a Kundalini awakening, like uh, energy shot up my spine. And I have been the same sense, and like I prayed for discernment at, at the same time as well. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so, yeah, that was, yeah, Jenny told me about that. I was like, whoa, it's just too much coincidence. And, and like all the hype about it, you know, Black Hole Sun, all these years, you know, like uh, I, I thought it was like all hype too, you know, but like all the stuff that keeps lining up. Dude, have you seen the, the Space Force uh, emblem? How the. If you look at the Space Force emblem, the freaking lines on it, it like match the eclipse line perfectly. Where they cross the paths, like you'll see on the bottom of it, it's trippy. And then like the, if you check the eclipse, like the eclipse model that they show, like how the uh, the shadow is magically smaller than the object casting it. You know, yeah. they show that it's the devil's sig sigil. It's like this, it's Lucifer's sigil. It's trippy, man. It looks exactly like it. So, and then, um, do you think that the what we see in the sky are natural functions of this reality by whatever created it, or do you think it's a trick oh, and I, uh, deceptions? Oh no, it's not. It's not a trick. If there's one thing we can rely on, it's the sky. It's the one thing that's not changing. It says in the Bible it was put there for signs and seasons. I mean, and like we don't. NASA is a bunch of crap, man. We we knew all these eclipses based on. Oh, I can't think of it now. That that model, that chart they've had for for a millennia. It's like that's. Yeah, that's why they named those towns Nineveh. I guess you know they've known where the eclipse. Oh yeah, be. dude. And I, then I they think, yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, man. I think for sure, like nothing's coincidence, man. They they control either God's God controlling everything. But they think they're controlling like everything right now. Like it says, God, that Satan's the god of this world, and he's twisting uh, and doing all kind of things. Like nothing's accident, you know. <laughs> yeah, and that's my thing. I think lines. I think that like you. I mean, you know what I think. Like I think that they're whoever they is, right? Right? Whatever. I don't know. I don't know a group of people or groups. Like uh, I just yeah. don't know. And I'm not gonna go on a witch hunt and down one of those rabbit trails. They want you to go down and oh, it's definitely these people. It's definitely those people. But who's ever controlling the media and the psyops and the education system and uh, you know whoever the the actual power structure is behind? I think that mm -hmm. they are. They know damn well that they're not leaving this place just like us, and they're hell bent on gatekeeping the true nature of reality, which is why we have the globe, yeah. and which is why we have all the Mandela effect doesn't exist, and why they have these strong, strong views against anything supernatural. Uh, all these high priests of science are dead set against it. It's very strange. Like I don't know why actual science and spirituality shouldn't just coexist. Like that should be the thing. But what we see from them is complete gatekeeping of anything that sits outside of something that they can tell you that they have control of. And then if you do realize that there's more going on, right? Like say for instance, well, you're not gonna convince me that we're all just a bunch of bumbling idiots having false memory. And I know the Monopoly man had a monocle. I know it was Haas Avocados. We can go right down the line. Like I'm not buying that. Something's definitely happening. Well, here we are, it's CERN, it's D-Wave, it's quantum computers. And uh, also the whole yeah, point, the whole point NASA of this of Europe, you know. <laughs> yeah, dude, it is like it's underground NASA is what I've always called it, and I know a lot of people like the Mandela effect community maybe strongly disagree with me, but come on, man, you guys are falling for the same trick we've been falling for all along, man. They show us some cool pictures of this place, and then you're gonna tell me, well, they're smashing particles underground, and they are opening the pit of Apollo, and they're doing and they're doing that, and they're do and I'm like, they ain't doing shit, man. 
Ain't, ain't doing shit. They would love they're for you not. to believe that they're doing that. Exactly. And if they are doing anything, it's, it's not anything science-y. They're not, like, breaking through the dimensions. That's all nonsense fairy tale crap that goes along with their evolution agenda and just disproving anything supernatural. Some, somebody had a good theory. I forget who it was. Off. There was somebody on the show, Dave. Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but there was somebody on the show a while ago, so I want to give them credit. But I don't remember which one of the uh, people in the community was. But they said, you know what it probably is if it's anything. If it's not just completely fake, it's probably just like a big surveillance place. Surveillance system and running algorithms and shit. And yeah, maybe there's some high-tech shit like that going there. But man, when these people tell me, well, well D-Wave computers are causing the Mandela effect. And I'm like, okay, well, how would they, you know, tell me how a computer being kept at really cool temperatures and running fast uh, correlates to oh well then the rip the change in the fabric of reality because I just don't believe that at all. No, absolutely not. They they're not they don't have the power to change reality. That's they want you to think they have that power. They want you to be scared to death that they can go into space. Aliens are going to get you, or or they're going to switch into another reality. There's a, a black hole going to open up at any moment. It's all bullshit, man. It's all to scare you and keep you afraid. But they're not doing anything. I mean, they're symbols of 666, and they got uh, Shiva the Destroyer. It's like they're not seriously doing science. I mean, they got a freaking a, a, a demon worship ceremony to, at the opening. We know yeah. there's people using the eclipse for negative, right? Uh, yeah. Should we not try to use it for positive? Of course we should. Exactly. Of course we should. And again, I've seen the, obviously, the, the Gothic Tunnel opening and all this stuff. And people say that to me. Well, how can you say they're not causing the, Haven't you seen the satanic blah, blah, blah? And I'm like, yeah, okay. So them putting on a show means that they're ripping holes in the space-time continuum and all this shit? No, yeah. it just means they're putting on a show and you're a fucking hook, line, and sinker. Again, this is where the truth has exactly. become more they gullible than the right normies. There. The yeah. truth has pushed more bullshit than the normies. They share more fear than the normies. It's gotten fucking pathetic. And I love that people are willing to question things and the fact that we became truth seekers in the beginning. I think that's fabulous. But I am very discouraged by how much bullshit people share and... Uh, really they they they're worse than the normies right truth is we'll share all sorts of stuff whatever fits their narrative and we know that's so i i ran down a list earlier i don't know if you heard it but i mean all the stuff that i've been told is going to happen from i'm going to die from chemtrails i'm going to die from 5g military is going to be in the street they're going to kick in my door they're going to be worldwide blackouts they're going to starve us out of food they're going to stick stuff in my it's none of it's happened none of it and i'm still alive baby you oh, know i God. feel fantastic it's all fear for him, man. Exactly. That's all it is. It's one, the next thing that's going to get you. It's the, it's the global warming for the truthers. You know, it's the, it's, they just change the narrative every time. Oh, it's the next one. That's why, you know, <laughs> RV truth, man. <laughs> he's, like, he's been saying all this stuff for years. You know, the same, oh, something's going to get you. It's going to get you. It's not G. You know, if, you, if, if fear is what's going to get you. You know, what the fear is. Don't be scared. I mean, look, everybody said, you can't get on a plane. Your ass flew back and forth across the country over and over. That was cool. And you again for that. So like, dude, it, it, like Crow said, you yeah. know. It's great, but that was just epic. Like, everybody who fought back won. You know, that's what it goes to show. You just don't give in to the fear, and you don't have nothing to worry about. Like, yeah. it was funny, like, her, Jenny's mom, we told her, we said, we're going to go to the, uh, go to Ohio to the path of the totality. And she's like, oh, well, don't get too close to, to the eclipse. And like, what, what do you think <laughs> totality means? <laughs> and then she's like worried, oh, don't, don't get near any big groups. They're saying about these terrorist warnings. All these terrorist <laughs> warnings. Terrorists. Like, well, yeah, if there's a terrorist attack, it's not going to be some foreign agency. It's going to be the government that does it. And I, it's going to be wherever they're going to have it at. I'm, I, can't, yeah. I, can't, I can't stop them. Ain't no need for me to live in fear about something that may never happen. You know, yeah. Yeah. it's ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're we're going to get there. I just thought, I'm wondering if it's going to be cloudy or not. You know, it's... Well, it probably was, this is where they bring out their old chemtrails. <laughs> it's good timing for them. This is the perfect type of thing that they'd like to block out on you, so we'll see, right? If anybody's doing the vinegar, or if that, you know, I mean, they thought it worked for, I think it was Joelle, right? Yeah, Joelle Lynn online, she did uh, she did the vinegar boil, and I always thought that was kind of crazy. Have you ever done it, Brian, boiled the vinegar? No, nah, it looks kind of crazy to me, too, but I don't know. 
you let me know how it works for you. I thought so too. I, I've, I've never done it. Crow Triple Seven did it. And he said it worked. And like our friend uh, Joe Elliott, he claims it worked. But he seems a little wanky to me. It's like, how's a little pot of oh, vinegar yeah. gonna get all the way out there in the atmosphere? But you know, I mean, I've seen crazier things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Has there been any uh, new Mandela effects that this come across lately? Mm, nothing that stands out right now that I can really think about um, too much. Um, the newest one, I think that's been, uh, yeah, I don't really know. I'm not really sure. I'd have to think about that for a minute. Yeah, I was just thinking today, I haven't noticed one in a while uh, that, that comes to, to mind. And I, I used to seem like I would notice one every day. Is that a movie, the total solar eclipse one day? I don't know. No, it's that we just saw a billboard advertising the freaking eclipse. That's crazy. I ain't never seen that light in my life. We're, yeah. we're driving down the interstate, and, and was where we at Illinois? Yeah. It was. Right, and, and yeah, Wisconsin. Okay. And dude, it was a freaking billboard that said total solar eclipse one day. Don't miss it. That's <laughs> just a picture of the eclipse. That's <laughs> trippy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, like, is there a movie coming out? I'm pretty disconnected, so I don't know yeah, if movies oh, come out. Yeah. Or, I don't know. What's going there, on. Is, there <laughs> is. You're actually acting in it right now, and you just don't realize it. Welcome to movie yeah, Earth. Yeah. <laughs> German uh, uh, I think I think there is a, an unusual confluence of events, right? So, like. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the, 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 the sign at the, uh, of the end and his coming would be the sign of Jonah. Jonah to Nineveh. To, he, oh, he didn't go to Nineveh willingly, but when he finally... I'm losing you big time. Your phone's cutting out big time. Well, you're, uh, oh, that sucks. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, as soon as I start talking about the Bible, it starts getting some gravels. But, uh, it, but in the year 745 B.C. was the year that Jonah went to Nineveh, and it was an eclipse that year, a total solar eclipse. And a lot of people think that may be why, like, the city converted magically uh, overnight. And it just happens to be, like, those cities named Nineveh. But like I said, that, they knew where the eclipse was going to be when they named the place. Mm -hmm. So, like... <laughs> It's, you know, half dozen six to another, you know? Exactly. You, you, you don't, uh, they, they've named the cities, and them, uh, but, but the path it makes, makes them the left and the top, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. You know, there's a lot of stuff that lines up, you know. I mean, Albert Pike said World War Three would be happening the way it's looking like it's starting to happen. <laughs> you know, he, they said World War One and World War Two. he called that. Uh, you know, and now that World War Three looks like it's panning out right at the same time the the red heifer is over there. I don't know. It's just I, I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't put it past them as this being a moment like it's a signal to the to the you know scumbags that think they're elite to commence with their plans or whatever. I wouldn't put it past that. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's all with your intent. You know, we're going to be having good intent. And if you're having good intent, it's going to be great. But whatever their plan is, if there was a plan to go through the time with all of this, it's just going to be another big fucking psyop. It's not even going to be like... Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's just going to be something people believe My that was portrayed that didn't even really go down. Like, it's a show. It's a magic show. Exactly. Bread and circus. Keep you distracted. Look over here. Look over here. I just want to keep you working, keep you distracted until you, you're too old and too tired to do anything. <laughs> Get you sterile. Yep. Educate you, yeah. soften you with vaccines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, did I say that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> well, That's I did. We're gonna, with Lola, we're going to homeschool her. The whole oh, hell yeah. That's definitely the way to go, man. It's definitely the way to go. But hey, listen, we're at 20 minutes. Yeah, I'm, dude, she hasn't I'm, had a single. Uh, I'm going to uh, let you go because I'm, yep. I'm losing a little bit and we're at 20 minutes. But, bro, thank you for calling in. Yeah, no problem, brother. It's good talking to you, man.
Yeah, you too, man. Hey, stay blessed, everybody. Have a good, uh, have a good time at the. uh, Where is your meetup in Ohio? You said. Yeah, we're gonna be in the um. What is it called? Uh, Yeah, El Doran at the El Doran Speedway in Ohio. Eldora, Eldora Speedway in Ohio. Jenny and I are gonna live stream it. So if you're so to one of our channels, come over and check it out. Or we, we'll be on the Mellow Dome probably if we if we can manage to find Austin. <laughs> all right, brother. Awesome. I'll talk to you soon, all right? All right, brother. All right, bro. Take it easy. All right, later, bro. All right. David Reif and Jenny Spark on the line. And, uh, yeah, for those that didn't catch that at the beginning, David's the one that actually found the King Tut out back of Flattoberfest that time when I showed you guys that he was out back in a fucking crate, the old reality King Tut, just a snake on the forehead, no bird. And it had been following me already around the Carolinas because it was at my meetup in Charlotte. Two huge King Tut replicas at this random bar, dude. Of course, no bird. Pretty wild stuff. 978-435-0006. Two great calls. Let's keep the bar high. We heard from JM and we heard from uh, David and Jenny. Who's next? Give us a ring dong dutchie. 978-435-0006. If you're a member, you have a link in your email. Come be part of the show. Where are all you yellow belly cowards tonight? Well, I guess I can't call you a yellow belly coward because you called in. What? What's up? Hey, I'm giving you props. I'm not calling you a coward. Oh, my God. No, I should have just joined the show instead of calling. Well, what's going on? Not much. I'm going to be hiding under the... Uh, what's, uh, what's, what's going on, my fellow Mandela Effect dealing bartender? <laughs> yeah. The original. You're the original. Oh, you're, you're, you're the original, bro. I'm just, I'm just following in your footsteps, Cesar. So. Well, you're doing a great fucking job. <laughs> I, I love what you do. I love what you do. You don't take no shit. You don't pull no punches. I love what you do. I, I've been busy, so I don't really get to it a lot. But when I do, and I still get on shows here and there. And I mean, what's going on? Nothing. Shit, my life has been nothing but fucking drama. I'm like, no, this is not me. This is, what is what's going on? How are you having drama all of a sudden? Energy. It's just the energies and, you know, I'm sitting on this eclipse. Um, I don't expect anything. I expect it to be a big nothing burger. Yeah. But I think... Other things are going to happen. There's so many things going on with this eclipse. This was probably this is the first one that I've known about that I'm not going out to look at. Okay, uh, because you're busy or because you don't want to? Because I don't want to. I'm off. I don't have to. We we've been closed uh, April first so, to April sixteenth. So I could I could have done whatever I wanted to do. No, the ob- obvious question, do you think the Mandela effect is tied into the eclipse in any way? Do you think it accelerates it? Do you think we might see some new changes, or do you think that's not connected at all? I haven't come across anything like that. I haven't really looked into it that deep. Do I think something's going to change? I mean, I try and think back to 2017 when the last, I guess, solar, I bought my cats August 21st, 2017, when that other eclipse hit. Yeah. And then we had a lunar eclipse a couple of weeks ago that nobody talked about. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's getting hard to keep track of them on so many now, even though they tell you they're so rare. I swear, when I, was, when I grew up, Halley's Comet, which we know is now Halley's, we were told it was like every 78 or 82 years, like every 80 years. But I, I swear I've seen it like uh, talked about coming by like three times in the last fucking decade, bro. I mean, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. So. <laughs> I think it's more than that. I don't think, you know, it's total wherever you're at, but uh, does it matter? This last one they had, actually, I keep saying the last one in 17. No, the last one was October, what, 13th? 14th. October 14th, 2023. You know, I sat there in the hot springs with my daughter and her fiancé, and we looked at it with the glasses and the whole bit. It was a really nice day, but I kept telling her about this one. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. Like, like, I kept telling her about this eclipse, <laughs> but it is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been, 
you know, I, I'd say a couple months back, I, I did a bunch of videos uh, on my channel that were interviews at the bar. I was running around, running back and forth. You know what? It was a lot of fun, but you, you, I can't keep putting that up. I can't, you know, it's like the people that are watching it are just watching the same thing over and over and over. They don't care. Well, if you, put, if you put up new ones or you just reposting the same ones, then yeah. But if you make some new no, videos. It's, it's different people. Yeah, and, that's and cool, man. We like to watch different. that. If you want to watch Suso talk to people about Mandela Effect at his bar, follow his fucking channel. People here definitely be interested. People link Suso's channel, please. Thank you. And I would say, just like if you just go to where I say 2024, just go look at some of those videos. Not the first couple. I was just getting back into it. I was trying so hard to stay away from it. And I, you know, I'm not sure why. Why are all these people trying to stay away from it? Because how many channels are not online anymore? Mm -hmm. How many channels that were in the Mandela effect are not doing it? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can count on one hand how many are. <laughs> so, and I, I just, I don't know. Uh, was it physical reality that got me moving away? No, it was. A, I needed a distraction. The Mandela effect for me was a distraction because I got it. I get the message. Shit's changing. Shit changes. It's fluid. You know, as far as what the theory is or what it's doing, I don't know that that's what we should be looking for. Does it matter what's making it happen? Does it matter that your car can drive? Do you have to know why your car drives? Well, if you're a mechanic, yeah, that you'd be highly interested in it. When you're somebody that investigates reality, trying to find the mechanism behind the Mandela effect, I think uh, definitely intriguing, you know. You might be right, though. Maybe it's not necessary. But it's certainly very intriguing and very interesting, more interesting than, say, wasting energy on any of these conspiracy rabbit trails that are all just different lies about how they portray a fake event as real. It gets fucking stale fast. Yeah. But uh, but also I mean, I, uh, I've learned I, I got like a new thing too. I'm like uh, I was gonna do a video just on this. Like uh, this is me now. It's like taking my uh, truth or self and integrating myself back into dealing with all the normies and like the matrix. Like, but it's like it's this whole different experience because now I have 14 years into like all this shit. So like I don't get affected by the fear. I don't you know buy into their bullshit. But, but it. But I'm having Are you a great. Doing yourself any favors? I think I'm doing Are myself doing a great favor now. Favors? Is what I'm saying. Like I'm doing much better now that I'm doing that. And now, dude, what I've realized is talking to all these people that I talk to. Not only am I starting to meet people, and like it's really cool, but it's like I'm meeting a whole bunch of people that were totally not in our echo chamber here on YouTube that want to talk about these things. And like, there's a lot of people out there that have some cool thoughts on stuff. So for me right now, it's really cool. So like, I'm totally flexible with like what I need to do. Like, so I wanted to work three out three days at work bartending and do my show and have that balance. And I'd have enough budget to say, to pay the bills. I was thinking when I figured everything out, but now I'm working 50 hours at the bar instead of 20. And I'm only right. doing two streams a week, um, and my balance has changed. Um, but I am loving that for right now because I need to get away from these fear mongering truths. I'm so sick of it, and it's even though I try and try every year, um, it, it's never going to change. And it's gotten to the point where it's been embarrassing to be associated with people that spread so much fear and so much bullshit. So I'd rather take my message to the fucking normies rather than trying to get the truth is to see the Mandela effect or trying to get people that believe in NASA to see that it's nonsense. Like, let me just talk to real people that I'm going to interact with out in, in the real world as I like, you know, um, I think it's cool, dude. It's like. It's like walking through a video game with the game genie and the cheat code, right? Because now I know the things that I know, and now I walk through this matrix of people, but, like, I know that, like, you know, I hear them talking about mundane shit. It's still mundane shit. I don't pay attention to the media, but, 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 but I can have, like, engaging conversations with people, and, like, it's kind of like you have a cheat code on reality. You could almost, like, fuck with people if you wanted to, but I would never want to do that, but, like, that's how I feel right now. Well I don't know if this is fucking with people, but there was one time a couple came in, they were an older couple, and I was kind of busy, and I was talking Mandela effects, not talking man about the Mandela effect, but asking questions to these people to kind of entertain them. Mm -hmm. I went up to this one couple, 
And I asked them, I said, what color is a yield sign? What shape? What color writing? Yeah. And they're like, yellow with black writing, tri- uh, triangle, uh, and, uh, or diamond, actually. And I'm like, okay. I didn't give them the answer. Of course They not. were leaving. I said, look, next time you hit pass a yield sign, think of me. <laughs> and I just feel like that was messing with them. I could have told No, them that's that cool, bro. That's like a little soft wink and a nudge and awaken to reality. Hey, by the way, there hasn't been a yellow yield sign since like 1971, which is before I was born, even though I grew up with them, you know? <laughs> oh, wow. That's funny. 71. I, I found 72. Okay. Maybe I have but the date wrong, but I know it's mid 70s, were... mid 70s and well, before I was born. They had to run around the whole country changing them back and forth. <laughs> well, the Mandela Burger is pretty efficient, so don't put anything past them. <laughs> I am a doc wizard, you know. I'm gonna fuck all this. The people want to deny it. I'm just gonna play along, and I'm just gonna like promote myself as this doc wizard that does like mind tricks on people. <laughs> yeah, but the people that deny it, just I mean, look, I went through many years doing that. I say many years. Okay, I've been into this what eight or nine years. So whatever many is for nine years, so much that I see these people come out and are they trolling or are they NPCs? Because I was a big NPC person for a long time. Like there's NPCs out there. Oh yeah. Period. Well, maybe they're just like that. I don't. I don't know. I, I, there's a, a lot of adjectives I'd like to use, but I'm like maybe that's just who they are. I mean, they just. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe they're not really an NPC. Yeah, fuck them. Just what they believe. Yeah, and you know, I don't. Fo- I, we, we're going to talk about it because that is one of the most fascinating aspects of the Mandela effect is the way that people will deny their own reality so much, even when they're so affected. However, I don't focus on pointing out all these affected people and stuff anymore because it's become a complete waste of fucking time with those people. Yeah, I, most, I never minded when you do that. Every once in a while, it would be oh, a I know. channel that I'm familiar with on YouTube, and I'd be like, "Wow." That dude's like totally flat everything. You guys would see that Mandela effect? Yeah, there's a lot of those guys. There's a lot of those guys. You know, and, but you know, okay, with the flat earth thing, even with the Mandela effect, look, I don't know what the hell it is. I don't know what the flat earth thing is. I don't think it's flat, but I know it ain't a fucking ball. Yeah. I mean, and I don't know that, but yeah, that's everything I look at. With my own eyes and research and everything else, it's not a ball. It's not spinning. It's millions of miles an hour around something else that's spinning zillions of miles an hour. I mean, it's just, you know, I don't know. But I'm not there at the same time. So I, you know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just, I've been going through a Enjoy lot. Enjoy life. People need to not, it's just, this is why, again, my stuff with 9-11 and then into this whole big thing about no fear is so important kind of supersedes everything. Don't live in fear, disconnect from the media, and life is real. The stuff they present us is all fake, but life is real, your connections with real people are real, me and you conversing are real, when we go to the beach, that's fucking real. That's the real shit. And stop focusing on anything they're putting on the screen, because it's all garbage, and if you're giving it energy and going down every rabbit trail that they leave there for you, all you're doing is, is you literally just buying in to the TV program that they're presenting completely. And it's not reality. When you I want get, reality, open the door, go outside. Bored. When I get bored, that's what I do. I look for rabbit holes. I, look for I don't do it at all anymore. Really? What do you talk about? <laughs> I talk about... Well, I, 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 well, well you, you're listening to it right now. Are you hearing me talk about the newest rabbit hole and the newest so-called... You hear me talking about the boat and the bridge or the fucking this and the that... Except when the, the CV hit, then I had to get back into all that stuff because it was so big and so important. And all my experiences with that day in September and how much this was just a blueprint for that. I uh, definitely wanted to get into that. But as far as I'm not going to talk about a fake NASA launch or a fake event at a school or anything like that. But I'll talk about the bigger picture. And I'm talking about the bigger picture of reality. Let's trust our senses and our experiences. Let's not box ourselves into paradigms. Whether it's religion, whether it's any of these truth topics, they all have value. We're going to go through them, but we can't let them gatekeep us like many of the truthers have. They've got themselves to one point and then stuck there. And then if the next thing kind of disagrees with something that they believe where they're at now, then they won't go any further. That's why so many people feel threatened by the Mandela effect. Well, because that just breaks all the rules of reality. But so be it. It's happening, you know? And uh, that's just a function of reality and... 
we don't know what's next. I don't know what's next. I do know there are bigger things. Obviously, you don't usually know what the bigger things are till you get there, but I could give you a hint at what some of them are. What's going to happen when we die? Where do we go next, right? But we don't have that experience yet. We'd just be guessing, but we can have those conversations. It's fun. It's fantastic. With the Mandela effect, with the Mandela effect, we have those conversations. It's fun and fantastic. But however, with that, we also have hundreds, if not thousands, of experiences that we can talk about. So that's why I'm like really focused on that right now. It's the most fascinating thing ever. Do, do I think it's the be all end all of truth? Absolutely not. Yeah. I've been thinking about a lot of things you've been talking about and uh I mean, even recently, I've been thinking, what if, just what if, my energy, who I am, whatever I am, is just always physical, and it just, we just reset into the next reality and do it all over again, and it just always happens that way. Could be, man. Yeah, it could be. I don't know. I mean, because what am I going to do when I'm done here? Go to heaven, sit on a harp, uh, sit on a cloud and play a harp? No, that sounds pretty boring. (laughs) <laughs> and, you know, I, I just feel like, no, okay, what are we going to do? Rest in between? No, we probably just keep kicking in. And the energy, and the energy's gotten so, I don't want to be positive or negative, but I'm experiencing a lot of negative. So I'm like, holy shit. Well, yeah, that's a, you know, get away from social media, guys. Don't be afraid to take a break. Facebook is just full of aggravation and negative energy, and I still use it. Uh, but I can see that's where I see all, most of the stupidness, most of the dumbness is the shit people share on social media. So you're not you're not on TikTok? No, I mean I am, but I don't ever really use it. I never go on there to look for videos. I, I do have a TikTok. channel. Right. TikTok's the worst. I fucking hate TikTok, but I do have like four thousand subscribers on there because if I do happen to, so here's here's my extent of TikTok, right? If I happen to do a video that's under ten minutes, it makes it up there. But you know that my intros aren't even under ten minutes, so it's quite uh, rare that I do a short video that'll make it on there. But if I have anything short enough to make it on there, I do upload it to there. But I don't go out of my way to uh, do anything for it. I hate that platform. Yeah, it I, sucks. It's a dumbing so down of truth. Um, it took great, uh, you know. It, Truth communities, I think, were thriving in, like, 2000 to, like, 2020, like, a good decade. I mean, 210 to 2020, there were forums, and then it got all centralized with these huge platforms, which was by design to get everybody there, to then pull out the rug on you, get everybody comfortable with it, stuck in one place, you know. Uh, But then with TikTok, it took what was a beautiful thing with YouTube, no matter the topic, people doing streams, you know, hours long like this, and it just dumbed everything down for these people that have no attention span these 60 second videos and it's just absolute crap and all these people with their creepy music trying to do flat earth and mandela effect videos that look like fucking trash with them glitching out in front of their virtual fucking video screen it's fucking dumb they're just droning through life i don't know that i'm not just droning through life i'm into this i i'm not into it as much as i have been and I'm getting back into it, and I'm just like, wow, I'm, I'm watching Dogman and Bigfoot. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I'm like, look, I'm like, you know what? But I think the, yeah, but see, I watch those things. So I put those things in my brain, and I feed myself that stuff. So guess what? I think that stuff's probably actually really out there. Well, it could be. Only because I've been feeding it to myself. So you, you get what you feed yourself. I mean, that's what's happening. But that's just physical reality. I, I don't know. Don has a great comment in chat. Don Westrope wrote, Many truth channels overinvested in one or a few ideas and won't let it go. Ego. Yes, exactly. Yeah, but what, what's, the, what's the most amazing thing? I mean, to me, I, I'm saying amazing. What's the most important? What's the realest thing? Fuck it, I'll give you my answer. Not living in fear over fabrications. That's the big thing for me. Oh, okay, absolutely. I was going towards the conspiracies, but I absolutely Fuck agree. Fuck all the conspiracies. Not. They're all fucking bullshit because everything they're giving us is fake. So the Mandela effect is it's, my it, answer. But yeah, well, that fake? too. It, no, it's not fake. It's not. So it doesn't even go under the idea of conspiracy. They try and spin it into conspiracy because a lot of people that are conspiratorial minded think outside the box enough to talk about the Mandela effect, but it has fucking zero to do with a conspiracy. 
other than the other than the gatekeeping and cover up that comes along with it in this direction. That's the conspiracy. The changes, the fucking real changes in this reality. So there's there, there's changes, and let's just assume this is one reality. Let's assume we're not shifting through time. It has to be one reality for me. I'm you know I'm open to it all. It's all on the table, but for me. Incremental changes, residue, and the fact that fucking everybody has the memories here of what used to be. For me, it's one reality, man. See, that's the thing. And it, it's so much easier for me to lean towards shifting realities. But recently, I've been trying to take myself away from that. Because I'm like, man, I ain't right. And I know I'm not right. And nobody's right. So what if this is just one reality and this is actually change? That is what's that happening. Shows... <laughs> what's that? I think mean, that is what ha- has happened. It took you nine years to come to this thought? No, I've, I'm still looking. I'll always look. I'll search even after I have the answer. I'll still search. <laughs> it's what I do. Funny. But I'm like, okay. If it's just funny to hear you say in 2024, what if it's one reality and it's all changing? It's like, you've been doing videos <laughs> yeah, since 2016 or something. Haven't you done a video or something? I mean, <laughs> that's so funny. That is. Even back then, I don't think I used that as oh, a possible explanation. I mean, I might have. I'm not going back to look. <laughs> but if it is one reality and just shifting, what, what's the biggest message there? Hey, you changes most of them aren't that big a deal i mean yeah there's going to be a handful you got the jfk i think the fact that reality is fluid and whether that means it's like supernatural interference with the people that think we live in a simulation or whatever this is proof of some of those things like reality is completely not what we were told and it's like this magical thing like dude i'm not going to ignore it. for me sue so that that is the answer that's definitely the most interesting thing um, and it's hand in hand with my most important message. But where I would start with anybody is I would disconnect them from the media and the fear. Start there, and then I would get to the spiritual stuff. So those are my, you know, for me, they're on an even playing field, and I'll always go go back to that. So, you know, I, I could have as easily answered the Mandela effect as the, the most important thing. As, as Obviously, you know, I talk about it the most. But I'll never forget my message. And uh, 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 no. Of no, no fear, <laughs> and I watch how it keeps repeating with everything the truth community does. I feel that probably fifty percent of those people push all the different fears that they do because they have a foundation of fear based in the assumption that in one way or another the government killed three thousand people on nine eleven. They assume. I that. was going to say you used to talk about nine on say on say. No, nine uno uno nine on say. Yeah, work. whatever. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just call it. We'll just call it 2001. Well, not everybody knows what we're saying. I'm sure everybody here knows anyway. But I mean, even that you did used to speak about that a lot more. <laughs> but that was the thing that opened up a lot of minds. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, I mean, that was really woke a lot of people up. I'm not just saying people that listen to your channel. I'm just saying that kind of woke a lot of people up. And I don't know. I just struck a lot of fear in me. I remember back then. It did not wake me up that just well yeah wow. dude and that's what they wanted to do and all those things about oh well how did the why did the government kill our own people and here's how they did it well here's the other way they, they did it with this magical weapon they did it in reality no that's not what went on at all now it's still shitty what they did it's awful and evil and manipulative and all that shit but it yeah, wasn't evil. a mass murder thing that was portrayed on tv you know so that's why my 9 11 message i feel is as important as anything you're going to find on the internet Period. I know that sounds like a bold claim, but I really feel that way. Even with 9-11, there are things that I've noticed that have changed throughout the years with that. Yeah. Well, there's definitely Mandela's in it. I mean, for sure, there are ones that I haven't talked about that you've noticed. Mm-hmm. The Pentagon. The Pentagon's gigantic. That's a huge one. Well, the, yeah, the Pentagon one's weird. And, and at this point, so many things flip-flop for me and go back and forth, and, and I'm not really, you know, into it at the time, and then I'm not, and then I'm back into it. You know, I couldn't tell you, but I'll tell you right now, what I'm feeling right now, the first time those things hit, not one person died. They were clearing it out, they were re-renovating or something, and yeah. nobody was there. And nobody died. Now, people died. What are you talking about? Uh, the Pentagon. 
Oh, 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 all right, all right. I thought you meant, forget it. I thought you were talking about in general, you realize it was complete media fakery, like I'm saying, and now in your reality, like you've changed your mind about that. I, I totally forgot that I brought up the Pentagon to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got lost there. I was reading the chat, but yeah, for people that aren't familiar, for people that aren't familiar, I remember that this is all official story stuff, so obviously this is not what we believe. And I'm not saying me and Suso believe the same exact things, but we don't believe the official story of 9-11. But the official story was that what I remember, you know, before the Mandela effect changed it, and I'm somebody that extensively researched that topic, probably more extensively than literally anybody you know. So for me and many others that I've heard talk about it, I remember that the official story was that when the plane hit the Pentagon, Yes, the people on the plane died, but when the plane hit the Pentagon, nobody inside the Pentagon died because that wing of the Pentagon was not full of people because it was just under construction specifically to be reinforced against that type of attack. This whole story. But now, there's always been 125 people that allegedly died in that wing of the Pentagon. I don't even think that's the number I heard, but whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying. And then, of course, there's the Solomon Brothers building. Now it's always been Salomon. The Bush, the book that George Bush read in the classroom was My Pet Goat. Now it's always been The Pet Goat. Wow. Hey, um, before we get too deep into that, you got any Eclipse stuff you want to talk about? I, I've been off and on your channel. I haven't really heard everything that was going on. You were talking mm -hmm. Eclipse stuff. Uh, I mean, not, I, not too much other than like, I think it's a problem, most likely a natural function of this reality. I don't think that it's the moon eclipsing the sun. I'm not going to go off on a ledge and say that it, oh, it's Rahu or K2 because then I'd just be believing another story that I can't prove. For all I know, whatever we're looking at could just be eclipsing itself and just a light in the sky. And that's just a pattern that comes out. I, I don't really know what it is. Um, I obviously, I think that all the uh, hype around it is unwarranted. If anything real does happen, like maybe a magnetic disturbance or something, I could see something like that being a, a natural effect of it. But it certainly won't be because they fucking turn in CERN on, which is what they want people to believe in. Truth is a Sharon exactly. now. CERN's coming on, yeah. daily eclipse. So now if anything happens, all the truth is going to say well, it's CERN. Look, and I, figure, I figure CERN ramped it up again so they could take credit. Of course. That's what exactly. they want. Go on, elaborate. I'm going to grab a drink while you elaborate on that because that's the exact point I made earlier. They want to lay credit to it. They, they Yeah, they want to have credit to uh, something's going to happen after this eclipse. And and now that, that you bring it up and you ask that question right in the beginning, do I think the Mandela effect is a part of it? I've heard stories where people were talking about, oh, yeah, there was an eclipse I was watching. And then all of a sudden I started to notice changes. Look, for me, I impaled myself on a glass table and then started noticing changes. I, I don't know. I, you know, that's, and that brings me to thinking there's some sort of a shift. That's why I went off on, whoa, we shift realities because in that reality, I died. There's no way I pull a piece of glass out of my chest and survive. Out of my heart, for crying out loud, or where the heart used to be, not where it's at. <laughs> where it used to be. That's where the glass went through my chest. I, and and I'm, I woke up the next day and was walking around in a robe in my backyard for two weeks because they laid me off. Like, this is great. They asked who wants to be laid off. I said, hey, I'm not even here. Yeah. I'm not even real anymore. Get me out of here. And, they, and I don't know. Um, I don't want to go too far into the 9 11. Yeah, we got to watch our terminology if we get into it. So don't use the words F-A-K-E-E -E or H-O-A-X or, you know. <clears throat> well, we don't, have to, we don't have to go there anyway. That's not why I called. I was calling just to see. I, I was going to tell you, look, tomorrow my plan is to, you know, wake up. All the windows are covered. I'm not looking. I'm not going near it. Um, uh, this is the first time this will happen. I had to fight to do this because I'm like, yeah, I kind of want to say it. I mean, I'm, I'm about 75% totality. I could have went down to Dallas. Um, Scarab Performance invited me down. Dan invited me down. Uh, shit, Guy Fawkes invited me down. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know, man. It's, that's that's going to be that's gonna be something. I'm so glad I didn't. After I heard last week, I heard a story where there was a million more people in, that, in the line of totality. Mm -hmm. And... And they're already uh, killing the uh, 
supermarkets, gas stations don't have gas. I mean, and it's not even here yet. So I, I don't, I'm glad I didn't go down. Well, and I'm glad I'll, 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 I'll be working. I wa- I'll watch it from the parking lot, and then I'll go punch in shortly after, like a half hour after it's over, and uh, that'll be my excitement for the day. So, so, so you're in like uh, I'll say north, south. Uh, sorry, east, north, south. North, North Carolina. States, North Carolina. What, what's the temperature right now? Oh, tonight's not that warm. It's been getting pretty warm, but right now, I don't know. It's probably in the 50s right now or something. 50s? Right. Oh, it's like 60 degrees right now, and it's uh, 9 p.m., 10 p.m. almost, 9.15, 60 degrees. I'm looking at looking at 27 and a snowstorm coming right at <laughs> I'm like, all right, that's fine. It'll be cloudy tomorrow. I'm going to have to worry about it anyway. Well, hey, listen, we're at a half hour, bro. I, I got to let you run so more people can call in. But thank you. Oh, okay. I, I, I just wanted to quickly run over. They, they're, they're closing schools. They got the uh, National Guard out. You got uh, NASA shooting rockets. I, I mean, it just, it, it, I don't know. There's so much going on. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think I want to be there. All right, man. Thanks for taking my call. All right, bro. Have a good one. Hey, right, brother. All right, nine seven eight four three five zero 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 six. Three great calls in a row. We heard from JM. We heard from David Rice and Jenny Spark. And we heard from Suso. All people that have been in this community for a very long time. I've met, have not met Suso in person, uh, but of course I've met JM and and Jenny and David uh, as we spoke about. I think we actually all met at the same Flat Tober Fest event. I think that was the same event. I'm not sure, though. Get, gets to be a blur. I've been to so many of them. I've been to every one of Karen's events. Whoa. Night. Dose of reality. Brian. Yo, who's this? I'm getting a lot of noise and a little bit of feedback. Can you take me off speakerphone? Yo. Yo, who's this? It's Garrett. Who? Garrett. Garrett, what's up, man? Florida. Yeah, what's up, Garrett? What's up, dude? Yeah, I just hopped on the on the road and saw you were live and wanted to call in. Awesome, bro. What's happening? You, you see all that good stuff I've been sending you? Hell yeah, bro. Fucking residue. With that Fall re- Guy movie? Residue everywhere. What was the one with the Fall Guy? I forget. The Fall Guy is a new Ryan Gosling movie. And I've seen the movie. He, what did like you the, send me? I sent you, okay, I sent you, like, the movie poster, but I'll send you the, the trailers where at the end and the little logo of the fall guy is the dude falling, and it looks exactly like the guy from the, the Twin Towers jumper. Oh, all right, all right, yeah. And he's falling <laughs> upside down. Yeah, and it looks just exactly like it. I was like, I, the second I saw it, I was like, that is fucking ingrained in my memory now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You were the first person to... to you know, turned me on to the fact that no one died. And uh, I, I actually, I was listening the other night and, you know, you're saying everyone is always like, oh, my, my sister's brother's cousins, whatever. I'm like, I got someone who I'm um, one. He's my friend. He was yeah. my roommate. And his dad was apparently a first responder fire chief who died, mm-hmm. uh, allegedly. Mm-hmm. And he got a big payout, like five million or something like that. Yeah. And uh, his name is Lynch. His last name is Lynch. And I have I've yet to watch the World Trade Center movie with um, Nicolas Cage. Yeah. But apparently my friends told me they like mention his dad's name in that movie. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I mean, OK, so get this. So he he was like probably he's probably like my uh, he, he's just my age. So he was like probably uh like 12 when it happened and he couldn't get the money until he was 18 and then it was like the curse of the lottery for him because he was just handed five million dollars when he was was 18 really good-hearted guy like one that would do anything for you but he was just a, a, a alcoholic like bottle of captain morgan per day alcoholic like wake up in the morning at 9 a.m. and he just got back from the store and he would just pour himself 
Captain and Dr. Pepper all day long, every day. And um, sweet dude, but you could just tell that, that the whole the whole story had just gotten to him. Yeah. But, I, you know, it makes me really wonder, because everyone's got, oh, my sister's brother's cousin, da, da, da. but, like, I'm like, I have one guy, and it's his dad. So I really, I'm still confused on, you know, what happened to his dad, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. And I can't answer every question for, you know, if there were some real people that disappeared. I mean, you know, that's very likely that they would do something like that and try and have some real people, you know, just relocate or whatever, you know. Um, But it's the fact that he heard uh, whispers of his dad being mentioned with the World Trade Center movie that I saw, which is a complete propaganda film. So what are we saying? Are we saying that? The, fought, the group of firefighters that Nicolas Cage and his buddies were portraying in that movie, this guy's father was supposed to be one of those in quote-unquote real life? Because that's very suspect. That's what it sounds like. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's that's what it is. Like, that's, yeah, yeah. I got to go back and watch the movie, and I got to talk to him. And, uh, yeah. yeah, it's been a while. I think he quit drinking, so I'm really happy for him. And, uh, well, that's good, yeah. yeah, I mean, he does. He wouldn't hear any of it about like. I mean, he he wasn't. You know, he would never be aggressive kind of person about it. But he would. He would just didn't want to hear anything about. Even when I was like looking into it, and that, at that point I was like, architects and engineers for truth, and like Fahrenheit nine eleven, like kind of truther, and he just you know wouldn't hear anything Bro. about that. Yeah, and that's you know those are the boxes they want to keep you in. You know that type of truth, or yeah. as we know. And you know, then you got these other clowns out there, like Pete Davidson, the comedian whose father allegedly fucking died on nine eleven, and he's out there on his comedy acts making all these jokes about his dead father and uh, all these way over the top jokes that I really, even as a comedian, I don't think anybody would make about their father if that that fucking thing was real in any way at all. That's just one more thing to add on top of all the stuff I've dug through. I would never use that as evidence, the, but it's just the so the preponderance much. of evidence. As, yeah, dude. As Bob would say. <laughs> yeah, and you saw the guy yeah. that I, I don't know if you saw, but there was a guy that interviewed me on the Mandela Effect, and halfway through, he all of a sudden changes the topic to 9-11, having no idea who he's talking to, and then he's like, hey, yeah, and I was in New York with my dad and saw the second plane hit the tower. And I saw, obviously, I stopped him dead in his tracks with, like, 500 people in his chat, and I said to him, wait uh-huh. a minute. I said, you saw the plane hit the tower, or you saw an explosion and some chaos went inside, and the TV told you a plane hit the tower. And then he had to yeah. admit to me that that is what happened on his live show. I'm like, you see how this works now? You just lied to me. Told me you saw it at the tower. Do you know what's wild about um, my connection with it all is that George Bush, where was he on the morning of 9-11? Florida. In my hometown, Sarasota, Florida. He was like 20 miles from me at uh, Booker Elementary School. And... I, you know, they, that, that when reading my pet goat, as we all remember it, uh, yeah. and yeah. And then after that, you know, they like rushed him out or whatever, and he got out of town. And, uh, there's, there's a lot of weird connections that I've learned about Sarasota. Like apparently every sitting president at some point has visited Sarasota, Florida. That's interesting and, you say that because somebody has told me this before a few years ago. And I'm wondering, did you call before? It might have been me. This? You might have told me, me, but let, let's hear it again. I, yeah, okay, so every sitting president has visited Sarasota at some point during their presidency. Um, there's uh, I, Ayasha Dean. You guys talked about it. I'm, you know, this is a little bit before my time. All I can find is, like, old GeoCities Yahoo websites about it, but, like, Project Camelot. Yeah, I've heard and, of And uh, Ashayana Dean. Mm-hmm. Talking about the Sarasota Stargate and the Gruwal point, and I, I'm like, I'm driving right now, and I'm on the the phone, so I can't read chat. But if anyone knows anything about this, like the Sarasota Stargate and what was called uh, Bruja, like like witch in Spanish, Bruja, was the name of the city port of Atlantis that was apparently 14 miles off the coast of Sarasota, Florida. And we have on Siesta Key Beach is the only beach like this in, in all the land. Even, you know, you go to Lido Beach, which is you can see, see Siesta Key from Lido. And it, Siesta Key is white sand, like never gets above 75 degrees, like white, pure white. 
and it's quartz crystal if you look at it under a microscope. And I hypothesized, never really heard anyone. I was like, what if this is like the pulverized remains of a crystal, crystalline city or something like that? But the official explanation for it is it's uh, washed down the Mississippi River mm-hmm. and some kind of jet stream deposits it right at Siesta Key, not south at Nokomis, not north at Lido, but right at Siesta Key. And then Ashayana Dean. I had this one chick that was in my yoga class that went like crazy talking about the Stargate and stuff. And you couldn't follow any of anything she was saying because I tried to tell her about, you know, flat earth and stuff. And mm-hmm. she would just shut me down. Like she, and then she'd want to talk about uh, civilizations billions of light years away and millions of years ago and all this crazy stuff. And I was like, let's go out to the beach right now, take a telescope out. And my, my friend's P nine nine hundred, and see if we can see the na- uh, see the pier yeah. in Venice from Siesta Key, and it's seven miles away. It should be, you know, below the curvature of the Earth. We shouldn't be able to see that, you know. And she, you know, she was always talking about this this chick Ashayana Dean and Project Camelot, and you guys were talking about how that was like baby truther stuff and. All, all in like with the Alex Jones stuff. <laughs> yeah, and I remember hearing some of the Project Camelot stuff in my early days of the Awakening as well. That kind of came into my circle, you know, back in those times. Project Camelot yeah. and Andrew Baciago and all these types of things, uh, stuff that kind of comes into your yeah. sphere at the same time, you know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's been a, it's been a long journey for me. I mean, the Mandela effect is definitely the craziest thing that's ever happened. I actually just red pilled like three people on it the other night um while we were having a nice dinner over at their house i forget how it got started i think it was the monocle on the uh, (laughs) it was one one thing got it going but then i ended up giving the guy your whole 200 list and he was just he he's an older guy like probably in his 60s maybe his 70s and he was just like you just you just changed my entire reality to like in the last you know hour of conversation you know telling them all the different things and he was just sure the the monocle i gotta i gotta figure out why how it started oh it started with gallagher i showed them the gallagher because we were talking about language and gallagher's got that bit about poem and bomb and home and how all the words in the english language change Mm -hmm. so we got started with with gallagher on that whole deal did you show him how gallagher doesn't have any suspenders anymore yeah, no suspenders. And then I started telling him about how he. Uh, can you still hear me? All right. Yeah, you sound okay. You got a little okay. bit, a little okay. bit muffled, but it's it's okay. I I tried to plug in headphones. Um, yeah, and then okay, so we went from like Gallagher to talking about the Dave Chappelle thing and how he, you know, he's wearing suspenders in that one, and then you know it just went all over the place like risky business, and then I started showing them the. Um, uh, I started showing them the 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 continents, and yeah, they were just tripped out about about you know, dude, like Italy cocked back with the boot there with the big heel and everything, you know. And for me, Australia, it's like I always remember reading stuff about the Great Barrier Reef. Mm-hmm. The Great Barrier Reef's gone; <laughs> it's not even there anymore. Like, it's just like it did. Is that a Mandela effect? Like, did does that thing not exist anymore? I don't like, know. I'm interested to hear you talk about this more. I haven't heard anybody bring you this can up. Swim from Papua New from you know from Australia to Papua New Guinea now. Like it's oh, right yeah. there, and it used to be like the Great Barrier Reef was like this giant expanse. And I remember as a kid, I read this book um, uh, in a sunburnt country by Bill Bryson, and it was. Um, all about the Australia and the Great Beer Barrier Reef and stuff, and how uh, you know it was a big expanse. And I even remember people getting left on a boat on a dive trip, you know, out in the Great Barrier Reef. And I think they did a movie about it, like open water. It might not have been about the Great Barrier Reef. But I just remember that was like a big fear of mine. Was like, oh, if I go diving on the Great Barrier Reef, and like, what if they leave me? And there was just, you know, and for me, New Zealand was so much northeast of oh it's uh, crazy the orientation is crazy to me now it looks like australia has gone so far north up towards asia uh yeah yeah and the guy tried to justify it by saying like oh well you know they have more penguins in in new zealand than they do in antarctica or something 
I didn't even start with the flat Earth, but it was, it was funny. That's how we try friend... to justify the geography change to you. <laughs> <laughs> I was just. <laughs> They were pretty receptive. I mean, they were, they were receptive to anime. I've been I've been hitting hitting some good uh some good red pills and some good converts. You know, like my friend yeah. my friend who was there that night. I had dude. People are cool. There's some cool people out there. We just have to find them and talk to them. I'm telling you, there's a lot of schmucks, uh, but there's definitely some cool yeah. people. They just don't realize that there's all of us. So yeah, man. Go ahead, yeah. continue. Yeah, yeah. It's like my friends, you know, my friends know me now for it, and it's kind of funny because when they like, you know, I, I just so my friend who was there, uh, we were talking about the Mandel effect thing with she and her her uh, fiance came down to my place in Naples. By the way, if you're ever down here, and next time I'm in North Carolina, we're definitely linking up. Awesome. Um, oh yeah, the other connection between Sarah. Well, I thought we North were gonna, hang, dude. I thought we were gonna hang out a couple weeks ago, but it fell through. But uh, definitely. Well, hang yeah, out. I didn't know that you could fly out of Asheville, so I only had to uh, to drop my girl off at Asheville and and not. Charlotte. Yeah. She and, even asked me. She's like, "Why are you going to Charlotte?" And I'm like, "Oh, whoops." <laughs> so well, my let me let but, me just say yeah. thank you to uh, pushing buttons before it goes away. It says thank you for another fantastic show, Brian. Great callers and excellent chat too. Best baby. $25 super chat and then Jazzin just dropped in $10 super chat. So thank you so much guys. Go ahead, continue. Yeah, send this guy more money. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Uh yeah, so the other connection, okay, so there's a huge thing with like people in Sarasota and St. Pete and Florida in general just going up to uh North Carolina and it makes sense. It's like everyone just goes up there cuz it gets hot here in the summer and then it gets cold there in the winter and um, but if you draw a straight line of, uh, I mean, lo- longitude north to from Siesta Key Beach, where they do the drum circle every week, and it's like they've been doing this since the 70s, probably, um, it is, uh, it will get you to the, the obelisk in downtown Asheville mm-hmm. that, that, that they actually took down during all the BLM bullshit. Wow. They uh they like they like you know rioted and took down the obelisk or whatever but yeah it's like just a straight line due north so it's kind of interesting it's like hey you know you think of the settlers if like or like the the natives sorry uh if you think of the natives like they would have just walked straight north and when it got hot and they got you know to the mountains and they're like hey this is a good spot and we'll chill here for a while and then it got cold and they say let's just walk south again you know just walk right towards the sun at noon but yeah that reminds me of another thing i was thinking i was like i love oh wait okay good um yeah i was about to tell you about oh yeah how cool they were about learning about flat earth uh my friend we were i forget what we were how we got into it but i you know i started just giving them the bullet points and stuff about effie and then the next day they're like they're like, send us whatever you can. I send them glow busters. I send them glow busters 24 seven. They devoured every single thing. Nice. I, I said, I sent to them and they just wanted more and more. And I was like, Hey, you know, glow busters 24 seven is the best way to just discover new stuff. I sent them, you know, 200 proofs, everything like that. And they get it, you know? And the most recent thing I just saw, have you seen how the, uh, the official flat earth, group on facebook has become don't be fecking stupid of course the earth's not flat now have you seen that that's the title of the group no i haven't the, seen the, that. the the title of the group that was like flat earth official is now don't be fecking f-e-c-k uh, stupid now what's the f-e what's the f-e official group is that nathan's group well he lost that group right so is this what group this is? one has like forty thousand okay. people and it's it's a a big cross between um it's a big cross between trolls and and people yeah. putting lots of good evidence but the the last thing that just i saw it it comes up all the time on my feed so obviously you know i i, I worry about the truther trap sometimes because of course they just want you looking at your phone as much as possible so they get me like you know they get that i like whatever the algorithm is gets that I like to see the flat earth stuff and I spend enough time looking at the comments and stuff, mm-hmm. but it was a new telescope on the London bridge on the tower bridge can see New York city. Oh, fuck me. In the 200 Godass, miles man. away. Oh, fuck me. 200. Yeah, that's a lot more than, that's a lot more than 200 miles away. 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely more than 200 or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Like, of course, it's a fa- it's like over a thousand, two maybe two thousand miles across. So. Who knows if the continent's shifting? <laughs> but yep. Yeah. So that that's the latest thing. I'll send that to you too. And then the last piece of residue that I don't get, I, this one doesn't get me. I know you see it all the time, but I'm not affected by it. The the red under the blue and the the white under the blue. Like I guess I might be too young or just never really noticed. Like yeah. But my friend, I sent you my friend Seema the very next day after red pilling her on Mandela effect, and I got her on all the common law and. Uh, person and lawful and legal and I, I started talking to her about all that stuff because she got a ticket and I explained to her and she didn't sign it actually the guy never even asked her to sign it and I explained mm-hmm. to her you know about all the you know engaging in corporate corporate to corporate corporation stuff anyways the very next day she sees a pickup truck she sends me a picture I sent it to you it's in our in, uh, in our uh, Facebook chat uh, it's the the tailgate is painted with the red under the blue and the guy's got a American flag sticker with the white under the blue on the same <laughs> truck. <laughs> yeah, that's classic, bro. I knew you'd like that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I got them, yeah, with mirror, mirror, and then, you know, of course, he started, uh, I sent you the one, the mirror, mirror, in uh, that was the, um, Anytime Fitness in Asheville, where it says mirror, mirror on the wall, uh, you know, who's the best uh, gym and, of them all. And, think, and it's you know, everywhere, so. dude. And where's all the magic Every. mirror? I mean, it's everywhere. You know, and it's not like yeah. I'm just searching mirror, mirror, and there's all this magic mirror stuff. I don't have a search. It. It's just everywhere. Yeah. You know, it just comes up I, everywhere. I, love, I always give, I'm like, when you, you already did it with the, the, uh, Spiegelin, 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 Spiegelin. Das ist in Ordnung, Spiegelin. Yep. Yeah, it's it's everywhere. So I mean, yeah, I love you know, I love the shows, I love the stuff. I I just you know I like you say uh, you know f TikTok, but like we do need more bite sized videos to to hand to people. To, to show them because I, I told them after I was, you know, this conversation, I'm like, yeah, you can listen to a six hour stream with Brian every, <laughs> every three days or something. But it's like, we're, I really want to get some more like bite sized proofs for you. Yeah. And I can't, uh, I just can't do it. But any, and I'm so busy working yeah. too. But anybody, if anybody wants to, anybody is welcome to take my videos and clip them and repost them. Just, you know, leave a link to where you got it from. But yeah, TikTok's tough for, for me sure, to for do sure. anything short. Yeah. Yeah, man. But yeah, life's good. Life's good. Otherwise, we're, um, yeah, I'm heading back to, to Naples right now. Uh, I just, I, uh, last thing I wanted to like bring up, I just got back from, or I just went to my buddy's, uh, dad's funeral in, in, um, in did, did, did they say the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away? Uh, you know what? There was some, someone said giveth, yeah, and taketh, yeah. and that was, yeah, I can't believe that one either. The Bible <laughs> one really tripped me up. And yeah. like, the forgive us, I remember forgive us our trespasses because of the way that we used to just emphasize the SSS. The tr- forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. I mean, how many times did you have to say that when you got confessional and they gave you like, you know, 20 Hail Marys and 20 Lord's Prayers to say for, you know, to, to make everything good. <laughs> so yeah. that, that one always trips me. Um, but my buddy has been my best friend. He moved to China in 2019. And he went through it and did the whole, you know, all the COVID stuff there. And actually, like, because he's an, a school teacher there, an American school teacher, like, of English to, to students there, uh, they, they were shut down pretty early on in, like, January and stuff or December or whatever. And he was able to, he was just traveling. He was like, oh, sweet, like, paid vacation. So he was traveling to... Uh, 
Southeast Asia and Malaysia with his family when, when he got like locked down in Malaysia and stuff like that. But it's, it was really tough, man. He, he did everything. He, he has not questioned the narrative whatsoever about any part of it. And this is like my best friend since second grade. And he was just telling me, like, I, I started telling him, you know, I'm like, you just start from the basis of do they, does a government entity care about my well being? Like, do they care about the sanctity of life? And all of a sudden, they're caring about our life and our well being. And they're they're wanting to to keep us safe you know and but meanwhile they're dropping bombs on yemen and syria and iran and iraq and every like and i just had to i i really i started at that point with him and i could see like light bulbs starting to go off because he took a, a pcr test i don't know how many times hundreds of times he had oh to God. take pcr tests living he he was he was actually saying one of the best things in his life was how he can go he doesn't speak any chinese his five-year-old daughter speaks fluent chinese now um and he's like they use her as the translator but he's like i can go through the whole day without having to talk to anyone he's like there's a qr code i can scan i can order what i need and i was he was remarking how weird it was to get used to people um talking to him in stores again because he's been in china for five years and i was just like I had, you know, it was, it was tough. It was tough to like red pill your 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 best bud, who you know is like triple jab. And I started saying like, about oh shit, I I, I can leave that. Um, who's just done everything that he was told to do, and I think I got him like thinking when I started from the base point of, do they care about our life? And then the other yeah. thing that really got him to say like, he was like he was remarking how great the the response in China was because he said overnight there was PCR testing facilities every <laughs> hundred meters. He thinks that's a great response and not something premeditated and planned. Wow. I absolutely, I was like, really, it was tough, man. I was sitting there at the, I was, not, you know, I don't drink, but I was sitting at the bar with him while he was, you know, drinking away his, his dad's death. And we're talking about it. And his dad died of a heart attack. I was really close with his, his dad the last couple of years. I actually used to stay at his condo in Sarasota. And he, his, uh, his dad was definitely took one or two or three of those things. Mm -hmm. So I don't, and he died of a heart attack. And the guy was taking a lot of prescription medication. I can tell you, I, I got that guy. We were trying other things and he was willing to try other things. I got him a heroic dose and a half of the magic mushies. <laughs> He took them and went to sleep within half an hour. He said nothing happened. He was on so many different prescription medications. Yeah. I think that they, I'm like, dude, no one could do that. Like you would be crawling around the, the, the house for two days if you took as much as he did. And it was like, I, I, he was just a total customer of the, of the, of the pills and the medicine and whatever they were giving him. And I think that they block a lot of these medicines are blocking our serotonin receptor, or people's serotonin. I don't, I'm very careful when I say are, it's like other yeah. people's serotonin receptors and people who take these medications are unable to receive the plant medicine. Yep. They're unable to receive that anymore. So I think it's, uh, you know, I'm working through a lot, but anyways, yeah. And then my, my buddy, he says in China, then he's even moving to shake <laughs> After all that stuff went down in Shanghai, I was like, dude, did you see? Because the like, great response, the he feels protected. He's going to go there? Is he, he I mean, safe? my buddy is a is a literature teacher. He reads Orwell. He reads Hess. He reads all these books. But I don't know what's up with him. He can't make the connection of, like, that That's what that was the, the game plan. Like, Orwell wasn't revealing anything to us. He was you know, the uh, revelation of method, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't giving us an insight of how to prevent what was coming. He was just priming us for what was coming. You know, do you believe that? Do you, you ever read Orwell and the Huxley and stuff? No, I've never read it. I mean, I know obviously an idea about what it's all about, but I've never read any of it. No. 
you can listen to both of them on YouTube on audiobook. So you can listen. They're like public domain now. So you can listen to the whole audiobook for free. You got to read 1984. You got to read Animal Farm. You got to read Brave New World. It is to the T. And it's like what they're doing, you know, with the language. Uh, 1984 is all about language and new speak and how people, they dumb down the language so much that there's, they, that there's only going to be 200 words. So it's like language is the, the amount of words you know and the amount of language you know is the amount of your ability to express yourself. So that's the, the, the part of it that they're trying to, to get out of people. And then in, in uh, 1984, they're always, they're in Airstrip 1, which is like uh, England, and they're always at war with East Asia. And then all of a sudden, one day, they're having a rally against East Asia and how they're always at war with them. And then in the middle of the rally, they take down the flag and they, they change the whole script on the entire population. And they said, no, we're at war with Eurasia. We've always been allies with East Asia. We're at war with Eurasia. And all the people have cognitive dissonance and they just have to go along with the script. Like no one speaks up and they're like, yeah, brah, brah. Wow. You know, I've, uh, and it is. I've, uh, and so I know, it, I know, I know it's nowhere near the same experience as reading the book, but I did see the 1984 movie make remake of it, which was pretty cool. Yeah. I, and I, I finally saw that like a year or two ago, but yeah, I know it's not the same thing, but I know what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. He said, he said, and then one day after it was, it was all over, just like that, the PCR test went away da, 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 and it was back to normal. And I was like, dude, I, I, I said to him, I said, I was like, he said, you know how he, he doesn't believe in the conspiracy because he said, he says, you know how hard it is to get people to do things like in a coordinated effort? And I said, yes, that's how you know one cannot shut down the world with already, without already owning and controlling the world. Yeah. And that's why, that's why Flat Earth is so important. And that's why it's so important to know where we are, who we are, when we are living and what we're supposed to be doing here because the, you know that's the whole that's the whole game that's the whole all the questions you can possibly ask and yeah i mean it, it was it was a it was a wild weekend for me to like very eye opening but i highly recommend isn't yeah, it everyone. cool man i'm having a lot of these conversations now it's like it seemed like for five or six years maybe so much of what we were doing was with the online community but i think a lot of us are starting to talk to more people and i think that what's gone on since 2020 has helped open people's eyes a little bit to be receptive to yeah. maybe some new ideas so i think we need to seize the moment yeah i like i always drop the biggest sarasota we uh only did it uh, i'm gonna say Sar the city of sarasota uh, crows get, like uh the whole collectivism thing has got me so careful with my word magic and also uh I still watch some Jeff Berwick, Dollar Vigilante sometimes, but, you know, everyone always goes like, we bombed Hiroshima and we bombed, we invaded Iraq. I'm like, we, I didn't do shit. <laughs> like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like this collectivism of like, I didn't invade any countries. I did not drop any yeah. bombs on Hiroshima, but they, when they get us thinking in terms of, I, the, you know, we are the United States and stuff. And that's why it's just such baloney, man. People need to just, Stop voting, stop paying taxes, just stop supporting this whole thing, and it just it goes away. It, like so, Sarasota uh, has a huge Amish and Mennonite population, and it's pretty much the Amish mafia there. It's like unsaid, and they're very kind people, but they own most of the real estate. They own most of the stuff that's going on, even if everything's Yoder or you know owned and stuff like that. So Sarasota shut down for a a, a total of one week and then everything was open for business again just to, like normal and it has a huge geriatric and older person population the biggest proof positive that the conspiracy theorists were right was that if the places that didn't do what they what the you know the organizations trying to lock everything down said to do had zero more impact than the places that did follow all the guidelines. Yeah, yeah like, I don't know, every Flattoberfest with 400 people under one roof without covering right. their faces and we're all fine. I mean, I think that's kind of what we you're were, talking about as well. 
yeah, we were at Flat Atlantic, you know, those years. Yeah. And um, yeah. A hundred of what? Well, we had like a hundred of us on the beach. Yeah, I, I, no joke, man. During COVID, I let or I let people who said they were COVID positive spit in my mouth to prove a point. Uh, you sound like Joe, you, you not, sound like Joey Roach. That's some Joey Roach shit. But try and not use the exact you C said word. That yeah, just try not to use the whole C word because they'll flag that. Uh, but that's nasty, dude. Uh, <laughs> we'll just call it the the scamdemic. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, just, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's just... It's, All right, you know, so you, uh, you so tell us what happened after you were making out with Joey Rocha. Uh, I, I don't, I've never even met this guy. I just know how many people love him. <laughs> and and Suso, <laughs> Suso's on the screen, and he's upside down, and I think he's probably in Australia and wondering what's going on <laughs> and what happened to New Zealand. Suso, why are you upside well, down? you know, uh, Australia... I have no idea what I'm Australia. doing. I didn't even realize I was on the show. I'm sitting here trying to figure out how I get No, you've been on the show. First you were on the show, then this avatar comes up that looks like some pedo, and now you come up, but you're upside down. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Go, go ahead. Well, I'll, you figure it out. I'll keep talking to Garrett, but you were on the show. <laughs> well, Australia was supposed to be uh, this island that was so far away from everything that all the flora and fauna there was so different. And now it's like anything could have just hopped onto a log and floated to Australia. It's so close to Indonesia and Papua New Guinea and all those islands there and East, uh, East Timor and stuff like that. It's like I, I mean, that was the biggest trip when you said that. And the best video, I got to find it and I, tell me where it's at. But the video that you have of all the people drawing the the world, the competition oh, yeah. of people drawing them, that is just such a true positive of just either. That's easy to find. Just go to my people. Mandela Effect shortlist. Anybody listening, go to my yeah. Mandela Effect shortlist. I have 124 videos. Each is about one Mandela. And there's a video I did that shows... What Garrett's talking about, they took a hundred people uh, contests where they would freehand of where the continents of the earth were, and not like 95 out of 100 had North America right under the South America, Panama Canal, East and West. I mean, nobody was drawing it the way it is now. Yeah. And I'm from Florida. I mean, we talked about Cuba all the time. Cuba was this tiny island off the, like, it wasn't, you know, this massive island that was blocking yeah it was just this tiny island you know that was it was long and skinny and it was right there it was 90 miles from from uh key west and you know cubans would wash up on the beach all the time and little homemade boats and stuff and never was it that big <laughs> blocking the whole gulf of mexico oh, Which, you know they actually say now the gulf of mexico was the fertile crescent and that the four rivers diverge in all the bible stories like what makes more sense, the Garden of Eden being in the tropics where everything grows or yeah. the Garden of Eden being in the Middle East in this desert that, like, only olives grow? Like, it's kind of, it, it makes a lot of sense that, that everything's backwards. But, yeah, man, I, there's a lot to talk about. I, got, I, got, I know I got about a half hour of your time. You probably, I, I was waiting to call in, so I'll yeah, uh, man. remit. Yeah, great call. I love talking to you, man. Thank you, brother. And I'm gonna link my uh, world geography video that you spoke about into the chat right now for everybody. But it is on my yeah. short list. Yeah. And uh, I, I hope you know the one the, the breadcrumb that I'm really trying to follow because it's you know my hometown and stuff. Is there anyone has any info about Sarasota and the Ashayana Dean Project Camelot videos? Of course, she was talking about crazy stuff with like galaxies millions of miles away and billions of miles away and, and like different extraterrestrial beings and stuff like that and that's all poppycock but i'm really trying to figure out what's special about sarasota with you know all the presidents visiting it and that's my my hypothesis is that george bush was there on the morning of that thing because he thought something else was going to happen and he was getting hazed that day. That was part of his initiation. And that was, he was, that's why he looked so dumbfounded when everything happened. Because maybe he thought, like, the portal was going to open up and they're all the, you know, whatever was going to happen. And that's how why he had to be in Sarasota. And then it was, you know, I, I, I tell people sometimes when it comes to uh, the secret society stuff, like, I was in a fraternity in college 
and we they took us out to the woods. They the guys dressed up in robes. They lit torches. They said incantations and weird stuff, and they put blindfolds on us and put us back in the trunks of cars and drove us back and did all sorts of weird, crazy stuff and had did all sorts of this confusing stuff. And then when we were through and they initiated us, we were like, so what was the deal with all that? And they're like, oh, we just do that to mess with you. And yeah. this is what drunken frat boys in college do. Yeah. So I guarantee you to go into the secret societies. And I worked in Hollywood for a little bit. I used to pick up phone calls from Harvey Weinstein and connect them to my boss. I would never think that my boss, my boss is female. She was a child actor representative. I would never think anything of her, but like they just get you in precarious situations. And you know, then you're, you got to You're either in or you're out, you know, and that's, that's how I feel about secret societies and they, they look out for each other and, and I, I think that there's probably an island on this earth, probably somewhere in the South Pacific, that's like the VIP of the oh, yeah, VIP dude. section. Yeah, nobody would where know. Where they're like, yeah. and, and like they, they talk about the human flock or like the man, like, you know, I don't want to use the word human, but man flock. They're like, hey, how's your, how's your herd of humans? And they're like, oh, yeah, they're great. We, we give them Netflix and we feed them garbage and they're great. And it's just the same way you know, we have goats or like people have cattle, like you like your cattle, they're your cattle and you take care of them and you, you know, vaccinate them. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but you like, you know, you give them whatever they, you know, need to keep them alive. But at the end of the day, they're just, they're there to, to make you money. You know, the only reason you have them is to eat them in the end. So, yeah. Yeah. Hey, listen, my take I, on it. great call, <laughs> yeah, thanks, great call brother. I got to let you run, but great call, man. All right, man. I'm gonna go back to listening. All right, brother. Suso. So am I? Am I still on there? Yeah, you don't need to eat the microphone though. Oh, so you can see me? Yeah, the whole fucking world can see you. There's 93 million people, one for every mile to the phone. sun, watching this on live stream. Channel. It's not coming up. I don't. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, That's fine. What do you mean you can't see yourself, bro? You need to. You're probably behind. You. you gotta fast forward, man. You're probably behind. You no, I YouTube? don't understand this uh, program. Whatever, I, I just got to play with it. Oh, go to the, go to the top right, right. Go to the top right corner where the options are on Zoom and put it on gallery, and then you'll be able to see me and you side by side, rather than just who's ever speaking. No, you just got smaller. Show self view. Oh, there we go. All right, that's better. Oh, wow. You good? Yeah. All right, all right, man. Well, I mean, I hope you got something good to say. You, you took up 30 minutes of my time on the phone. Now you're on the live stream. You better have some good stuff to bring. And in I, fact, I I'm going to put you on the spot. I'm just hanging out. Listen, I didn't I, even know hey, I was on the show. I'm drinking some Crown Royal Apple. And I, <laughs> and I need, and I never did a bourbon shot like I told you until about when Tommy came to my house a month ago. And um, I need to get some ice. Now, so now you're going to. bourbon. So now you need to entertain everybody because you're the other, I mean, one Mandela effect teaching bartender to another. Go ahead, man. Teach these people. Tell people your approach. Tell these people a little bit about your approach, about like if it doesn't come up naturally, but you feel like introducing the Mandela effect to a patron at your bar, what do you say to them? I, I don't even think I have to uh, tell you. I can show you. You want to do that? Uh, you can't see just back. Oh, he's gone. I can't find nothing now. Oh, jeez. All right, there's that. No! It won't come up. Dude, are you still there? <laughs> Shit, man. What is your issue? I'm not, I'm, it's, yo, Mercury is in retrograde, man. I'm How can I, like, I, I tell people I'm stepping away for a minute, all chaos breaks out. Are you there? B -b -b Dude, I just told you, it I'm going to get some ice. Share man. screen, and okay. I'm going to share screen. How do I share screen? Hold, uh, and select multiple windows. I don't want, I just want to share one screen. I don't know, figure it out, bro. You're a big boy. There you go. There I go. All right. Yeah, you're sharing screen now. Really? Yep. Well, I'm going to have to leave here and go to here to give you that screen. No. Nope. What the hell? 
You're sharing uh, your screen. I know, but there's shit coming up on my screen. But you're sharing the wrong screen. You're sharing the Zoom window. I, I see that. I can't get over it because this other line won't move. Let's try that. Nope. Look at the shit is in the way. All right. Here, I'll do this. So use the icons at the bottom of your computer to toggle what you want on the screen rather than trying to find it up top. There you Thank go. you, Daddy. Ready? <laughs> if I just start playing this. I should just teach technology courses. The truth is I'd make a killing. Nobody knows how to do anything. Go ahead. I don't hear anything. Ah, oh, shit. Well, if you don't hear anything, that doesn't work. Why don't you no. hear anything? Because you didn't click share audio. So cancel your screen share. Do a new one. And there should be a little box you can check that says share window audio or some shit like that. Uh, cancel share screen. Yep. Now redo it and look for a little box that you can check somehow. All right. I might want to talk to people and... While I do this, of course, if and if you would have listened to the tutorial I made for everybody how to properly route audio five years ago and try to teach everybody, you wouldn't have to worry about that. But that's another story. It's uh, not just you; it's literally everybody. Fucking nobody has fucking done that. So, <clears throat> all right, we well, have to send me that link. Um, boom, boom. All right, now I got the screen I want to share, and I'm going in, and I'm going into nowhere. Where am I going? All right, I'm here. I, I, you know, it's not coming up. It's not here to share. Oh boy. Let me try over again. Do you have? You want to just send me the link then, and I'll play it on my end. You want to just do that? Is it? A, yeah, I could do that. Where am I sending it? Uh, because that you, could be an issue too. Do you see a little private chat at the bottom of Zoom? Oh. I could do that. Easy. Do I see it, though? Private chat at the bottom of Zoom. You can open this thing up. Oh, you're crushing me. This is awful. All right. We're going to abort mission here. Yeah, yeah, talk. Just talk. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna abort mission here. This guy is fucking out of his mind. <laughs> I'm not. I'm just telling you. I just don't. I don't uh, we do get it, dude. Not. Fucking boomers can't tech. We get it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're saying at the bottom of Zoom, and I still have the share screen on. You Stop might. share. There we go. All right. Ooh. Uh, at the bottom, you got. What are you look, making me look for? You see a thing that says chat. Yep. Click that and put me the link in there, and I'll grab it, and then I'll play the video, and everything will be fine. And I'll stop making everything. fun of you. I promise. Every you can make fun of me. Everything is so easy. God. Give you the link. It's really not easy. I've been doing this for 14 years, and every year things get more difficult. <laughs> All right. So the first, I'd say, three to four minutes is just an intro. And then later on, you'll, you'll get... How long is this video? 46 minutes. You know, I don't oh, expect you to put no. the thing up. I'm just saying like that, you know, what you what you would do is you would just play the first three to five minutes and then I go to the next video and I'll give you the highlights there. That's what you get in the beginning. You're getting all the highlights. All right. Let me go back to Zoom and type this into the. Uh, oh, for fuck's sake. Maybe we should you should just explain it to me. This is becoming very difficult. And we're not, we're, we're, we're not playing several videos. We're going to play like a few minutes of one video. All right. Play a few minutes of this and that'll do it. And I'm going to chat. Scare people that. away. And I'm typing in. <laughs> That's why I'm like, talk about something. There you go. I just there you go. Like, All right. I see it. Hang on. And just like the first five minutes or so. But I'm telling you, if you go a little bit further, you're going to crack up because you're, you're going to see it. They're, they, don't don't stop until you hear the word publisher's clearinghouse. Uh-huh. <laughs> and just go ahead from that. I hear it. Yeah. Oh, I gotta give you a <laughs> screenshot. Hang on. Not not going there. Hang uh, on, hang on. Hang on. I gotta give you a screenshot. Suso in action. Actually, laying down Mandela actually, this effect. It's gonna be a riot. But I'm not gonna get no customers today. No, no, you back that up to the beginning for sure. 
There all is. the way to the beginning, bro. We don't need to watch your whole fucking intro before no, several. No, well, I'm just saying the. Okay, go ahead. Do what you got. You really want to watch your whole intro, bro? You're gonna sing the national anthem too? Oh, this guy's in the beginning. All right, all right, all right. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Now you want to see right. the intro? Do that. Are we watching you get out of bed? What is this? Keep going. Jesus God Christ, damn. man. Listen, I didn't explain it. He's waking me up to do a show. Too much. I think we're like in a simulation. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I go. Not real. Do you remember that? The, the statue, Rodin's uh, The Thinker. You know. Yeah? Does this look familiar? Now you're all different. <laughs> but he continues pointing at the corner of the room if he can see something. The mother continues telling him that there is nothing there, but when she throws a blanket in that direction, she is caught off guard when it lands on something invisible. What the heck is going on all right, here? Let's get to the bottom. What color is the yield sign? Yellow. Okay, what color writing? Black. And what shape? Not in this reality, pal. Diamond. diamond. <laughs> I like the diamond. I remember yellow with black writing diamond. Do you remember Shaq playing a genie in a movie? Yeah. Kazam. Kazam, is that what it's called? Do you remember Sinbad playing a genie in a movie? Yeah. This is the first Candela effect I ever had. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, Sex in the City. Damn it! What did you just say it was called? Sex in the City. On the City. Sex in the City. Oh, the On the City is <laughs> freaking me out. What's up? And then we go back to the we go back to the bar. This part just it skips it. Go ahead, go. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is good. You can. There's like many people. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> okay. So it's so, kind of kind of yes and no. Kind of yes and no. Yeah, that's huh? because because Will Ferrell did the thinker and then he did the stinker. No, <laughs> no, wrong. Will Ferrell did the thinker and he put his fist to his forehead, motherfucker. <laughs> I know. I, I, that's what I was trying to explain to him at the time, but he he was. Drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Will Ferrell did the thinker with the fist to the forehead. He didn't do fist under the chin. New reality. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> He's never done it. Really? Nice pussy. Thank you. There it is. Let's skip ahead a little bit here. This, although this does up. show the collection I had. 30 seconds. This is the ridiculous, massive collection of Mandela effects. Um, for me, myself, not 100 percenters for all of them by any means. This is Jeff. Tommy loves Canada. Jeff. 2000. Oh, but wait, there's 16, more. 100 percenters. Last second, definitely these, even if I, I'm not 100 percent. I'm like, well, it does look different. Or it does change strange. And some of them, I do think, hey, maybe that one could be people misremembering, but it also could be. And then experiencing it in another timeline that I didn't experience it. I mean, it's that simple. Even if I think well, that's, you know, that's a little bit that blood red stripe there is on the bottom. Then in 2000. Oh fuck no! Let's get back to the bar. Yeah, go ahead. All he says is the Earth shifted. <laughs> I need a little break. What, what what are you filming with? Do you have a phone out? Or you got spy glasses on? Yeah, they know you're filming it's them? My, it's my phone. They know I'm filming them. All right. All the stock and I'm going, uh, you guys know who Ed McMahon is? Yes. What's he famous for? Ed McMahon was on the Tonight Show. He was Johnny on, Carson's sidekick. Johnny Carson's sidekick. Although side he kick. was the Budweiser lead 
Troopers. We don't. We don't. What, Twenty years. We don't talk about Budweiser here. No, I know that, but he should be. But he was. <laughs> ah, Bud Light is what I'm talking about. Ah, <laughs> just saying, we don't sell it. Get over it. All right. We, need, we needed great. room for the micro brews, and nobody was buying it. And now, you know, so whatever. <laughs> not, not going there. Um, what else is he famous for? You guys what are was the that? right what age, that? too. Ed McMahon, what's he famous for? Was he in the military? I don't know. He was. <laughs> Come on, you got this. Here it comes. I can see it. It's coming. Yeah. 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 What did the, he do? Um... Did he mail something to you? God, I hate giving clues. Oh, 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 I freaking yeah. hate giving clues. Oh, that, well, clearing actually, house. I didn't give you a clue to that. It was uh, Publishers uh, Clearing House. Right. Yeah, yeah, do you know what's really weird? He's never done it. Nice, Susan. He's never registered? He, he's never done Publishers Clearinghouse. He never came near house with balloons. Well, no. I know. <laughs> he never came to our house with balloons. He's never going to anybody's house with balloons from Publishers Clearinghouse. He's never uh, mailed you anything in the mail with his face in the corner. You could be the next million dollar winner. Never happened. Never happened. They're looking it up right now to try and say no. Look, know, he did. Look at them. Too. Look at them all. They're all looking it up, and they're all coming up with AFP <laughs> and Snopes. <laughs> and uh, what's the other one? Forbes magazine, the curious case of Ed McMahon and publishes Clarenos. How we're all having false memories. I mean, come on, dude. That one's a weird one, man. Yeah, get the weird one. I think it's possibly the biggest Mandela effect of them all. I mean, it's so unanimous. With so many people, you know, like oh, it's just. Body, body. It's ridiculous. I'm going to stop screen sharing, though, so we can just chat and get the people more involved. But, yeah, that's good stuff, man. That's real journalism, dude. That's the type of stuff I like to watch. Like the, the rest of the video is basically where it was without the background music and just all the highlights. All those highlights you saw, there was probably 10-minute conversations, 15-minute conversations with them. Yeah. And I, I've got about four or five videos up now that are just that. And I, I used to do that back back in the day, but I didn't do it a lot. I mean, it didn't really catch on. And people that have been catching it are like, yeah, I'm tired of watching Suso ask the same question over and over again. So I broke out a list and I had about 75, I think, Mandela effects on it. And some of, you know, some of them are hard to, to question. You know, it's hard to ask somebody, you know... Um, Oh yeah, some, some of them aren't the best on the best setup for a question. I don't know what you mean. So you got to kind of stay away I, from them. Yeah. Well, I don't. I I go for it anyway. I kind of give them a A, B, or C answer, or you know, hey, what do you remember about this? You know, I did the Statue of Liberty. Uh, God, the uh, I found a um, Myers Oscar Meyer actually spelled the way it was that people remember it. Yeah. The way it's spelled now is the way it's always been spelled for me. It is like one of the bigger Mandela effects that I'm not affected by. Yeah. So um, you're I mean, you're I'm you're an guy. Oscar Mayer or Wiener type of guy. It's all in time. Yeah, John, you know, John you, you like yeah. John John Mayer's Wiener as Tommy would say. Yeah, that right. type of guy. How come every time I get on these shows, everybody's talking gay stuff? What? <laughs> it's the type of vibe you bring, bro. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just a nice guy. Come yeah. on. I have gay friends. <laughs> I, shit, I have I, I, a couple of trans friends. Jesus. What the, I don't even know how that happened. <laughs> so I'm like you with the, uh, not with that, but with the, the uh, Mandela effect with the uh, Darth Vader. Uh, no, I am your father. It's always been that way for me. And that's, you know, people would say that's one of the biggest no. ones. Um, I think it said, Luke, I am your father. That's what I remember. I mean, yeah, I know. Luke, I know most father. people remember that. I'm saying I remember the current reality on that one. It's one of the very few. Oh, so you're not affected by that. That's how I would work. Yeah, I always remember it being, no, I am your father, as it is now. Wow. You're not the first person that said that to me. No, but, I actually know a lot of people. The other people that have said it to me are big star wars people they're really into it yeah. so when and i always thought in the beginning when all this happened in the beginning i always thought well if you're really close to a mandela effect it doesn't change for you you know i, and that, I, I would think quite often and i was a huge star wars nerd like i watched the original one probably 200 times and i always remember it as no i am your father i like never, it never as luke 
you know, it's not something I watched over and over again. I was a Star Trek guy, so. I love Star Trek, too, and I always remember it as space, the final frontier, but now it's a final frontier. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. On the I don't original. Know this one. Oh, you don't know this? Oh, my God, space. Dude, you didn't hear the us listening to it back and forth one Wait night, up. dude? He says, now he says space, a final frontier on the fucking original series only. A final frontier? Get out of here. I swear to God, bro. No way. Yeah, that's what that's, that's what, what, you know, I'll go at the bar and I'll, I, I go, when I'm doing the trivia, I'll run by the bar and this reminds me of the same thing. I'm like, it's a beautiful day. And they all say it. Of course. Of course. Nobody ever says like, this neighborhood. Nope. You're wrong. That's some of the stuff you see on those videos. I mean, and I think I think they're funny. Look, I'm going to tell you this one scene that comes up in one of the videos because it's absolutely hysterical. I actually use it as one of the openings. <clears throat> but I said, hey, can, just name any adult diaper. Name any adult, <laughs> name any adult diaper. I'm looking for what I think is the most popular one. Yeah. And the girl goes, and you get this girl behind the bar drinking with her boyfriend. She gets up. She stands up on the bar. Or not on the bar. Good Jesus. And that happens in one of the videos where this girl gets up on the bar because she's trying to pose like Rodan's thinker. And she wants to do it up there. Oh, dude, right. give me the timestamp. We're going to play that. I, but I can't watch the whole video. But, like, get me the timestamp. I could, actually, I could actually absolutely find you that. Give, yeah. Let me finish the story with the girl. Okay. And she goes, she stands up on the chair, on the legs of the chair, whatever. She got up taller and she said, extra points if you're wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> and I jump in and I go, even more points if you can show me. <laughs> <laughs> it was freaking hysterical. I don't know. I, for me to go ahead and find this video, it's going to be a piece of cake, but I don't know what I'm touching. Oh, what all I got to do is type the link in here. All you got to do is find me not just the video, but the timestamp and let me know and send I, I'll me the put link. It right where it's at. I'll, yeah. Do you, have you figured that part of YouTube out? There yeah. it is right there. Boom. I'm actually on it. That's so funny. How many bombs ended? Oh, I want to see. World War II. Send it in the chat. You know what? What's that? Send it in the chat so I can grab it. Yeah, I'm going to do it right now. I'm. Um, uh, this is it. 17.02 is going to be your timestamp. I'm pretty sure it'll be. Oh, I could do that. All right. Boom. Copy. Boom. You're done. Son, can you play me a memory? Yeah, that's that's one for me, too. Oh, it's a ridiculous it, one. Such a message. That was a, yeah. It was a later one. You get you get the. Uh, that's with the timestamp. I got it. I got it. Nice. I'm getting used to this whole Zoom thing. Yeah, it's not hard. I mean, Mercury is still in retrograde while we got the eclipse going on. Don't call me during the eclipse, people. I will not be answering. You need. You sound like you're kind of buying into a little bit of fear here. I mean, what are you, what are you gonna hide? You gonna say you're gonna hide? You're not gonna look at it? Like, no, dude, actually, it's fun, not dude. fear. I'm trying something different because I always go out to watch these things. I want to go to the hot springs, put my feet in the water. I can sit in a river with a beer and watch this thing. And that's what I would be doing. That's cool. You should do that. That is cool. Uh, dude, it's, I won't look at it. I won't get glasses. I'm not going to look. I've I seen the last one, 17, with the glasses, the whole bit. Fuck the glasses. Well, that's the thing. Isn't it? Isn't that what you're supposed to do? Yeah, yeah you're also not? supposed to go get fucking six boosters too, bro. Fuck the glasses. <laughs> yeah. so, saying, isn't the isn't that boosters. what you're supposed to do? So exactly. I'm going to go the other direction, dude. <laughs> so now I'm so caved in, and it's going to snow tomorrow and the whole bit, So and there's going to be clouds. So how much would I see? Does it matter? I'm sure I'll be able to see something. So, so it's snowing. It reminds me of Christmas. I'll be home for oh, dude, Christmas. So At least nine months. You can count on me. All right. You want to do a bunch of uh, Christmas Mandela effects? That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. Well, who's this guy on the screen again? This is the peanut guy. 
<laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it, it must be. It must be because he's got yeah. a monocle. You remember when he was trolling us and then they like killed him and resurrected him and the baby peanut came out and he's like, where's my monocle? <laughs> oh, my God. See, no, I don't even know that stuff. What? That's Where were you I, fucking I four it, years I ago? When I... That, I remember it now that you're saying it, but I didn't take it as being trolled. I probably laughed it off four years ago. Are you ago, kidding but... me, dude? Me and Kara did like a six and a half hour live stream on it. Like it was so ridiculous. I was probably trying to get away from the Mandela effect at that point. Why? I don't know. You got it. You're because like, you're a fucking emotional nutcase. I I could absolutely agree with that. I know. God, I then, got stories to then, tell. And then you. if you if you didn't agree, everybody in chat would say you were bullshit. But that's cool, man. It's no, cool I'm, to be I'm, emotional. Emotional is cool. I'm in my head a lot. Dude, you I know what? Who cares, video. dude? Emotional is cool, bro. As long as you're a good person and you're good to people, everything else is groovy, baby. Yeah. There's people that aren't good to you. That's right. Anyway. And let me anyway. say thank you to uh, someone who super chatted $10.33. But let's have a look at the lady doing the thinker pose. Actually, that's... Was that what it is? No, this is the... Uh, name Watch. an Watch. adult... Watch. It's a product, an adult diaper. Very famous. Name that one. Are they writing this down? Is this like trivia so they can yeah, all answer walked, without hearing each other? Around. I like I this. I walked around and, and gave them each a piece of paper. Oh, this pen. is good. This is good. This is and better than, I've yeah. Doing. Yeah, yeah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use this idea. Because that's better than because once one person shouts it, it's all spoiled if they write it down. You can, you, you can uh, go ahead and use my videos if you like. I give you permission. You're not going to copyright strike me like the I last time? Promise. You did You did the last time. I never copyright. <laughs> what the fuck? I don't have time for that. You know, that's not, that's not very true to I like you. That's kind of, strike you. Damn, that's a bitch move, bro. Dude, I never. What are you talking about? <laughs> Get over here. What are you talking about? Bonus points if you're wearing one. Extra bonus points if you're wearing them, and you can show me. You gotta yeah, show. Yeah, you gotta show. Extra <laughs> points. All right, York Peppermint Patty. The oh, slogan me... is. You could probably well just let it go till I find the uh, chick standing on the bar. Give me that. What color is Carmen San Diego's jacket? Oh, that's Jackie. a big one for me. Carmen San Diego. Yeah. Right Where in the world is Carmen Skittles San Diego? Slogan. What's the Skittles slogan? Hold on. Taste the rainbow. Did that change? I. Uh, you know what? They flip flop on me so much, dude. I don't even know anymore. I just know I had a Skittles packet up on my collection. Um. Back in 2006, 17. And, and I remember it. It was the slogan that was the issue. But what it was, what it, was, it wasn't 100 percent for me. All right, I just well, thought, well, all right. We'll see what happens in the video. But I remember Taste the Rainbow. If it's different, then that's kind of a big one for me. Isn't it Catch the Rainbow? I'm going to go one more. One more question here. What is it? I, I got a couple that I just have problems wording. Spell Chevrolet. Bell Chevrolet, that'll be Oh, if Larry's Please watching. Larry will love this show. Good job, Anthony. Huh? Yeah. yeah? I liked it. I get it, because we're all interacting, having a good Isn't time. Great? Isn't this great? Yeah, great? Where do you see how many you got wrong? <laughs> it's just called, this is, uh, the questions are based on something called the Mandela Effect. Have you heard of it? Yes. Have you, you have heard of the Mandela Effect? Have you heard of the Mandela Effect? I feel like I have, I don't know what it is. It's like changes of people were noticing in history. I right know, guys, gotta get you something to drink. We gotta do another trivia thing. <laughs> Shouldn't you be? You should just be looking up the results on your phone. Can you? It's more fun when you tell us. All right. Yeah. Well, I got news for you. Half of these. Yeah. <laughs> How do you spell Vlasic? V L A S I C. Yes. Oh, I added this. I added this. I looked at you. Oh, okay. 
Are you added an S? I added an extra S because I looked at his and I thought no. that sounds right. All right. Yeah, you had an extra S because that's what you remember. Stop trying to take the fucking update. <laughs> I need somebody to spell turmeric because I don't even know. Who knows turmeric. Who R-M-E-R-I-C. Oh, I'll do it next. But you, I you missed skip. avocados. I did skip. All right, let's go with Haas. How do you spell Haas avocados? H-A-S-S. H-A-A-S? H-A-A-S. You got the next link, but this is cool. You can keep it on. So who's who's this new reality bitch right here? She's suspect. How do you spell Haas avocado? From France, I think. This one. Who's who's this NPC yeah, they're, they're in our reality? Her and her, her and her boyfriend are from France. They don't. Un, he doesn't speak English at all. The fillers. And oh, is that what that is? She actually got into it. All and right. If you kept, she gets in there and she gets you know a little. But the but the one on her right, she was spunky. Well, I'm, I'm questioning if she has a soul. <laughs> H A A S. That's fair. H A S S. It is fair. After what we've seen. H U S S. H A S. What's up, Huss? That's a new one. H A U S. Wow. What is the correct? The correct is H A S S. In this in this reality, most people remember it as H A A S. Now we can go to turmeric or turmeric. I don't know the answer to this one. Don't get mad at me. You should look it up. Somebody needs to look it up. T U M E R I C. Got it. That's not going to be right. I, I bet you. It's turmeric. T U R. T T U R. T U R M E R R I C. M E R I C. Not according to nearly every grocery store in fucking America that I keep going to. Just saying. Turmeric. Yeah. It is, right? The spice? It is now. Wow. Most people remember it the way you guys actually spelled it. What's, what's the next question on the Dilemma. list? Dilemma. Oh, uh, go for that one. So, so this is this is a this is a great one, man. This d- dilemma's dude, dilemma is such an obvious Mandela effect, dude. Right? I think somebody M-M-A. actually gets it right in one of these most videos, videos and nobody exactly understands how she's way I'm acting. Most MMA. Oh, yeah, no. Most people remember, or a lot of people, not most, remember MNA. I went there first. Yeah. And what's the next one? The uh, stove top. Stovers. Stovers, stove top stuffing. Anybody else want to answer? I got stovers too. Stovers. 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 Baby? stovers. It's craft. What? <laughs> <It's not. laughs> Here it is, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got one right yet. Oh, yeah. oh, I was so confident. <laughs> this poor guy ain't got one right yet, but in reality, he got them all right. He's a fantastic guy, and he's highly Mandela affected. You ain't wrong, pal. We love you, brother. <laughs> Next question, I believe, was Dr. Seuss. Yes. How you spell it? You know about this one, baby? Oh, not only do I know about it, I'm glad you're affected by it too, because the E and the U definitely swap for me. I did a video on it. You didn't watch every single of the 2,000 videos I did, dude? What kind of Wait, friend died? You didn't watch all of my 179? Fuck your videos. <laughs> you I put out good info. Is that what you got? Dressing? No, you got to read the article, hon. That's a Mandela effect. That's the whole, that's what they're telling you. Okay. Yeah, we're not. We're not getting copyright strike. Eject, eject, eject. Not like you did to me. <laughs> copyright strike me. Where am I at? Let's see. Dr. Seuss. Everybody spelled it S E U S S? I did and I crossed it out. Different reality. S U E S S? S E U S S is correct. S E U S S is correct. Yes. All right. And Dr. Seuss, also, of course, the author of The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, which now has never existed. Which is the bigger Dr. Seuss Mandela effect for me? That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's so what Grinch. Yeah. Now no, no, now it now it's how the Grinch stole Christmas instead of the Grinch who stole Christmas. Oh wow! You know what? Okay, yeah. You didn't watch that video of mine either in 2018. You're a fucking asshole, Caesar. <laughs> You're not playing, man. Does he wear glasses or monocle or nothing? No. Monocle, nothing. Glasses. Monocle, monocle. In this reality, he wears nothing on his face. Guy, he finally got one right. 
Got one. Right. Got one. Did you have a monocle? Got one. He did another reality. Your consciousness shifted into this one. This evil world. <laughs> <right now. She's laughs> like, we'll just lay it onto your light. He did another reality. Your consciousness is fucking over the hell yeah. And she's like, oh, all right. Right here. Well, all right. Next, qu- <laughs> next question. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I did. I, I got tired of listening to the... There's funny. It's funny because one of these videos, there's a group of teachers, and it's the whole bar doing it. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. It's it's just too much. I'm I'm trying to serve drinks. I'm by myself. I only did it on Mondays and Tuesdays when I was by myself. And oh, yeah. it was just. But, but these teachers, they wanted to talk about everything, and I'm like, no, stop. There's so many edits in that. I'm like, I gotta. I I kept ignoring them because. <laughs> <they're like, laughs> These teachers oh, were so sure God. they were oh. going to get everything right. Yeah, Pringles, same question with Pringles. Mon- glasses. glasses, monocle, or nothing at all. I'll put monocle. <laughs> I remember monocle. I did nothing. It's nothing at all. It's nothing? He doesn't wear glasses? No, Pringle guy does not wear glasses. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Okay. I remember a road dance. Oh, uh, no, that wasn't next. Sex Blank the City, I think, was next. Oh, no, Trebek. Trebek. What's his first name? Alec. 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 Alec Trebek? Was it Alex? Alec or Alex? That was what I was going for. Alex, we'll take Alex. We'll take Alex? Well, it's probably wrong. I think it's Alec. 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 I think it is. You got to look it up because I don't know all the answers to these anymore. They they change on me. They change on me. Okay, Alec. No, Alex. I'll put Alex. Oh, it's it is with Alex. X. Look at that. With an X. Jesus. And isn't that interesting? Because this is another one of these reverse psychology things. Like if they would try to use on us that, oh, you're just rolling with something because it's more familiar or whatever. Well, why would we go to the jump and think it was Alec, A-L-E-C, when we almost never see that if his name's always been Alex, which is very common, Right. Yeah. You, fo- you following my logic here? Yeah, I, actually, I, I am. And the X, the whole X thing? Sure. And the whole thing with Jeopardy. Somebody said we should start a Mandela Effect Jeopardy. Well, Jeopardy is a huge gatekeeper in the Mandela Effect. In fact, I call them reality reinforcement. And some of the questions they put out there are clearly to uh, reinforce the new reality. And Joe Martinez has done a lot of great videos on that. Christian uh, has sent me some great stuff that we've covered having to do with Jeopardy. Jeopardy is completely trying to hide the Mandela effect, 100%. Oh, I'll bet. Now we're going TV show, Sex Blank, The City. And the? In. In. I said and. Sex and The City? And? And a lot of people remember in, it is and. It's and. Yeah. So I, 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 yeah, right. <laughs> oh my god, the Pringles guy doesn't wear anything. <laughs> yeah, like the Raisin Bran guy, he doesn't have anything either. Or Tom Cruise, or Richard Simmons. Oh, Richard <laughs> Everybody's missing all their accessories, and we're supposed to ignore this. We're supposed to gotta, ignore I, that everything we've grown up with has reality shifted in this reality, and we're supposed to ignore it. <laughs> no, fuck you. What were you gonna say? The Raisin Brand guy, I got to use that. I, I, I never use that. You know about it, though, right? I do. What was it? It has something to do with uh, he doesn't wear sunglasses? Yeah, dude. The sun on the Raisin Brand had glasses, bro. He had sunglasses. Yes, he did. He had sunglasses. Yeah, Absolutely. he ain't never had them now. Huh. Yeah. See, that's one I never think about, and I actually remember. Yeah. No, there's a lot I never think about till they get brought up again. I, I recently, one of them, you know, the name changes is so many. One of the ones that's so obvious to me, but I forget about when I go on these interviews, Sally, Jesse, Raphael, her name yeah, change is so one. ridiculous. That's looking, weird. Dude. That's yeah, wrong. Dude. I, yeah, it, well, I don't even know what it was, but it's not what it is. No, well, it was Sally, Jesse, J-E-S-S-E, and that E has changed to a Y now. So Sally, Jesse, Raphael is Sally, Jesse, J-E-S-S-Y. Another E to Y swap with the Mandela effect, and her you name know, was there's very there's A couple wrong. other names that were oh, dude, even yeah. more bonkers than that. Look at Johnny, Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker, the Y to the I-E. I mean, that's... 
So that's the thing. Aren't we just sitting here chasing these things, or is there a reason? Uh, there's for... a purpose, dude. There's a message with some of them. I mean, some of them, right? Like, yeah, maybe you could say that, but then there's other ones like two or more are gathered, or the wolf instead of the lion, or you know, some of these lies and these big events or the landmass changes, those seem to have to have some important meaning to it and something we're supposed to figure out, in my opinion. A lot of the brand changes and stuff could be just like a wink and a nod to let you know that reality isn't what we thought. But there's a bigger picture here that we're supposed to figure out, I think. Well, there's something I don't do often, maybe not enough. Um, I was watching eclipse videos and this thing came up where they're talking about it's the end and it's the and we're the rapture and it's the end times and jesus is coming back and i'm like all right you know what i pause it and i pause it when they're like matthew 24 i think yeah i know came up on the screen and i paused it i grabbed this bible that is sitting in this bookshelf that i, I very very rarely pick up and i just i said you know what no matter what's going on i'm just going to page through this and no matter what it's about it's going to be about the questions i have about the eclipse and everything going on and it was freaking matthew 24 and i just did it again fuck and the bookmark is on matthew 24 yeah but this is this is the beginning of matthew I'm not a religious guy, man. Really? Okay, let me put that down because this is not the venue. Because, <laughs> wow. I mean, I don't know. I, I thought that was weird. I'm like, I, I opened up right to Matthew 24, read it. It was all about how Jesus is coming back. And this is not the end. This is not the end. But guess what? He was talking to them back then. So I'm like, okay, maybe I should go look at this thing. But I don't know. What do you think of those videos? I mean, what do you think of the? Uh, I, I think, think the videos are great, man. I think the videos it, it, are great, and you, most people here, including you, have probably seen some of my videos on the street. Um, I really I've like. Seen a lot I, of your videos, yeah, but not cool. the ones you mentioned. Well, I really <laughs> like the idea of having them write it down. I'm taking something from this, and I'm going to use it. Doing yeah. Use it. Use use it. Whatever helps. Yeah. Fucking people grow. Do whatever. I mean, I don't give a shit. Use it. I, I don't need permission. You don't need to pay me. Well, it's like a thing. Jo I wasn't gonna offer to pay you. <laughs> That's right. I'll just stop paying you. <laughs> oh, fuck you. <laughs> I'll fucking block you. <laughs> don't, because I might have to soon. But don't. Uh, I'll block you anyways, because you're a prick. <laughs> Oh man! Um, You're not blocking me. And when I call you, answer the phone. God damn it! <laughs> it's, I I don't know. No, look, I think I got old phone numbers from you or whatever. But if I try and get a hold of you, I can't get through. It, you're always on vacation or something. Block. <laughs> I'm blocked. Oh, that's what it is. I'm blocked on your phone. What are you trying to call I'm, me, bro? I'm, I don't answer the phone for my. First of all, for anybody who doesn't know, literally. My phone is always, everything on my phone is on silent. Ringer, notifications, text messages, Facebook, it's all silent. Because I don't want to look at my phone more than I already look at it. I don't need to, and I don't need to hear it. Um, True story. Yeah. Um, I think I'm pretty good at calling you back, though. Eventually, it happens. I mean, if it was important, I'm sure it happens. If it's important, what's important? <laughs> what's, what matters? I don't know. But yeah, yeah. But I, I did after I got off the phone with you. I did t text and chat because you said something about we never met in person. Yeah, kind of got to make that happen. Definitely. Yeah, but I, 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 you know, I'm not sure how I feel about going to a flat Earth gathering. I'm thinking let's just ha let's have everybody come up to the Silver Dollar Saloon in Leadville, Colorado. <laughs> well, you went, you did go. You went to a Mandela effect gathering, but that wasn't so great either. Oh Lord, have mercy! <laughs> you know what? Let me put that link up. No, oh my God! Did you happen to see one of the best videos I think I ever put out, talking about that? I saw gathering? it. Yes, I saw it. Did you? 
I did sent you, that to you. Did you, see, did you see the stream that me and Karen did when 400 people were live in the chat after the first, uh, after the second, the first big online one? I, I know you did. You were there. Yeah. Dude. And what you said later on just validated a lot of things that I thought. So. Dude. Dude. So, I mean, I went through a lot of personal things with that as well. Um, they actually, I actually had the one dude, Chris, yep. send, send me money to drive out across the country, um, to deliver a piece of artwork. And then he paid to fly me home after I stayed in his mansion, um, Yeah, not doing that again. Um, I, you know, and then he went and did that presentation. I was just like so burned up. I'm like, I, look, I'm not saying you're wrong, dude, but I think you're wrong about what you're pushing you mean, out there. You, you he mean came the out and he came out in his presentation in an astronaut suit. <laughs> I know and we all watched. <laughs> I was dying. I'm like, <laughs> he did that on purpose. Not, he had to. Not only in an astronaut suit, in an astronaut suit, singing Mr. Rogers the new way. <laughs> I didn't even catch that. I was oh. so burned up about so much else that was going on in that thing. It was ridiculous. So what did you I what mean, did you really think when you saw that astronaut suit? Like a lot of people that didn't sit well. Like what what the fuck is going on here? Well, you know what it was? It really sucked because I think it was a, a time when a lot of Mandela effect people that were really zeroing, zeroing in on that. And then there was flat earth people zeroing in on that. And now this was a time to bring that together and say, hey, you know, we, we can work together here. Yeah. And this this dude just totally trashed that. I mean, he, he did what he needed to do, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. It just burned me up, and I couldn't believe it. It must have been six months, seven months later. Somebody could have been you <laughs> sent me an email because my name came up or something in a, in a, in, a, in a in an interview or something. But it was a town. It was about a town not twenty miles from me with this dude, Chris, doing an interview about some wall mural that changed that was never there and now is there and half the town thinks it's there and the other town says, no, it was never there. They just built it. We watched it. We have pictures of them building it. I mean, but it was always there. And it was him doing the interview. And I can't imagine why my name, but it was just like, why is this guy creep? He's creeping on me. <laughs> What's he doing? But that, that 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 whole thing. I mean, they were bringing a mental health doctor into it. That really burned me up. If you saw that part of the video, that was the best. Where because they deleted all her videos, they didn't vet her stuff, they didn't vet my stuff. I was in there. I actually recently tried to get the video that I did on that show. Apparently, it's gone because the other girl that did the video with me didn't want to have anything to do with them anymore. So she legally went in with lawyers and said, get all my stuff off of that stuff. And apparently it was. So like that video, I don't even have a copy. And all I did was talk about some circle cloud that was out back here, you know, and I correlated that with the Mandela effect and nobody was correlating and anything with the Mandela effect. Exactly. On top of that, we all were like interested to see, Hey, what is this international Mandela effect conference going to be about? And they're trying all to corner the Mandela effect. They're trying to corner it. They're trying to own it. They, 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 they thought that was something that, look, you type in, you see that title? Yeah. You think they know what's going on. Yeah. Let's go check that out. And and some of the people in there I still talk with, they're, they're not bad people. They're doing their thing, whatever. But there are people involved in that that I kind of wish they weren't, but maybe that's what they're supposed to do. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that pissed me off. A lot of red flags uh, for me, and obviously, I was very irate when 
that whole conference went down. Everybody has eyes on it, and nobody's... They're all talking about this out-of-space bullshit. You got the guy open it with the astronaut suit. Nobody's li- literally, besides money bags and uh, Once Upon a Timeline, who who actually talked about them, and you. Nobody talked well, about goes. the Mandela... Nobody talked about the Mandela effect on them. Um, there were... And then on, on top of it, I mean, the whole HBO shit and HBO, dude, HBO supposedly infiltrating the, the original conference and like, this is all the same shit we see go down at the Flat Earth conference with the Jimmy Kimmel show and all this. And it's like then that whole staged video from the grocery store where he supposedly met the guy in the grocery store oh, and they yeah, filmed the video, that, yeah. but then it came out later that that was actually staged. You didn't just run into this guy in the grocery store. You and HBO staged that whole thing. So it's like... I know a lot of people are kind of like aggravated with me a little bit, I think, because I don't want to have a closer connection to the iMac and why don't I be a speaker and, and all of this. And it's like, listen, I, I, you know, I didn't want anything to do with them. And I figure after a few years went by, I'd uh, accept the olive branch now, which is olive leaf in every Bible. Uh, the Chris extended and I did do a show with them several months ago uh, who runs oh, the IMAC. Yeah. And, and, and that's fine. Um, but you know, I'm going to tell you, uh, I'll tell people a story. So, um, whatever. I mean, this is what they do. So whatever, this is the truth. Um, I mean, a few weeks ago, no, hold on, hold on. A few weeks ago, they let me know that they were going to, uh, announce their Mandy award, uh, for the Mandela effect. Like who's brought the most awareness to the topic. I I got nominated for it. And then, of course, like, and I didn't promote it on my channel. I didn't promote it on my Telegram, Facebook. And I won by a landslide. There was a vote. I had, like, 200 votes. Other people had, like, 10. Like, it wasn't even close, right? And I said, all right. I decided, all right, I'll accept the second olive branch, and I'll show up to accept the award. And then all of a sudden, I get sent this whole, like, legal agreement. They want me to, like, sign this agreement where, like, anything I say is, like, owned by them. And they can can edit it any way they want and this, that, and the other thing. And I I was just like, nah, you know what? I got to work. I can't can't make it. Uh, So, yeah, it was really, like. Yeah, I, I would. I was gonna accept the second olive branch and just go and accept the award. Appear on the show, not at their conference or anything, but appear on the YouTube stream a few weeks ago. They sent me this big fucking like legal agreement that they wanted me to sign. I'm not signed a fucking legal agreement to go on a YouTube you, stream, bro. and it literally had language in there that made it sound like they could literally like chop me up and say make use me any way that they want. I'm not saying that they would have, but I'm not gonna sign something permission that makes it so I would have no recourse if something like that happened. No, oh, yeah, that's what happened to me. Basically, I went to this conference. So, and- also on top of no that, I'll idea. just finish. I'll just finish because <laughs> it's going to come up how I, you know, decline or whatever. I was just sent an invitation now, like a week ago, from Cynthia, Cynthia Zulasan, to be a speaker at the next event, and I haven't responded to it. So that's where I'm at. I don't want. I can't. You know, I would love to connect more bridges. Shane actually, uh, Shane called me and asked me, and I said, you know, I'm like, not, not even a week ago. Oh, so there's another one coming up because I don't know. It wasn't a week ago. Yeah, and I don't want to be part of. I don't want like, to be part no, of it. Like, and if anybody I wants to, oh, Brian, you should just true. let make amends and connect the community. There's just way too many shady things, and you were there, and you saw a lot of shady stuff that went on that we haven't even got into. And you know, I, 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 I don't need to tie my name to it. Yeah, agreed. You know. I, it's not their, their corner. They're trying to corner the Mandela effect. and Just like that Mandela it. effect documentary guy. I'll talk about that, too, because people are going to ask, what about the Mandela effect documentary? What about that producer Moneybags was talking to, Robert Keviat? Well, if you guys don't know, I met with Robert Keviat. He came to my uh, meetup at Huntington Beach and... <laughs> Yeah, not a good vibe. And uh, as soon as we told him that the moon landing was fake, the guy had like a fucking meltdown. And I never heard from him again. And he wanted people to sign NDAs and all this shit. And uh, from what I'm hearing, I I shouldn't say too much, but I'm hearing that's going to come out. And I'm not going to like the outcome of that fucking Mandela Effect documentary at all and the people that he decided to highlight. And I think it's going to be a complete joke. And I'll just leave it at that. To not not say too much. If anybody saw me on the HBO special that they have, yeah, I'm sorry. I was stoned out of my mind. 
<laughs> and you I'm, didn't I'm, know HBO was coming, and clearly the I people didn't. running the okay, conference that did. Football. That's the thing. That's just like the fucking Jimmy Kimmel thing with Robbie Davidson and the Flat Earth Conference. It's the same fucking bullshit, dude. There's no way you should have been put in that position, bro. No, but I don't think I said anything wrong, but you're right. I, I did feel crowded. I felt like I was put in a position where I'm like, I have no idea what I want to talk about right now. I had no idea to think about what does the Mandela effect really think it mean to me and what it is. No, I talked about a pen that I put down. I turned around and went back and it was gone. Yeah. That's the type of shit. <laughs> I did that, a magic yeah. trick. And, and I, that's what I was talking about in my book. And, and I mean, let's see, I'll tell you what, this, that came, that, when, when was that? 2019 December ish, because that was right before 2020. No, or was that before? Yeah, that, yeah, your in person one was 2019. And then the first online one that most people know of was 2020, much like Karen. Karen's first flat to Oberfest was 2019, but the one most people think was the first one was 2020. Very similar. Yeah, well, that, that, I, I didn't see it until literally. Three months ago. That's the first time I watched my own thing on HBO. And I watched it and I thought, well, you know, and my friends are laughing with me because we're all standing around watching it. And I'm like, you know, I mean, they already are like, yeah, dude, you shift timelines all the time. It's hard to keep up with you. So they're not, you know, they see changes. They've been on my videos. They, they do things, but they're not chasing it, looking at it, like investigating. They don't, they don't care. They're going about their life. They got families. They got kids. They do what they got to do. I don't know. It's, um, yeah. but it's, it's just watching it, just... it for the first time. I thought, ah, hey, you know what? I guess it wasn't that bad, but I still feel like I could have done a lot better in in presenting what I felt like the Mandela effect was. Oh, and people, I, for you people that are new, you guys missed a lot of shit. So when when Suso went to that, and then HBO was there filming, and you guys didn't know, and then that was used in uh, was it How to with John Wilson? Was that the show? Right. Yeah, I believe it is. Yeah. You know, and they show I, that I, stage grocery store scene. Yeah. And then then yeah. the year later, when the online conference was and everybody was paying attention. And I'm so glad you made the point about trying to bridge the communities, because that's exactly what I was trying to do at that time. And then Chris comes out in a full NASA jumpsuit, sings Mr. Rogers the new way, and then goes on to precede people because it seems that some of the Challenger astronauts are still alive that that's a Mandela effect. No, if they're still alive, that's because nobody went up in the rockets and blew up and it has nothing to do with the fucking Mandela effect. Yeah, that show was messed and up. And then it went into science. this whole thing about Gus Grissom speaking to him from beyond the grave. Oh and... God, geez, I forgot all about that. Yeah, I was like, that don't even have anything to do with anything. What are you talking about? Yeah. What are you doing? Uh, and, but my, and you know what's nice? My roommates there, when I went there, my roommates were, uh, Guy Fawkes and Scar performance. I remember I did, you know, do you remember I did Wait a the minute, video? You were talking with Guy. Yes. That's Guy, right. you were Guy Fawkes' awakening interview was live from the 2019 Mandela Effect conference when you, him, and Scarab were in the hotel room. I was interviewing oh. Guy, and you guys ran out of the hotel room while all this was going down. I was interviewing Guy on his awakening. I remember. Oh, yes, that's, that's right. Wow. Yes, the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> small world good stuff they were smart enough I, I don't recall if they both signed both didn't sign or maybe one did one didn't but i'm pretty sure they were both smart enough to stay off the damn camera mm -hmm. um yeah that's uh, just i don't know i did meet uh once upon a timeline right yeah, yeah she seems nice i got no hey, right her hug her. Yeah. i was nice she seems nice um, and and you know i love money bags and appreciate all the work he's done you know um, but all these other people that other nobody world. knows and people come in talking about out of space and all the shit that's got absolutely nothing to do with the Mandela effect. And a lot of it, as most of us know, is complete disinformation. It was very disheartening. I mean, there was like nothing about the Mandela effect in that conference. This sucked. There was enough people there that could have balanced that out or made it, made it something like the Mandela effect. But no, let's go to Gaia. Let's check yeah. out. So I is. gave my Mandela Effect presentation with Shiva Shampoo at Anacapoco. Several hundred people in attendance, I think, and maybe a thousand or two watched the online stream. So I'm happy I was able to do that. 
but I just have, you know, I just don't want to connect myself to that other thing. So that's just kind of where I'm at, guys. I don't really know what to tell anybody that thinks I should. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. You know, I don't need to, and I don't want to. So, um, you know, and I just, I don't know what, I don't know what else to say about it, Suso. People are, people are still going to see that title, that name, that channel, and they're going to go, oh, okay, well, I just had one of those, or I just, you know, I get looked it, it up, and, it is, and they're going to go there, and. I get I it, but it's not it's not worth me to attach my name to try and steer those few in the right direction, you know? Like that's not what I'm I agree. Do. I agree. I think there's some people on in that group that are good people. You know, yeah. I just haven't been would you say? I mean I got Shane. no reason I got no reason to think Shane is a bad guy or anything with Jerry. Right. I'm not saying. Yeah. He's... I don't know. So if you want, you want to see a girl dance on the bar? That's that last video I sent you. Yeah, I do. Yeah, is this the one that's gonna do the thinker? Yeah, she's gonna. She yeah, and and like throughout the whole video, she's like, she even tells people, okay, do this, but don't stand on the bar. She gets up later on telling people not to stand on the bar. Where do you see the half giant that I'm very good friends with on the right hand side when he tells her to get down? All right. It's like it's not like I don't have people watching me. <laughs> I mean, he's a half giant. I bust his balls all the time. I'm gonna get it up on the screen. Hang on. I gotta get it up. Yeah. Well, Give I'm me. not sure exactly how far it goes, but I think I'm right on point here, where I gave you the uh, timestamp. Give me a minute. I gotta get it up. There she goes. Gonna take a minute. <clears throat> no. There she blows. Yellow yield sign in this reality. Black, white, and red since 70s. Does Yogi Bear wear suspenders? There was a, a movie where a famous guy played a genie. Was it Shaq or Sinbad? Well, that's kind of a shitty way to phrase the question, but I, I know I, I knew that, yeah. but but you sorry, know what's funny? It's a good video. Half I'm of, sorry. I'm like half, extra critical here. <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. Half of them say Shaq. Half of them say Sinbad. <laughs> that's the funny part. All right, we're going to get a little interactive here. You will write down go. something, but not yet. First, you will pose for me like Rodan's thinker, the thinker statue. There we go. We got one. You know, don't look at his. Do your own answer, because he, he might be wrong. She he knows. might be right. Oh, Jesus. Look, she's going to get on the bar. Don't get on the bar. Don't get on the bar. I'm sorry. No. you got to get down. No. Look on the no. Right. No. you got to get down. No, you can't do that. Can't no. Do that. <laughs> See how big that dude is? Okay, that was exciting. That was a road to hand, I guess. That was exciting. Eric, I know that every day that was going to You get... That's very good. Very good. Um, anybody else you want to pose for me? Like the Rodan's thinker, the statue. Don't he, get on don't, and don't get on the table either. He he wears he, he puts his fist somewhere on his head. I am not going to high five you. It's not okay. Okay. Healy sitting down up there. So we 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 can put down head or chin or nose or whatever wherever you put your. Wherever you put your uh, head, that was the interactive portion of the show. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> God. Holy Lord. Thank you, by the way. Um, okay, there's a TV show with four girls running around New York City. It is called what? TV show with four girls running around New York City. Slinging that song. pussy all over the place. What color is a yield sign in America, guys? United States. <laughs> dude, you do like a full-on Mandela Effect trivia night, dude. This is fucking fantastic. Yeah, you know, I, I've been thinking about it. Right now, it's a little difficult. We're closed. But, yeah, I did this every Monday and Tuesday. We're closed. And the only thing that's going on is the bar's open and I'm back there. And I was just 
getting bored walking back. Just you know, I'm, I'm when people wanted to talk, and and they're saying to me, they look at me and they're going, "Yeah, it was really weird, man. I thought Flintstones had." You know, one T or two T's or, you know, and I'm like, oh, God, why are you bringing up Mandela effects? I'm trying to get away from it. And, and <laughs> like, everybody I talk to is bringing up Mandela effects in random conversation. I'm like, all right, fine. You know what? Let me break out a list and start quizzing people. And it was like spring break around here when it was happening. So it started to get really busy. And it was it was wasn't easy sitting there because a couple of times through these videos, I actually have somebody film me making old fashions and stuff and i'm screaming out answers and i'm still doing the trivia while i'm making drinks that's yeah. going on yeah i mean I, you know what it was fun i gotta say i enjoyed that but i can't keep doing it all the time yeah of course not and how many of that i mean it's i i think it's nice to interact with these people and maybe they open up their mind a little bit or I, I think that's a good thing, but, you know, I don't know. As far as bringing it on YouTube and watching it all the time, no, I could probably just do a trivia thing and, you know. But it is, it, it, it could be worked out. I actually started to categorize things. I was like cartoon characters, you know, real life stuff, name changes. Yeah, dude. People who died. Dude, I mean, so you know, the, the girl was in the bar the other night. I don't know if you heard this conversation before you came in. And uh, she was sitting there, oh, nice shirt, you know? And I said, oh, yeah, thank you. you know, and it was my dose of reality shirt. So I told her I have a show. What do you talk about? Oh, the Mandela effect. You, you, you ever heard of it? Oh, yeah. I said, so this is where I try and gauge what they actually think of it. You know, I said, well, what's your, your what, what, when I say the word Mandela effect, what do you think? See, I wouldn't have cared. I would have just dove right in. Well, listen, her answer to that question, when I said, what, what did I say Mandela effect, what do you think? She said, my friend used to work for the Smithsonian, so I know. <laughs> so then I said uh, out loud, I, this is funny, because I said, uh, all right, so are you familiar with the Bible, blah, blah, blah. And I said, in the, yeah, she said, yeah, the girl behind me that I was actually working with behind the bar said, yeah. I said, in the book of Isaiah, what animal lied with the lamb? Lion, lion. I told them, you know, the deal, it's the wolf, and no way, no way. I said, go home, check your Bibles, blah, blah, blah. Then I start to tell her about the channel, so I come over to show the channel on the phone, right? And I show my YouTube channel, and it's got the players. I said, this is all my videos, my Delphix show videos, videos in California, right? These are my videos. He just get. And she's like, oh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I love Neil deGrasse Tyson. What's this video about? I'm like, oh, um... Maybe not start with that video. <laughs> wow. Wow. And because it's my agents against humanity and me burying Neil deGrasse. But I let her know real quick. Oh, you know, what's your issue with him? I said, oh, all the fake bullshit he pushes, like all the fake space shit Ooh. and all this. And it didn't really go much farther than that. Uh, but yeah, that was fucking funny. Yeah, I guess funny. not. You didn't get laid that night. I wasn't trying to get laid. <laughs> I know. And I don't either behind the bar because you know what? You just end up buying them drinks and they leave with somebody else because you got you got to count the bank down. You got to stock. You got shit to do. They leave with somebody else. I don't even bother. Oh, yeah. I don't do that either. I waste my fucking time or money. No. There, there's girls that'll come up and start trying to chat me up even it's behind the bar she's like, like oh I, I had her attention she was all in then she saw neil degrasse she's like i love neil degrasse tyson <laughs> and i'm like fuck no. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, he, i still see him out there that's like, that's a whole that's a whole nother conversation all right <laughs> you know now i gotta tell you that the fucking earth ain't a globe <laughs> it's gonna take a couple months Maybe, maybe Nobody's not. Gonna get that. I don't know if they'll actually get that unless they actually start looking at it themselves. Yeah, of course. I mean, you could tell them all you want, but they're going to go back to their lives. I don't know. So what about the National Guard coming out for the uh, eclipse? What did you, where'd you get this, Richie from Boston? Or? I don't even. I actually deleted his channel. I don't want. <laughs> yeah, all right. I mean, that sounds. Is like he still something. out there? I guess. He get he. Listen, when I saw him screaming that aliens were coming out of the Lexor in Vegas, mm -hmm. and I'm like, dude, that's bats. They're bats flying around the lights. 
and you're posting that these are aliens coming out of some portal. I was done. I was like, you're, you're out of your mind. You're being paid. He changed. Actually, his name changed. His YouTube name. Oh, he gets triggered about that. And I don't personally remember the T, but when people bring that up, he used to get triggered about that. Absolutely. 100% for me back then in 15, 16, when I was watching that stuff, it was a T. He had a T in his name and then it stopped. And and I was like, okay, I let that go. I'm like, cool. Mandela effect. Woohoo. And then I started listening to his stuff and it just sounded like he was being paid off. I mean, he's being, but he was bought. I don't know yeah. what he's putting out there now, but he was, I just felt like he was, but there were, t- he had pictures of tanks rolling down the street. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I remember that 10 years ago, the exact same video. That's so wild. You know, well, wow. Hey, he you knows fair, sell- fair sells and not many people know better than he does. Oh, oh so you're not a fan. I don't have a per- I, well. I don't. I'm not a fan of anybody promoting fear. I do appreciate that Richie brought me on his show a couple times, and the first time was pretty cool to talk about the Mandela effect in early 2019. That helped open a lot of people to my channel. Uh, I, I hold on, hold on. I appreciate that he denied the Mandela effect and then looked at it further and realized that it was real and that his own King James Bible had changed. He actually looked at it more. So I definitely appreciate that. However, Richie is basically the antithesis of what I do and try and get people to not live in fear. And he has been one of the larger channels promoting fear within the truth community for years. So, you know, yeah, that that's where I am with that. I haven't know? seen him in three, four years. I, I I think the other day I was I mentioned him on a channel. Somebody said, Oh, is that Richie? I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm not going there. I'm I'm not I'm done with that. There's there's channels I deleted many times that i've oh i probably like that episode you know what there's 10 others i don't there's nothing there for me there's very few people i watch at all and i think maybe people can start to understand why like what am i going to get out of somebody pushing fear or somebody that denies the mandela effect or somebody that wants you to watch the media in any sense of the way so if people don't check all those same boxes that i do like at least on that level there's not really much there for me to watch i just don't have time now i just focus on my own content but even when I would sometimes watch other people a bit more, Richie's somebody I never watched. I never followed him. Um, and when that interview came up in 2019, that came up because he saw me on Mike Williams uh, in March of 2019. And Richie was in April. By the way. Yeah, Mike, <laughs> and Mike, Mike's a cool, cool motherfucker. And I've met Mike several times. Um, oh, yeah? Right. But... I yeah, I, I had never watched Richie, and I, I knew who he was, but I had never watched his videos because I knew they were fair porn. But when he invited me on his show to talk about the Mandela effect, and he had, like, whatever, 100,000 subscribers, 500,000, whatever it was. Yeah, he had a few hundred thousand because there were, like, 50,000 people saw that interview. Um, that was a good interview, and I know everybody in the community saw it. That, that brought a lot of people to my channel in the beginning. I eventually would have got there, but at that point, I had like 2,000 subs, and it brought me to like 5,000 subscribers real quick after that interview. So that was good. He brought me back on with me and Jesus Freak Computer Geek. And was it, was it, was was Photo Helix with us that day? I think he might have been with us too. And one other person, and we went on, and it was funny because all of a sudden in the middle of that show, I went on about 9-11 and how I feel about it, you know? And when I was done, Richie was like, well, I don't agree with the single thing you had to say right there. <laughs> How do you deal with that? Whatever, bro. That's because you want to push fear about it. You know? I mean, yeah, of course you don't agree with that because your whole shtick is, you know. Almost no truth is going to agree with me on that because most of them are never really look deep at that. It's funny. I think it's funny. I think it's funny the people that deny the Mandela effect and like try and mock me and my followers when they're like a Susa, they're like a decade behind now. A decade. The people that deny the Mandela effect and have content, make videos online, are no different than the people they look at that still promote NASA and all the fake space stuff that have content online and can't seem to grasp that they lied to about that. You guys are the same to me and I've been saying it for years. Been saying it for years. You're the same. Photo Helix. I miss that guy. He had some great content. Had yeah, a great interview with him. Photo. 
had a great, the best awakening interview might have been Photo Helix. We went certainly the longest, 10 hours and about 20 minutes, an over 10 hour awakening interview with me and Photo Helix. Uh, you definitely need to see that if you haven't. One of the first people, right? One of the first people speaking about the Mandela Absolutely. effect and the Bible changes yeah. and wineskins. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, me and him, you know, talked on the phone many times. Uh, I I sent him packages. I don't know if you could read between the lines there, but he was going through some yeah. shit. I think so. everybody in this chat could read between the lines already. <laughs> I, I, just, I was like, wow, you know. Yeah, uh, and... Oh, God. I hope his wife's doing well. I mean, we spoke a lot as well. And his daughter. That's just weird, you know, the timing for that when, when he left us. That was like right before 2020. Yeah. Like, you know, and I'm I'm like, wait a minute. Now we got all these people talking about the rapture. And I'm like, you know what? Do I want to be raptured? Or do I want to stay here and experience this? Because I always said, look, I'm here to experience Armageddon because I shouldn't be here anymore. Right? This, I should be done. But I, So I must be here to experience whatever Armageddon is. <coughs> or whatever. Um, and so I, I look into a lot of that. He's gone. And I just, I don't know. I'm like, do you want to be raptured? Everybody, you know, do you? If that's true, if that's real, would you want to be taken off? Do you want to be left here with one billion people or do you want to get out of here? I, I'm thinking most of us are like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, get me out of here. <laughs> I don't know. We're looking at the My Awakening list. All these names you're hearing are here. People said in the chat, where can I find the Photo Helix interview? Here it is. Just go to my YouTube channel. Go to the My Awakening list. Look at 31. Photo Helix, episode 31, 10 hours and 12 minutes. Guy Fox. This is the one we talked about live from the first International Mandela Effect conference when Susu was there. Right here. Jesus Freak Computer Geek. So many fantastic people in the community. Awakened Saint. I'm in if there we scroll somewhere. back, you're right here. Bro, you're down near the beginning. You're number 22, bro. Oh. Also, yeah. Sand, Sandy Diva, Jen, the Truth Seeker 69, Sandy Diva, number 20, Stasha, who wrote a book. Remember Indeed. Stasha? She was one of the first ones to write a book on the Mandela Effect years ago. Um, which which I'll just give a shout out to Stasha because that prompted me to write my book. That and pushed me. My Awakening episode number three, Meeks, Meeks B, who uh, – I was one of the first people I interviewed. Gloria was number three. I don't know where it is in here. Uh, and uh, Paul was number one and James was number two, but James had too much 9-11 stuff, so YouTube deleted it. But you can find the rest on my Odyssey channel. Mike Williams, we just talked about, is here. So these Odyssey. awakening interviews, for those that don't know, I interview people as well on their whole personal awakening journey, not topic specific from the time they grew up until now, all the topics they've been through. We got Vanessa VA, Sage Aquay, Mike Williams, right. Nathan the Colonel Sanders, Alt Skull from the Paranormies, Ian from We Are Way TV, Tommy, of course, Blue Pac Man, Lucky Haskins, Ben Balderson, many that are deleted from here. Tommy, that flat fellow. We got Russian Vids. We got Daryl Davis, Alex Lowry, David Weiss, Mellow Dome. His glory is in a view. It's just in the wrong spot. Uh, Mark Sargent, Life Matrix, uh, JM, Sailing Fan Man, Voynich, Patricia Steer, Ted. Whatever happened to Like See God Warrior? He's on here. Have you seen him anywhere lately? No. There, there's quite a few people you're mentioning that I just haven't seen. Nachi Keda, Crow Triple Seven, uh, Paul, uh, Steve JMO, Roxanne, Jason Disbury, Matt Leedke, Trinity Four, Flatter Falka, yeah. Dave Murphy. It goes on and on. And like if you guys want to see a great list of interviews, go check out my awakening list where I interview people. And uh, I'll pat myself on the back. I think I'm the best interviewer out there. So hey, check good it job, out. B. <laughs> <laughs> good job. <laughs> no, that's great, man. That's what I'm saying. I love what you do. You 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 stuck with it right through all the times that myself and others were just like had enough. I mean, you, I'm, you were Mandela affected, but you didn't do it this way. 
like you you were still doing 911 and you know whatnot and you weren't even on YouTube at first when you were doing this you you were doing other Oh, I wasn't on YouTube till 2018. My first eight years were just podcasts on my site. Um, I never wanted to do YouTube, and I spoke about why, and it totally played out. The foretold censorship. I told how they were going to centralize everybody yeah. on these platforms, get them comfortable with it. Yeah, but you're bigger it. because of it now. Yeah. Oh, you're yeah. You're bigger because of it. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I like I like that you stuck stuck with it, and you're still going and. Oh, yeah. And Nachi Keda, I don't know if he's in the chat. Somebody said, oh, yeah, Nachi Keda has been killing it lately. He has. He's been interviewing loads of people in the community and a lot of people I don't really have connections with. So definitely check out Nachi Keda's channel. Really appreciate it. And I am working more now. I'm working 50 hours a week. I can only stream twice a week now, but I have the balance I need right now in my life. And with the summer coming and being on the lake, I have an opportunity to really do well over the next few months and get myself in a good position. So it's like I might hold down a lot of hours until the summer's over and then try to transition back to more streaming. So yeah, please take, be take patient. Care of I'm take taking care, care of yourself. myself is number one right now. I'm going to put myself gotta, in the driver's seat. got to be always. Yeah. You got to take care of yourself. Sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah, buddy. What do you got going on? I, been, I got Crown Apple Royal is what I got. I've been drinking bourbon with you all night. Jeez. Look at oh, this. Nice. I drink like half this bottle. I don't even drink. Dude. <laughs> you're a bad <laughs> influence, dude. Don't yeah, don't don't go there because there's a point where you're like, oh, I gotta slow down, man. This is too much. Don't you know, I'm ready to run to the fridge to go get another beer. No, you're fine. And it's tough because the place has been closed since the first, and it doesn't open until the sixteenth. And I'm like, okay, what do I do with myself now? You know, I got the house clean, I got everything now, all the chores are done, whatever. I'm hitting hot springs. I've hit hot five five hot springs in the last uh, I don't know eight days. So now I got to stop driving because everywhere you go, it's a two hour drive minimum. But it's nice, man, sitting in a river with a beer. Just chilling, 105 degrees, 23 outside. Yeah. Once a week, if I can help it. Yep. So I guess we can open the phones. You want to hang out for some phone calls? Yeah, sure. I got I got another intro for you later. I mean, if you want to do that later. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, dude? It's fun stuff. Just one of the other videos that have an intro. It's you know, a couple minutes long, whatever. I mean, let, we'll take calls. But if nobody calls, we'll just pop that up. You want me to Come start selling? Should I start selling your fucking T-shirts too while we're at it? Silver Dollar Saloon. <laughs> Mandela, Mandela effect on the back. I like it. We can do that. We'll start selling them. <laughs> I actually had. You got a link? I'm not even fucking around. You got a link to your like T-shirts? We'll promote it right now. I don't care. Oh my dude. God, no, I don't. But uh, but it was funny because one time the owner goes, "Yeah, order fifty more shirts of everything." The owner at the time, he was just coming in. His family's owned the place since forty one, and he says, "Just just get fifty shirts of everything you got." And one of them was Mandela effect with the Monopoly man on each side and Silver Dollar Saloon on the back. So I bought them. They sold out before anything else did. Yeah, and he was, but I stopped doing it, and I'm like, okay, I'm like, no, I want to get the shirts. I want to have my books up here and the shirts up here, and then do trivia, and just you know, I mean, it's like perfect. You're kind of a I, for somebody that's kind of stepping away. You're kind of a streaming junkie. Because don't get me wrong, I wasn't there. I popped in for a minute or so because I was busy. But uh, weren't you on yeah, Dan's show? Were, no, weren't you on oh, Dan's yeah, show? I was all on night? Dan's show last night. <laughs> <laughs> And and last Saturday, or no, not last Saturday, two weeks before that, I was on a show. Yeah, I know. Isn't that weird? But right now, I'm off. I'm looking for things to do. I'm kind of bored. I'm like, oh, I really want to get away from this. I'm going to hide from the eclipse. Now I'm going to run out there and look at it. I mean, come on. I, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, that's I saw funny. that you were on. I saw that you were on. That's funny. Dude, when you go in there, if I'm in there, you, you just type in, you go, I'm just here to hate. Say hi to Suso and then leave. <laughs> Uh, no. I don't want. I don't want to get everybody all right. That might cause some shit. Don't yeah, do that. I, just, I just pop it in the. Or, or you, Suso sent me. 
Are you kidding me? He's got Fizzy watching us now. I and love Fizzy. I love Fizzy, and I don't have a problem with Dean Fizzy's at all. Fizzy's freaking awesome. I I'm just kidding about that. She's probably not. I'm just saying. I'm just saying if she was watching, it'll get back to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> and I don't care. I'll t probably talk to him tomorrow and tell him. I don't give a shit. Yeah. That's that, that's just funny because when I was putting these videos in. Hey, I, I did like, you know, besides the random pop bin, me and Dan did like three shows together. My Awakening with him on my channel and like two shows with me on his channel. I thought they were fantastic conversations. I think those are great shows. Are. Everybody should are. check out uh, Scarab Performance, My Awakening interview. I think it might be number 23 or so. Uh, OG yeah. in the game for sure. But I don't know. It's funny. I don't know. Well, and we do those shows. I'm like, I'm like, damn, we got to do this now. We got to do this now. I'm ready for bed. It's, and I'll, I'm ahead of him. So it's earlier for me. I don't know. Good stuff. Well, how's Dan doing? Is he doing good? I heard he was doing good at his new career. Actually, he's doing really good. I, mm -hmm. I won't speak for him. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody say hi to Prince. Hi, buddy. He said hi. Did you hear him? Mm -hmm. not, not an animal person there? <laughs> yeah, Dan's doing good. Uh, for the Eclipse, I'm like kind of poking at him because he's like, yeah, he's probably going to go out and look at it. Everybody's going out to look at it. He's right in the totality. He's right there. And the weather might clear from what I hear. So, But I love how they predicted um, 90% cloud cover over the United States on the day of the eclipse three months ago. <laughs> they predicted that three months ago. Yeah. That's funny. Chemtrails and shit. Funny, funny, funny. Carrie wrote Ace McCloud and Steve J.M.O. Another two. I don't know what that was in referred to. Oh, okay. People disagree. Ace McCloud, I so, remember him. I will tell you that, although I haven't talked to Steve J.M.O. after he insinuated that I was a shill, which I thought was completely ridiculous. Um, I have talked to Michael Healy, Carrie. Carrie. He's popped in very, very randomly, but I did see him a couple weeks ago in, in a chat or maybe my Facebook and talk to him. I have talked to Christian Knapp personally. Um, I make sure Christian's a very good friend of mine. I always keep in touch with Christian. Might not be more than once a month or once every two months sometimes, but definitely talk to him. I haven't seen James from Germany in a few months. Um, Swiss I haven't seen in a few months. And who else did you just write? Ace McLeod. I have here and there. I do talk to Ace. Ace. Ace is doing good. He's not doing the whole YouTube thing a lot and stuff. And Ace is together with Dottie. I don't know if you guys know uh, Dottie's world, but Ace and Dottie have been in a relationship for a couple of years. So I'll see Dottie post a lot of stuff with Ace. And every once in a blue moon, I'll talk to Ace. Ace is cool. I like Ace. Me and Ace hung out. Um, 2019, the first uh, Flat Toba Fest that Karen had. And we had a house that we rented. Me, Mark Sargent, Ace, Zulu One, um, shit, and a couple other people, man. And we just we had a fucking blast at that. And the fuck, that was five years ago now. I took I took acid that night, Suso, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm blaming Ace. <laughs> the only the only way I take acid is if you drug me. Apparently, I did, I, I, I took acid that night. Yeah. No. No, really? Yeah, how'd it go? I, I mean, didn't like, that went great, dude. We had like a whole bunch of flat earthers partying in the house, dude. Like, and a whole bunch of us stayed there. It was game. Great. I, I'm not sure how I would react to that. I don't know. DMT, yeah. And Carrie Dottie is, uh, she's not anti social media, but she kind of transitioned off of the other stuff and she posts on uh, TikTok sometimes. And uh, she does a lot of videos about gardening and Mandela Effect short videos. So, Angela Baby Carson, if you're watching, you should follow Dottie. I think you guys would get along well. Um, she, a lot about gardening and stuff like that and a lot of Mandela Effect short videos. Um, I'm, I'm just afraid after my first experience going to, like, a convention or something, I, I'm a, 
If I go to a convention, I'll probably just stay in my room the whole time. Listen, Susan, I don't... let me let me talk to you because you did mention right when you got on the stream, I mentioned the Mandela Effect meetup you went to, and you're like, oh, I don't know if I go to the flat Earth thing or whatever, dude. If you came to one of fucking our events, man, I say our events, I mean Karen's events. Um, but if you came, bro, you would have the most amazing time. There's a lot of people in this chat that were there in Vegas. There's a lot of people in this chat that were at other of the events. Dude, you'd be amongst so many people that you would just love to hug and hang out with, bro. You would not be hanging out in your room. This is the fucking last thing you would be doing. Unless you ate too Come many on. mushrooms. If you <laughs> ate too many mushrooms, you might be hanging out in your room, and I might for like an hour or two, but then we'd be back out partying, bro. Shrooms don't affect me the way they're supposed to, I don't think. How do they affect you? But let me say before you answer, thank you to Valentine uh, for the super chat. Brian, thank you for being, uh, thank you for all you do, $25. Thank you so much. Yeah, you got to come to one of our meetups. Even if uh, it's not a flat Toberfest, you know, I do the meetups in Cali with Steffi and we have 20 to 30 people at Huntington Beach, dude. Oh, sure. oh dude, that'd be a great place for you to come and hang out with like me and Jacobian and Hugh TV and Steffi and... You know, other people in the Mandela community and the Flat Earth is down there, like Renee, who does the activism at HB and other people. Dude, you, you would have a great time, bro. You haven't done it once. You, you do went it to in some, November. Do, you went, do it in November. I can try. I, November's probably a good time First where I could do it. First two weeks in November. Why then? First two weeks in November. Anywhere in there, I could probably work it. Why then? Why that time? Every... The first two weeks in April and November, we shut down. Oh, we're, perfect. We're, we're, we're uh, dude, I, I so swear to God, if, here, if I fucking down. line up a Huntington Beach meetup this November, which is like seven months away, and you don't come, I'm going to fucking beat your ass. And I don't care how immature that is. From, from what they <laughs> tell me, you, you would have to jump up to beat my ass from what I hear, and I'm short. How, how tall are you? How tall are you? <laughs> I, if I had to actually pinpoint, I'd say 5'5 five, five and a little bit more. Five Dude, five. you're literally like the same size as me, and I'll give you a fucking F5 right through that fireplace right now. 5'5 five, five and a half, maybe. Just shut that if I, up if real I, quick. I don't have hair, Dude, man. You just acted like you were the jolly green giant, and you're the same size as me, and I got like, I'm like 40 years younger than you. Like, you're going to get fucked up, dude. <laughs> you're not <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're in your 40s. Please. You were fucking with Sovereign Soul Dave building Tataria back in the day, all right? You two old farts. Brother, <laughs> older than that, man. <laughs> you were there for the old fucking old crucifixion life. of Jesus Christ when they hung him in a tree. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it might have been, from what I hear. <laughs> I think we all might have been. Well, you're definitely gonna burn <laughs> in the lake. I... You're gonna burn a lake of fire with me and Tommy, so it's cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. I guess burning's okay. Yeah, you're gonna burn the lake of fire, bro. If you tell people their Bible's supernaturally changing, you're gonna burn a lake of fire. I don't. I don't remember telling anybody anything. I just made suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm masterfully speaking. That's what that is. That's masterfully speaking. So let's talk. Go, let's go. Let's go back and talk about your motivations for crucifying Christ. Again, what? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh we're putting that on. No, you. I didn't. So I didn't uh, <laughs> uh, unsubscribe. What, a, what the fuck? I hit the X. What, what are you talking? About? What the hell's that thing? When you said I um, did something to you, I you, you molested me. I have never met you. Oh. Give me a chance. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I will not give you a chance. <laughs> no, I do yeah. need your chance. My name, no. my, are... my name is Tommy Logsdon. I live in Pensacola, Florida, and I will uh, email you my address. Come down and see me. I'll be right there. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? Um. No, what? It's not the lead. I, you you said earlier, and it pissed me off because I'm like, what are you talking about? You seem really Did confused. I, Have you been drunk driving? No, I'm not driving. Oh, <laughs> I'm not driving. <laughs> I, I I can't touch it. I'm afraid to touch anything on this computer. When you go to you, you see something on your computer. You're like, oh no, that's bad. I'm going to report that. Well, I don't report anything. 
Right. You said I reported your channel or something. I said you gave me a copyright strike. Okay, copyright strike. Whatever. Thank you. It took that long to figure that out. Oh, you're drinking you, all Actually, no, you took that long to figure it out. I called it a copyright strike two hours ago when we talked about it. You're just figuring it yeah. out now. You're and, the I one. Delete, and I said that you copyrighted me or something. Your brain is still back in Tataria. That's not true, dude. I, I, would, I didn't do anything like that, right? Do you really think I did that? Right before you sent me those lewd pictures in my inbox. That's not me. I don't know what you're talking about. I swear <laughs> to God. Oh, you're fucking trolling me. Yeah, oh. dude. Come on, man. You're trolling me. Yeah, sucker. I'm trolling you, bro. I, I was like, I was like, man, why did he think I would do that? I would never do that. I don't care. So oh. back when you were the adversary to Superman, Lex, tell us a little bit about those days. <laughs> <laughs> You getting into superheroes now? No, I'm just making ball jokes. <laughs> you want to talk about? I know you want to talk ball. I feel, I feel half the time I'm laying it. You're not picking up what I'm putting down. I don't. Uh, I probably don't not. Know. Apparently, do you want to? You want to go? I feel like that? every time though, the chat gets it. The, press one in the chat if you get it every time, and you think he's just not picking it up fast enough. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Don't be. I'm gonna. I got. I gotta be nice to you. You're my guest. I'm sorry, Susan. Predictive? Oh. No, dude, you're fine. Break my balls. I don't care. You're you're fine. If the guests are upset that you're treating me different now, it's this. No, is they're happy about it. They don't understand how you don't <laughs> see it, bro. <laughs> Predictive programming. Do you understand that? <laughs> yeah, I get it. Predictive. Okay. Uh, when's the first time? And chat, please interact. When's the first time you heard that you will? You don't wear the mask to protect yourself. You wear it to protect others. When's the first time you heard that? I don't know. April 2020 or something? <laughs> what's, what's chat saying? Is that what they're, That's probably what they're saying. No, the first time you heard it was uh, the movie called uh, Batman. Oh, all right. Oh, Dark Knight. No, I'm sorry. Uh, no, not Dark. Not even Dark Knight. The one before that. Batman Begins. Yeah, Batman right. Begins. Okay. Batman Begins. Christian Bale. Batman Begins. It's you a good don't movie. wear the mask. Great trilogy. You know, Great movies. Yeah, I love those movies. You don't wear the mask to protect yourself. You wear it to protect others. That's the first time you heard that. And then, boom, what happens? That's, that's what they're saying with 2020. Yeah. Predictive programming. Nothing happened, and everybody just bought it because they believe the screen. I feel fantastic, dude. I've fucking been around so many people without a fucking thing on my face. I should be the first one of the first ones dead. Yet here I am, eternal. I figured. I figured you felt fantastic because you drank a half a bottle of Crown. I feel fantastic <laughs> every day of my life because I'm fucking positive. I'm a positive motherfucker. I do too, but I'm. I go through trials. I go through. I go through trials, and it, it's, you know, as soon as I say to myself. Hey, by the wow. way, I went to the gym today everything for like a ninety great. minutes. I did like a ninety-minute workout today before this. Everything show. is great. As soon as I say everything is great, I get hit with a trial. No, everything is great. Man. But as soon as I realize that and feel it in my life, and I'm like, wow. You should come hang out with me at the cave sometime. Look at this beautiful cave I live in. It's the Bat Cave. Night, daytime, though. But at night, I'm Batman. <laughs> I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you see The Flash? No. The movie, The Flash? Uh, it is no. probably. Dude, it's one of the best Batman movies out there. How's it a Batman movie? Michael Keaton shows up as Batman. For how long, though? Uh, George Clooney shows up as Batman. Oh, Jesus. Uh, ben, ben Affleck is, is shows There's up as Batman. There's multiple Batman in, in a movie In the movie called The Flash. That's it is one of the, To me, it's one of the best Batman movies out there. If you take out all of the stuff that they tried to make it funny. And there were scenes that were just... I just can't... Ben Affleck, bro. I mean, I just can't take... I, and I know he was actually, Batman. He was funny. That Dude, was he's a not that a good was... Batman, bro. Once they made him Batman, I'm like, fuck Batman. <laughs> actually, I don't think he's bad. Out of all the acting he's done, I think this is probably his best. Don't you think that Christian Bale and Michael Keaton were both so excellent that like Ben Affleck sucks at Batman? I think... 
Christian Bale was the best Batman. Christian Michael Bale was, was amazing at it. What about uh, Val, Val same Kilmer thing with fucking Superman, that. dude? Christopher Reeves, you know, and then they got this other guy, Henry Cavill, whatever. Fuck that dude. I'll bitch smack that dude. Dude's a fucking bitch. <laughs> You Superman. You know, yo Lex Luthor, bro. You don't can. You, you don't. You don't Reeves? look at. Did you call him Reeves or? Yeah, Reeves? because Reeves was his name, and he was your adversary. Yeah. Yeah, Lex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta watch the Flash. I actually really enjoyed it. Just because, I mean, mainly because Keaton came back. You know finished his trilogy so is he doing a whole thing keaton isn't he doing a whole batman movie or is that his whole batman thing no what it was no uh, what it uh. was was the flash came out part of dc and it didn't do well because the main character of the flash was a bitch and ben affleck oh no ben affleck's oh. batman who well, plays the, the flash part, do you know the... what's going on? Ezri something. And no, what's like, going on? Is he is he have a vagina? I won't be surprised. Right. Okay. There you go. That's the direction. <laughs> so a, lot of, a lot of people. A lot of people weren't going to watch it just because this guy has a vagina. You know, That's a little weird. Does he? Or he was. Or I don't know. He he's he was targeted by Hollywood, and he's into either kids or he's got a vagina or he's a girl <laughs> or he wants to be a girl. But not in the movie. In the movie, he's just a guy, No, right? in the movie, he's the Flash. Okay, but in real life, he might have a vagina that you fingered. I never fingered. No, he don't have... Well, Lex, no, I don't come know. on, Lex. Tell us the truth. You used <laughs> the... You took the kryptonite crystal and stuck it in this guy's vagina. <laughs> Oh my jeez! Just not talking about vagina, please, because you're the one that brought up the guy with the vagina in the whole story. I didn't say it. You came out. You figured out so what I was trying. The, to the guy about. that you're talking so you about got... right now, does he have a vagina? No. Are you sure? No. And who brought up the story about him? Me. Thank you. Continue. Okay. And then you got the guy that does the TV show as Flash. He got in more trouble for sex texting or some shit. So they like took that show off, or I don't even know. It's not like I watched the shit. I'm assuming it's off, but I'm pretty sure they were going to have him come into the next movie, and have like two different flashes. And I, I, I figure Christian Bale could come into the next Flash movie as another Batman. They're they're lining that all up. I mean, that's what I say. I'm like, the only way you're going to make money on another Flash movie is to bring Christian Bale in as Batman. Because right now they'll start out with. Uh, George Clooney, which I thought was awesome. I, I just loved how they worked that in. I, I enjoyed the movie. I don't know what to tell you. I didn't like when the Flash put his leg over Batman's hip so he'd carry him. I was like, no, that's not funny. Why are you doing that? The guy is already kind of transish, so why are you doing that? That's not. And it was Michael Keaton, Batman, that he was doing it to, and he just... Michael Keaton looked at him and was like, no. <laughs> or whatever. I was just like, and, and you think I need to watch this movie? I, I think you'll enjoy it. I don't I, I think you'll enjoy it because of the multiple Batmans and and the oh, and Superman's in it, but he's not because he died. I'm like wrecking the whole movie for you. <laughs> and who plays fucking Superman? Seth Rogen? I mean no, it, it's uh, Kara. I think her name is Kara, Superman's cousin. Oh, so she it's not even. It. So it's a broad. It's a different. To yeah, it's a different oh, time. Well, you said Superman, not Superwoman, or Supergirl. Oh, it's a different. They're they're looking for Superman. That that was the whole point. They're looking for Superman and find Kara instead of Superman, because Superman was killed as a child. So Sorry. they all. So they all have vaginas. I think everybody in the movie probably had a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck me in the goat house, man. <laughs> I need, are we going to go on? Because I need another beer. I need another drink, too. How about we play a song? Don't anybody go anywhere. We both need a refill. Seriously, don't go anywhere. Uh, let's play my shitty rap song, and we'll be right back. <clears throat> 
You guys are fucked up, man. These guys are like, you were drunk, Brian. I mean, kind of, but that's fine. It's my day off. And even when it's not, like, we run this shit. Not drunk, I'm just trying to avoid the eclipse, which I think I'm going to go watch. We're going to listen to Brian Rat. Did you know your reality is being put to the test? The Panama mm. Canal no longer runs east and west. Things you are sure happen never did in this reality. The crunchy cereal with the captain now has an apostrophe. Some are changed for many folks. Shit, that punctuation now just showed up on different strokes. This shit can't be attributed to only digital content. Take a look at South America. They move the whole fucking continent. Even pop in your copy of Star Wars. It could be 30 years old. Shit, when is C-3PO? Not all fucking gold. Maybe you haven't noticed the changes yet. Open your eyes, trust your senses, and you realize the Mandela effect. I'm from the reality where the youngest Jackson was a girl. Volkswagen logo had no line and Ford had no curl. The Black Tom attack we didn't learn of in school. It was always who will save your soul sung by Jewel. The music ones really stand out to me. It's no longer I want to paint it black in this reality. People writing it off is bad memory. Even with Superman, Chris Reeves. Running your trap, dismissing it is one of my pet peeves. Everything I research, people say it's a psyop. Even simple things like pointing out the towers can't collapse from the top. Somehow we are experiencing merging timelines. For more research, check out my site, The Real News Online. started noticing changes in like 2014. It was JFK, the six-seater, that seemed so obscene. Many people will try and call me a loon. But hold up, wait, they even changed the spelling of Looney Tunes? Let these thoughts sink deep into ya. How could you ever miss the Great Wall of India? The Statue of Liberty was on Ellis Island. Go search there for it now, and you won't find it. It's time for you to wake up. Hello, Clarice. In this reality, the Monopoly guy never had the eyepiece. Some of these changes I don't see how you can dispute. For me, it was always the Smithsonian Institute. Institution? Well, to my ears, that's simply noise pollution. For me, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. The human anatomy changes bug me out, but really, they should. As contrived as they may be, it was always daylight savings time and Haley's Comet for me. Our poor neighbors up north are swallowed by the sea. Some of these geography changes Yo, are so Keith, obvious. what's up, bro? Flatsoid in the Brian, house. You went too far. I'll say since when is Cuba as big as Florida? Hey, listen up here. The forest fighting ranger was called Smokey the Bear. I'm writing this song to have a little, a little fun. fun. Raise your awareness. If, if I, I build it, I know they will come. So what's causing this, many want to know. Well, I don't think it's CERN, they're just a magic show. Satanists doing rituals while scamming Matt Doe. Sounds familiar like liars that always show us the globe. NAS, NIST, CERN, and more. We really need to show these corrupt agencies the door. I don't think this phenomenon is caused by man. I think it's a great awakening. Possibly God trying to contact us any way he can. For me, Flat Earth Mandela and our dreams are all connected. Looking to pull some people in that I can intersect with. Trying to wrap your head around it, it can be a hoot. Now Italy, it's no longer a standing boot. Shit, I'm hoping these changes might actually make me kinda cute. As crazy as a shit. Yo, Suso. Now Chewbacca has never been a Wookiee. It's time to look into Oh, he's away changing his depends right now. You know how these boomers are. <laughs> You know how these boomers are with their depends. Uh, but yeah, but big shout out to Suso for doing these videos, talking to people about Mandela Effect in his bar. Like, this is great stuff. And I've definitely seen a lot of this in the past. I've been friends with Suso for years now in the community, but I know there's a lot of you new don't, people. You don't, actually, you don't actually have to change your depends. It's what do you mean? That's why they're there. You don't have to change it. It's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, eventually, once you got so much shit piled up in them, you'll have to change Where'd it. Where'd you go? Think. Why aren't you here? I'm here. What's your oh, problem? Okay. Just because I'm not on camera? You got you. you, you oh, well, I was going to do the same thing. 
Yeah, I'm like I'm talking oh. to a. Oh, you can you can show your camera around if you want. I, I I'm afraid to touch anything. Oh, you shouldn't touch <laughs> anything. You you're very not tech savvy, so I probably wouldn't touch anything if I were you. Yeah, no, because I would have done the same thing. Get my little emblem up there or whatever. But no, you're good. So what you are have... we doing now? Uh, I don't know. We've been going for five hours, and uh, I think I might I open haven't. the. Well, I have. Oh, okay. But that's like a commercial break to me. Yeah, open the phones, man. But I am that's working the next few nights, so we can't go forever, but we can go for like another hour. Another hour, and then I got to go. But uh, I just hey, seen Flat right? Flatzoid popped in the chat. Everybody make sure you subscribe Flatzoid. I just did a show with him yesterday. I didn't put it on YouTube yet, but it's on his channel, and it's on all my other platforms. I'll probably premiere that on Tuesday morning. <clears throat> Give us a call, 978-435-0006. Dutchy. Oh, a Dutchy payment. Ring dong. Give me a ring dong, Dutchy. Is that what it is? Ring dong? Dutchie? That's exactly what it is, man. I'm proud of you. Is it? Yeah, man. Yeah, you're doing good, man. I, I don't listen to every show you put up. I, I'm usually working. You'd be a decent Robin to this Chris, Christian Bale Batman. Come on, man. When you when you look at me, you think Batman. Come on. You know, it's funny. I, I, I don't want to say, but yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm so embarrassed. All right, cool. Now I, now I need to change my depends. <laughs> you shit your depends after you ate all that stupid, stupid up stuffing? Oh, my God. I mean, how obvious is that one? That's such a huge Mandela effect, right? right? Like, it's such a specific everybody thing. Everybody says it. When, when I go to the bar and I do those interviews, everybody comes up with stovetop. And then, of course, you know, you get the download and everybody else is agreeing. I don't know if they're getting a download. I just think it's like, oh, yeah, of course. You know, would they have come up with it by themselves? What did you write down? That's why I do the paper thing. They're all writing it down. Yeah. You know. Let me ask you about one of the bigger claimed Mandela effects. And uh, although it doesn't really affect me, it's only because I never really knew. And I, uh -huh. I, I do see a significant amount of evidence for something happening here. What do you feel about the whole? And obviously, we know like a lot ties into this because then we have to get into like what's real about what we've been told and where are we in the universe? And we know NASA lies about everything. But what do you think about the whole Orion to Sagittarius, or Sagittarius to Orion, rather, uh, Mandela effect? And I don't need to explain it deeper. You know what I'm talking about. For and me, I want to, yeah, for, yeah. For me, I'd say, yeah. Um, I think we, they say we moved, whatever. Did we shift? Yeah, if it's a Mandela effect, yeah, we shifted. I have really big connections Did with... Do you, do you think, though, the night sky has changed for you due to that shift? Like, do you see the stars in a different orientation from uh, Sagittarius to Orion Spur now in this reality shift? I know. And all the names are different. There's For me, there's definitely a change because when I was a child, my mother and father took me outside and they mm -hmm. were trying to explain to me the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. And they showed me that that one star connected both of them and it was polaris mm -hmm. and i remember this distinctively this is not a big mandela effect it's not a mandela effect that a lot of i think i've come across three people in the last however long i've been into this that agree with me that yeah polaris actually was one star and connected both the small dipper and the little dipper yeah and it was stationary and it was, well, yeah, it was, well, it was, well like, do you, do you remember it being stationary or are you just not sure? When so I was fun. five or six, I, I don't know. Um, I can't go with that. I, I can't, not 100%. You know, there's something in me that wants to say, yeah. Um, but I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make shit up. No, you shouldn't no. jump on board with the change if you're just not sure, you know. But I, re I remember 100% Polaris being stationary, especially at the start of my Flat Earth journey. And I've shown many people in the community the larger names doing videos. Even even Eric Dubay, I've shown with a time-lapse video behind him showing Polaris saying that it never moves and it's stationary. And you can see it doing circles in the sky. Um, I want to give a shout-out, too, to... 
another OG in the community, Scott Harrison. You know Scott, I'm sure. I do. And Scott, is he in the, in the chat? No, but Scott is the one that made me aware of the Polaris change way back in 2018. And I thought that was going to be the one. You know, that was going to be the one that was going to wake up all Not the Not a lot of people know that stuff. Not a lot of people are looking at the stars. I mean, that's, which is yeah. weird. But yeah, well, then there was that, and there was planets in the Bible, and I'm like, oh, people are definitely going to see this now. But again, they didn't. But I wanted to elaborate on the Sagittarius to Orion thing, right? So okay. it's very hard for me, as you could imagine, to just jump on board with a claim to Mandela effect if it has anything involved with the sky and NASA has their hands in it, right? Because we all, we have to be aware that although there's a good portion of our community that doesn't know, well, NASA fakes everything and we can't believe what we're told. And like, if there's a change in the sky, we have to make sure it's really a change and not just a change in information. Blah, 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 right? I don't need to explain all this to you. Um, so when people talk about the Mandela effect to do with we used to be in the Sagittarius arm of the galaxy and now we're in the Orion Spur, which is a completely different location, right? At first, it's hard to have it resonate with me, you know, because, well, what they're telling us is fake. But I have to get past that, just like everybody else does that I'm trying to point this out to. And is there something deeper here? And when you go and dig deeper into that claimed Mandela effect... Now, I don't know, because I never paid enough attention to the sky. But I can tell you this much, Suso. People claim that we used to be in the Sagittarius arm of the galaxy. Now we're in the Orion, and it's a Mandela effect. Now, But you and I don't believe in outer space the way they do. Exactly. But that can still, even if outer space is completely fake or a presentation or whatever... There can still be a Mandela effect within the information we've been given. Correct? Yes, correct. So, I did a video, and um, I really wish I could give the proper person credit, because they totally dug up this information, and I found it on Facebook and grabbed it. I did credit them in my video, though. I did a video talking about the sun. Is the sun a Mandela effect? Is it a fake sun? Blah, 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 blah. And, and the whole thing about the Orion Sagittarius. Now, what's interesting is there was an article by NASA that talked about the Earth's location in the galaxy. And in this article, it talked about Earth being in the Sagittarius arm. And I was able to access this article from the Wayback Machine. And this was at like the end of 2017. Now, if you go to the same link and put it in the Wayback Machine and you change the dates to sometime in 2018, I don't know exactly how many months in, but several months later, and you put 2018, the same exact article will come up, but in the o only thing that's changed in it, it then says the Earth is in the Orion Spur, and it's the same fucking article. Nothing else has changed in it. So what does that tell me? So what does that tell me? Now, tells me that, again, I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at in the sky, and I know I've been lied to, and I don't believe they're space stories. However, what it tells me is it seems like there is a legitimate Mandela effect to do with the Sagittarius to the Orion. However, right, however, That Mandela effect, so like what are we looking at here with this changed article, right? So, so are we looking at the Mandela effect came in and changed this official record in the NASA archives to correlate with the current reality like it would change Probably. photographs and videos? For me, they edited it. You know why I say no, they edited it? Because they, edited. if they didn't edit it, if it was the Mandela effect that changed it, it would have changed it years before that, in my opinion, because people were talking about that change years before 2018. Right? People were talking about that in 2016. So if the Mandela effect changed it to correlate with reality. So that leads me to believe that NASA, 100%, NASA knows the Mandela effect is real and is in on the cover of. No shock. And so are a lot of other companies. There are a lot of companies. I mean, Skechers. Oh, God. <laughs> they're in on it. <laughs> Please. Publishers um, Clearinghouse. Fruit of the Loom. loom. Have you, have you seen Fruit of the Looms TikTok page? They just trolled the fuck out of us. I don't 
I have TikTok. So I don't. Uh, on, on Fruit of the Loom's TikTok page, they have a playlist where they just troll us about the cornucopia. They've got about 20 videos with a talking cornucopia talking about, I really wish I could have been in the logo, but I never made it and blah, blah, oh blah. Oh, my blah. God. Yeah, dude. Again, you haven't been watching my videos, Susan. <laughs> I'm busy, man. I do things. I go to uh, the hot springs all the damn time. I'm fucking relaxing. with you, man. Enjoying, you should be at the hot I'm springs. I'm enjoying though. physical reality yes. as best I know how. Yes, get off YouTube and go to the hot springs. I support that that's, idea. Isn't that isn't that the truth? And that's one of the reasons why I'm trying to get away. I'm like, I don't have to do this. I I could sit down and read a book. I got books to read, man. I could read a book. I don't have to sit here and do this. I enjoy this. I don't you know. Yeah. I, so I, I, I think NASA question. knows. NASA knows 100. percent Of course they know because NASA, CERN, uh, Brian Cox, Elon Musk, Neil deGrasse, and 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 Gordy Rose and his D-Wave computers. These guys are all part of one club. They're all gatekeeping our reality. Why can't people get that? They're all in on it. They're all in on it. They are. What are they gaining? I agree, but what they're, are they gaining? They're hiding fucking God, and they're hiding our true nature of reality, and they're hiding what we are and our potential. They gain a lot from it, because if we realize those things, they lose all control. That's my opinion. Just my take. They're going to lose all control. You can't hide God. At least you can't hide God. From They've been me. doing it well. I, I know you can't hide it from me, but you've been doing it well. <laughs> I mean... I see what I see what you're saying. I see what you're trying to do. I understand that. And you're talking about God. So you got and we got this eclipse coming. And Tom, Tommy and, says Elon Muskrat wants to probe Uranus, Suzo. Male or female? Elon? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, but do you either way, are you gonna let him probe Uranus? I mean, why did you ask that follow up question? A... You should have just said <laughs> I no. Trying, <laughs> I was trying to be funny. Um no, no you should have um, just said no. Even, <laughs> Listen, if I'm, if it's a chick and you're hot and, and we're in love, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to enjoy it, but if you want to go there, go there. I'm not going to enjoy it. No, we're talking about Elon, not a hot chick. He's going to probe your asshole, and you might be down no, with I, it. Oh, I thought this was somebody in chat. Elon. Yeah, Tommy. Are you talking TTT? Is he in the Yeah, chat? I'm talking TTT. Is talking about Elon probing Uranus, and you sound like you're down with it. And that's a little weird. No, no, I've been drinking, man. I'm an <laughs> I can't hear the question. That's not a good enough excuse, man. You could not you could give me enough beers. I don't know. You can't give me enough beers. <laughs> no, you better drug me and I better pass out. I better wake up with a, a sore ass. We're selling Bill we're selling we're sending Bill Cosby and Puff Daddy to your house. But no. That yeah. Not good. Hey, listen, you know what and you you're talking Puff Daddy and Bill Cosby. Wow. I was thinking, uh, I, I don't know these characters. I just kind of know the base story. But you don't know Bill Cosby? You've never heard of Bill Cosby till tonight? I actually saw Bill Cosby. Um, no. <laughs> okay. Not right. saw him. I saw him in a car, and I went, hey, Billy. I hey, might buy that you don't really know Puff Daddy, but I think you know Bill Cosby pretty well. well here, no, here, this is a person I really don't know, but I heard stories around him recently in the news, and I'm thinking this guy should do your rap song. Oh. It would be, be better than that little squeaky mouse voice you got when you're right. Oh, I, don't, I know I have no talent. So who, but who's going to do it? Jay-Z? Oh, little Wayne? The words were good. I was going P. Diddy. No, uh, P. Diddy's not going to do my rap song. That's not who I would pick. Are you kidding me? He can't rap for shit. Oh God, no, you better not. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what he does. I'm just assuming he raps because he, I'm racist. He fucks dudes <laughs> to get them in the business. Yeah, I heard all that stuff. That's just messed up. <laughs> I don't want nothing I, I, to do with I that. I don't know what's going yeah, on. No, in that. I don't yeah, know. he's not getting involved with those of reality. But isn't that the negative breaking down? Aren't they getting called out for everything that? I mean, it's not just. I mean, are they really, or is it just a stage like all the Epstein list and all that? Well, I mean, I saw two characters that I like go down. Two <laughs> actors. No, like Noble, Noble says, Nobleness D says, I'm already really close with Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> now, hey, Noble, good, come on to the show. Man. Good to Get see you, here. Noble, man. Noble, what are you doing? Get in here. <laughs> Can I send him a link? <laughs> yeah, he's welcome to come on, dude. I definitely appreciate I don't his work. Take it. 
and I'm afraid to touch anything. I don't know. Yeah, don't you're not very stream. computer savvy. You might kill this whole stream. Dude, I've never, I don't do Zoom. I don't know if he has Zoom. He doesn't I, need I, to have it. He just needs to click a link. He's fine. You know what? I think he's way more computer literate than you. And if you somehow manage to send him a Zoom link, I'm pretty confident he would figure it out. <laughs> I'm actually trying to figure it out. I'm buried. Yeah. What the we, fuck we, we, is that? Who's that guy with the stogie? What is that? I didn't even try and do that. I'm trying to find a link. I don't understand this. This is so weird. Why, why can't it be like StreamYard? This is better than StreamYard. StreamYard's audio sucks, dude. That's why we use this. StreamYard is terrible, really, for people that want a quality yeah. broadcast. But it is very convenient if you don't really know what you're doing. I can't, I can't send them the link unless I get... There's one place I was like, oh, that's funny. I could actually send a link to anybody I want. And, and I'm like... No, oh, no, no. I said you I could send a link to Noble, not anybody you want. <laughs> right, but I mean... Right, exactly. That, But I could have... But I'm like, no, I wouldn't do that to Brian. I, I wouldn't do that. And and you don't want to. Like, you don't really want to fuck with me right now. We're the same height, man. Yeah, I know. I'm not saying physically. I'm gonna <laughs> fucking do anything to you. I'm just saying. Oh no, bro. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. And that's why I said when I saw that thing, it's like, yeah, copy link. It's oh, like wow. you you can barely use AOL Messenger, and you think you're gonna troll me with some technology. Dude, it's like that's you're, when you're I met out of league, third, bro. <laughs> I met my third girlfriend on that. Well, are you kidding me? All on right. AOL, uh, let's hear that story. She want really? Because I'll do it. Don't think I won't tell you. Yeah, no, Noble <laughs> said he's tired, but bro, anytime you want to, uh, if you ever want to come on, bro, uh, that we'll, we'll do something. That'd be great. Uh, go ahead. Tell me the story. I don't think that's a good idea, Brian. I want to hear this. I want you to air all your can dirty we, laundry can we, right now. Can we do this privately, really? Because I. Yeah, we can do it privately, but right now we're live. So you give us what you can live. <laughs> oh, you're crushing me! You're just trying to trying to pump up your. I'm Look, not doing girl anything, came... bro. Actually, people are dropping from here because of you. And your oh, socks. because we're not talking about anything. Because our Suso sucks. Yeah. Is that yeah. Numbers are dropping yeah. fast, bro. Well, Very ask cool. me, ask me the right question then. Come on. All right, Suso. You're at the bar and somebody says, "Hey, Suso, I mm. fucking I fucking saw you on YouTube ranting about this crazy Mandela effect bullshit. What's that all about? What's your response? That's never happened. I don't know. Oh, I'm putting you in a hypothetical situation. Somebody's seen your videos, they know about the Mandela effect, they walk in your bar, they think it's bullshit. What do you say to con to, to, to I don't know what I mean to convince them, but what do you say to at least pique their interest? What do you go to? What do you go like, to? Like, are they already coming up to me and denying it? Yeah, they're already coming up to you and denying it, and what do you come back with? No, I, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not dealing with it. <laughs> I, I, I don't have the time. I've been through right, that. Right. I don't... You know what? You're probably right. That's a good answer. I like that answer. I don't care. I, I yeah. really do. Like, oh, sorry. I'll be right back. Can I get you a drink? Can I can I get you something? Because, you know, I, I got some stock in do, it. Do. I I, some, I, well, we started the stream. You seemed a little like um, you're not really that happy. You're kind of happy. Like, why aren't you happy, man? Let's be happy. Who, me? What? Yeah, happy. I'm happy. What are you okay. talking about? All right. All right. You seem like you weren't really I just, that I happy just have a it. lot of I things were stressing you out. You acted like you had a lot of trials and tribulations. Lately. I have trials and shit going on in my life. I've worked through them uh, the best way I can. I'm very happy with that. I, things seem to wor have worked out, and we're good. All right, back, cool. back to reality. Awesome. It happens. Yeah. Um, you should come visit me, bro. We'll hang out by the lake. It'll be cool. Tommy came uh, here, you know. Tommy was here a few weeks ago. I, I saw that video, and that scared the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because Tommy's out of control. I mean, God, you. I mean, you guys were like doing some stuff, and I'm like, I, I'm not dealing with that. I can't. Listen, oh, I come oh. visit you. We'll smoke some weed. We'll, well hold on, hold on. Let's 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 <laughs> back it up for everybody, because the way you made it sound, 
Nothing was I'm not THC. Sound- Hold on. Nothing was not THC related. Like, you were doing some stuff. It, there was no crack. There was no cocaine. There was no pills. There was nothing like that. It was weed and dabs and things yeah, like that. Yeah, they weren't, like, shooting up or anything. No, nah, dude. We don't fuck with that. <laughs> no. Yeah. Dude, we'll go out on the boat. We'll fucking chill out on the lake. I live on the yeah. lake now. It's fantastic. Did you know that? Uh, yes, I do know about the change because of that whole show you did with Tommy. I mean, I knew about the room before there, your house, your new apartment before that. A couple yeah, of man, I changed my whole life again. Another big life change, you know? I decided after doing a few events with Steffi that like, okay, when I go back to Charlotte or, you know, North Carolina, I want to learn how to be a bartender. So when I help you, I can be more effective. Also, I need a new job and trade. You- also, I don't trust internet and the income off it and all that, so I want to learn how to do something. And here we are. And now I'm not only a bartender, but I know how to roll sushi now as well. So here we are. All right. Did we open the phones? Somebody call in. 978 Better have. You're the one with the controls. Well, we know you're not. We go, hey, listen, while uh, while D's here, while Nobleness is here, we, yeah. I think we should probably shout out Scarab's channel again. Yeah, dude, didn't we just shout it out 30 minutes ago? But you're welcome to. Yeah, again. but he wasn't here. I want to make sure, you know, because Fizzy's busy, so somebody had to spy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm not worried about spies, dude. I'm just fucking breaking balls. I, I, I'm just kidding. Oh, God. But we ain't talking about nothing that important, right? So what we should, should we be talking about? Well, what listen, Suso, so it's five and a half hours in, so it's totally acceptable that we're just shooting the shit right now. Really? But oh, if you want to back know. it up, if you want to back it up to a deeper thought, it's totally cool. You said Mandela effect something. What do you want to talk about? Well, wait, if we, if we can just back it up to a deeper thought, I'd rather go Eclipse. So let's talk about the Eclipse. What, what what do you got? What do you know? Tell me. I don't. You know. <laughs> I don't know much. <laughs> tell me what you well, know. I'll tell you. Okay, I'll tell you what I know. Ready? What I know besides like I don't know. What I know is a bunch of people freaking out over the eclipse is nonsense. It's fear mongering. Eclipses come. They happen. They're a function of this reality. So globe earthers and flat earthers and all y'all guys can argue over like exactly what it is. But for me, it's a function of the reality. It's not man-made. It's going to happen tomorrow. The world's not going to end. Here we'll be again. I am interested, though, to hear from people about um, eclipses correlating with an increase in Mandela effects. And I know you aren't really so much wanting to talk about that earlier. Um, Some people I had on the stream, I think, last show did notice a pickup in changes, like, after the last eclipse. I'm kind of on board with that. Not like hey, I'm all signed on, but I like that train of thought. I, I I think maybe there's definitely a correlation there, but I really don't know, man. I mean, how do you track when there's a spike in Mandela effects? It's really hard, right? Like, did we just perceive the spike? Did we just notice it? Has it already happened? Then there's all this shit. Oh, they turned CERN back on and they did all this and blah, 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 blah. And it's just like, I just think the reality is always fluid. And I try not to, like, jump on all these extremes. I don't know. I feel like I'm just rambling. Why don't you chime in? I like your whole thing about reality is fluid, and it's just one reality. Because throughout the entire time, I've been into the Mandela effect. Maybe not in the beginning, because I was looking at different things. Tommy, get up here. Don't be such a yellow belly coward. Okay, go ahead, Susan. Um... You were you well. You were calling Tommy a bitch <laughs> backstage. So go ahead, Susan. I go did ahead. not. What is he? He's such a. You're. I don't know who the, who the bigger troll is. I don't know which one. <laughs> <you're talking about. laughs> um. Now seriously, what the eclipse? About? Uh, basically, does the eclipse bring on more changes? Is kind of the conversation. I've is heard there stories? I've heard people saying that, and they're correlated with that. It hasn't actually, I haven't noticed if it happened with me. If it happened with me, I haven't noticed. I mean, I could tell you that 
I'm aware of the blood moons when that happened in 15, the, the eclipse thing that was called blood moons or whatever. All right, I, let me I, stop. I, let me stop you there with all these moons. Do you think there's an increase in the frequency of this shit? Because I mean, all these eclipses and all these different types of moons, and I know we weren't always paying attention to all of it, but it just we, seems like we, it's ramped up. Right. Exactly. Are we just aware of it because of technology? Well, it's like I brought up before about Haley's Comet, which is now Halley's Comet, and Edmund Haley is now Edmund Halley. But besides, did, the, uh, besides that aspect nope. of the spelling change, hold on. Besides that aspect of the spelling change, I remember being brought up, it was about every 80 years or so that that comet would supposedly come by. Whether that's true or not, whatever. That was the story. In the last decade or so, I'm hearing about Halley's Comet coming by like repeatedly. Like, what the fuck is going on here? And all these moons and the and the Cheshire Cat Moon and all this shit, dude. I don't know, bro. It's suspect well, I, to me. I got into that five, six years ago. That, what, that the, we're, the We're All Mad Here Moon, that, we'll call it? <laughs> no, that all the moons were like named and shit. And I'm like, I never heard of this before. But, I don't know, you said Halley. Well, what do you think? Hillary. Well, I mean, come on, dude. Ha ha Haley's Comet is now Halley's. Bill Haley in the comments is now Bill Halley. Bill Haley still. And his comments, even though it was the comments, and he's named after Haley's no. Comet, which is now Halley's right. Comet. <laughs> mm -hmm. What do I think? I mean, really, dude? Let's go there. <laughs> what, yeah, dude. Did Hillary, is Hillary's Clinton name changed? Uh, Hillary. Oh, Hillary's dude. It, no, dude. Hillary Clinton's it, name changed many up? times. It, dude, not did only it did it flip-flop. Her name flip flopped many times during that whole election shit. Yeah, dude, I saw that. I agree. One L to two L to one L to two Ls. Totally. Is that, what you, is that what you remember? I don't know what I remember at this point. I know it's hey, one. Well, hold on. Somebody wants to talk to you, fucking crazy ass. Who wants to talk to me? Dose of reality. You're all at Brian and the man who built Tataria back in the fucking before the last reset. Who's this? <laughs> This is I Love to Skate. Jack hey, I Love to Dan. Skate. I Love to Skate. You're here with Brian and the man who attended the last World's Fair. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. Thank you, guys. It's been a fun night. It's been a lot of fun. Love those, love those Jeopardy Mandela effects. Um, yeah, you guys should definitely do a duo. Bar what's, what, what's, your biggest man, what's your biggest Mandela effect and what's your go-to Mandela effect to try and like show people something's happening? Depends on if they're from Tartaria <laughs> <laughs> or now. <Nassau. laughs> yeah. No, really. The Bible, the Bible was a trip. Uh, my mom's 87 and she thought I was really talking craziness. And then I showed her and the planet blew her mind. We weren't allowed to say planet when I was growing up. It wasn't allowed in the house. You weren't allowed. So that, that's interesting. Why weren't back in the day, why weren't you allowed to say planet growing up in the house? Because it was a weird Southern Baptist deal. It was like voodoo, saying voodoo, or <laughs> it was something like that. Like, oh, don't don't say planet. Don't you know? It wasn't like we got in trouble. But it's like oh, I can't hear a planet. And I'm like, well, how about unicorn? Because <laughs> they're both in the Bible now. So that was trippy to her. But she she got her head around it, and uh, she'll now. You know, because she's 87, so sometimes she won't go to church every Sunday, but she'll listen to ministers. She's like, they're 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 saying more and more scriptures wrong, you know. Mm -hmm. And she's not like a flaming uh, Bible thumper, but she's 87 and she's had that faith, you know, her whole life. So that that was a big deal. But then um, the Black Tom. So oh um, man, my number one baby. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what's really trippy was I lived in Munich for three years, and I learned all about the history, you know, because I was with, like, Germans. And uh, and so whenever I learned about the Black Tom on your show, I'm, like, reaching out to my friend, Stefan, and I'm like, Stefan, you know about Black, Black Tom? And he's like, what? And I'm like, yeah. And he, so that was a total trip. Um but you know what I'm noticing lately before these Mandela effects happen? That I'll hear, like, 
afterburners in the sky, like for a long time, for a minute or two. And I'm just what, wondering. What do you mean afterburners mean. in the sky? Is that like a sonic boom? What do you mean by that? Something similar to that. But so I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I live like in an older p part. And so the airport, mm, I don't know, maybe eight or nine miles away. So depending upon the directions, you know, they, they fly out of whatever. And we also have military planes here as well. But um, but I'll literally hear like an afterburner, almost like an F-18, after an F-18 takes off. But then there's no F-18 in the sky. You know, and you can definitely mm -hmm. tell when they used to do their exercises where they were. But there aren't any. And then after that, then I'll start noticing Mandela shifts. So it's kind of trippy. I don't know. Maybe that's just a, a nuance that I'm noticing, but I'm wondering if anybody else has ever brought that up. I mean, recently, I should say. This has been going on for about the last year and a half. Very interesting. I haven't heard anybody else bring that up yet. Hmm. What about you, Susto? I've been calling you Mr. Dude because I didn't know your name. but Mr. Dude! I we just call him Lex, Lex Luthor. You can call him Lex. <laughs> oh, um, you're killing me. I don't know. Oh, are you upset <laughs> that I call you Lex Luthor? Are you upset? No, I don't get I, upset. I, 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 I could call you Sinbad instead or Joey Rocha. Take your pick. You, you can call me Lex. I don't care. Hi, call Lex. Me, you... <laughs> hey, hey, what's up? No, I don't get upset <laughs> unless you drug me. That's about it. That pissed me off. <laughs> I don't know. No. Thank you all um, for your time. Do you have any question? Any other questions for me? No. I, other than like, when was the first time you realized that this reality was fluid? Well, I I've been questioning it since nineteen ninety nine. What happened in wow. 1999 for you? Well, just it. Okay, so earlier I posted my aunt's 70, and she has she's like super smart, super sharp. She's like one of those you know master's degree in math numbers. She's super fast, but and she watches baseball and all the statistics and everything. But things were changing for her, and. She would share these things with me, and I'm like, what? And she's like, yeah, I think my memory's going. This has been going on for a long time. Like, she kept, she kept thinking her memory was going in. She's even, like, picking up her musical instrument again to try to get her brain brain uh, firing the right way. But this is what she said. And I'm like, well, what about... Now, the other side of my family is Catholic, right? Yeah. They're, like, really staunch Catholic. So, all of them. And I'm like, well, what about, you know, Isaiah 11, 6? And she's like, you know, most Catholics know catechism, but we don't know what version. And I'm like, what? Like, what? But she knew, like, the Lord's Prayer or whatever it might be, right? And so uh, she's like, well, I don't know. So she's looking through the Catholic, our family Catholic Bible with everybody's birth records and everything in it. It's not, that's not what it should be. But she cannot get her head around Mandela effect, even though she's being affected by it. Yeah, because, by it. So she, yeah, see, yeah. that's... So, that's the weird thing. No, Go ahead, Suso. I was just going to say, the shame of it is, a lot of people, I don't know if she's diagnosed with anything or anything, you know, but what is it, Alzheimer's? No, no she's not, not. She's not. Not not diagnosed with anything, and that's the thing. That's That could happen. I mean, eventually, that could happen. I think that's awful, because they're going through the Mandela effect and these people might have it stronger. They might see it all the time. Maybe you get older, you just start really seeing what's going on. I, I don't know, but I just, I just think it's a shame for the people that are in hospitals that are in there because they, their memories are going or they're experiencing the Mandela effect and they think their memory memories are going. I, I don't know. I just think that that's a shame. But there's no diagnosis. I mean, no. How, no, how long? She, how long has this been yeah, going on for? Her? She's seventy now. She's seventy, but I mean, she rides. She lives in San Diego, right there on the beach. So she rides her bike five or ten miles a day. She's not on any medication. She and my uncle. I mean, they travel. Wow. They She do tap dancing. I mean, and she's, she's seeing she's, changes. 
<laughs> so. But for like 20 years. And then so it started for me in 1999 because you know how it's almost like with the yield sign. You're like, and, you know, you weren't on the Internet. You know, it just wasn't that time. So I yeah. started seeing things, questioning it way back then. What did you notice way back then? Like, um, so this is a lot of changes people noticed back then. John Deere is one I've heard people talk about noticing in the seventies. You want to talk about John Deere? Oh, why you noticed that a long, long time? Ellis Island. It was Ellis Island. All right. Because we we had Britannica, the encyclopedia, and so we were we were pulling out, and that's that's how we that was our first thing in nineteen ninety nine with Britannica. Sorry, go ahead, John Deere. Suso, John, oh God, Deere. Not, John Deere for me, Jesus, no, I, that thing shifted for me so many times. Um, I had a shirt hanging up in the back of my little display. I had a shirt that I can't find now because I can only find it when there's no E on the end. That's the only time I have the shirt is when there's no E. When, I, when there's an E on the end, I don't have the shirt. That's apparently that's what's going on now. What do you mean? So you, you, you keep know. finding a shirt in your house that has the residue? The old way? I don't know. I don't even know what the old way was. Well, the old way is without the E at the end. Okay. And yeah, I remember it with I, the E on the end. Yeah, and it is on the end now. Yeah. And I would say, uh, I don't know what which the original would be. I just know that it was there, and then it wasn't, and then it was there. And I would do shows. I would have the shirt hanging behind me with other things and it just i would say about three weeks ago there was no e on the end for me for me maybe a month there was absolutely no e and i was discussing it with people i was talking i'm telling you i think it's i think if i went through the last 10 videos i did i bet i could find it i do it in the in the uh trivia thing but it's (laughs) it's had an e now in this reality for years so knowing how the mandela effects works or you know we don't really know but i'm telling you I, right now, i'm thinking your videos if you address the fact that it has no 30 e, would probably be disappeared from reality it probably did it, it's yeah. either not up there or or i'll be saying something different the thing is about a month ago three weeks whatever there was no e i was talking with people about it and then Last night, I believe it was last night when I was on Dan's show, we were talking about it. And, you know, it it, it blows my mind. I, it just blows my mind. I mean, why is anything blowing my mind at this point? I mean, it, this is just the universe or whatever trying to communicate with me. I, that's the only thing I can come up with because there's – why – would I absolutely know there's no E on the end? And I was disturbed about it. I was pissed. I was like, wait, there should be an E here. There's no E on the end. It really upset me. And I just blew it off because I'm like, you know what? I'm not getting back into it. Apparently, I should have. I should have took pictures, videos. I should have took uh, three millimeter cameras. What are the it, what are the fucking pictures and videos going to do for you, though? You know that they're going to change. If they, it, well, I'm, I was thinking three millimeter might not. No, fuck you. You know it's going to change. Mm. <laughs> whatever. Here's whatever. Question, I mean, guys. what about NASA? Okay, so NASA being fake in it. Self could be a Mandela effect. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Well, yes, I, mean, I, I would love for you. To, I would love for you to elaborate going. on it. Uh, elaborate. I know where she's going. So that maybe we actually did like, live on a <laughs> That's. I'm telling yeah. you, it's a possibility. Yeah, it was like JFK thing. It was like JFK, NASA. It was plausible. It was very plausible. And my dad, you know. He always like would talk to me about stuff. He was the one who made me read 1984, um, and he said this is going down. I mean, he knew it. He already was watching it happen, right? So it was. So when I remember hanging out with my dad talking about different things, JFK, NASA, it, there was that reality. But then there were things that my dad would like call BS on, like. NFL football or hockey or whatever it might be, you know, there were different things he would just call it on. He didn't hold back telling me about it. So, but the NASA deal, 
and like JFK, all of that, it was like, it was so, it, there was so much gravity there. Do you, you understand what I'm saying to you? So, right. And so it you said gravity. Like, so now I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it just was very plausible. It was, it did not, I mean, my dad would have totally called Let me, me let, let's, let's, let's slow it down and break it down. What was very plausible? That, the replay that, of the coverages. The what? Go ahead. Susan. No, hold on, Susan. Hold on. Let me get what she's saying clearly. What was plausible? The replay when you would go over it historically. My dad was a history buff. The replay of what? The JFK assassination was plausible. I don't. I, well, uh, well, okay. I'm just going to start with saying NASA. It okay. didn't look like a bunch of phony in the desert. Uh, so, so your opinion is that the photographs and, and evidence of the moon landing and all these other things uh, look more clownish now than they did in the original instance of reality? 100%. It's so like I, that's I, a Mandela I, effect. And I could say that could be a Mandela effect, but I would make a counter argument, which I would side with. And I would say it's always been clownish and always looked that way. And we would just never had our eyes open wide enough to see it. And I could see where, like, we could fall on either side of it. So let's she had a different She had a different perspective. Yeah, 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 she yeah. had someone telling her. Oh, and okay. showing her. Yeah, right? yeah, let's hear it more again. Yeah, I'm, I'm sitting there with my dad. And, you know, my dad, I mean, my parents had me when they were older. And he's very educated. So, um, and he, you know... He's a great big Irish guy, and he'd be very quiet. But when he would share stuff, he was on mark, you know. I mean, he could tell great jokes and stuff. He could BS, but but when he said, you know, I talk, what I one thing I want to teach you is to think. And so he would talk to me about stuff like that, you know, like that. Like with JFK, it's a totally different deal now from the car to now them saying that, I don't know if you watched the guy that was a producer that did JFK X. I'm trying to think uh, something about reality. Uh, I don't know, but I know, I know the whole thing changed from the car to the black and white to the color to the, yeah, there's a million changes with it, but go ahead. Yeah. But this guy presents it. If you've ever seen JFK X that now there was a foil wrap that uh, Jacqueline jumped on the back of the car to grab. And so it's, it's, and you could see it. So, so now that video is out and it changes the whole dynamics in that reality. So besides the car changing, besides, you know, all of this, uh, that in the original version of it, now it's morphed into a completely different outcome where from the videos that are now, all, the multiple videos that are now existing, it was looking like he faked his death. Yeah. Have you guys seen that? Because, and so see, that's completely different. So it's almost from the NASA that I remember watching the replays on, uh, discussing it with my dad, asking him questions um, about whatever it was he would he was real patient. He would answer those questions. Watching the JFK and going over that as well, it was the same. It was like both of those were like reality, like real. But mm -hmm. now it seems like NASA's like totally like a sham. And, and JFK, it's like, come on, please. Yeah. So it's like both of them have morphed, morphed to the point to where it's just laughable. Yeah. So I, I just have to give my honest take here, of course. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. I, 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 as on board as I am with the Mandela effect, of course, I just think this shit's always been laughable and we just never really opened our eyes to it more and more and more. We're given this completely fake script about this reality. The JFK assassination, the moon landings, 9-11, and nearly everything we've ever seen on the screen has been a complete fabrication. And us awakening to that has been a slow and painful process. And, and here we are. Um, but, you know, could the Mandela effect be involved with that? Yeah, sure. Um, I just tend to think we weren't awake enough yet.
as far as JFK and NASA goes. And I know people say, oh, well, how, you know, the Earth used to be a globe, and now it's flat, and it's a Mandela effect, and uh, all of that stuff kind of bothers me. I just think we're all kind of starting to open our eyes more. Well, see, what happened to me was when I moved to Munich, mm -hmm. I was there for three years in the mid to later 90s. And when I came back, that's like right around the time when 1999 was getting ready to happen. And so then I kept thinking, like for the yield signs, different things like that, that I was noticing that maybe I was misremembering, you see? Yeah, yeah. So, so I don't know. I mean, um, I, I believe, I'm, I'm on mark with you. I believe that uh, we've always been in some fluid reality, but, um, but, you know, we were distracted, it, we, and we didn't even think that that would be, I mean, who would actually think that's a reality? Yeah, yeah I, I, I think we've always been in a fluid reality, and the people that control the physical realm have been trying to hide that, and yeah. again, that's another reason why I think this whole charade that they've been putting on about JFK and NASA, is, it's been fake since the beginning. So if, like, let's just say it wasn't fake since the beginning. So what, what does that mean we believe? Well, if it wasn't fake since the beginning, that means we believe that the election process was legitimate and this guy got in that was like against the system and stood up to it and they killed him. And I just can't believe that. I just don't believe that. It's like, it's always been a ruse. It's always been controlled. In my opinion, of course, I could be wrong. It'd be so much more fun. It'd be so much more fun if, if we actually did shift timelines. <laughs> yeah, and who says that we're not? I mean, ever so slightly, almost like a Tetris or or like a Rubik's Cube or something. You know, where it's just moving the colors to where everything matches up. Because, I mean, I haven't always noticed Bible changes. And in the summer, all of us always went to vacation Bible school or, you know, something like that. So we didn't have to keep relearning our Bible verses. And then it's almost like that piece of it gone into hyper hyperspace, if you will. I don't know if you guys have noticed the same thing or when you notice like the first changes in, in the scriptures. As far as the Bible goes, anytime I noticed a change I, I don't believe when it first happened i was into the mandela effect i don't think it was around or for me or whatever so i just assumed that it was just i don't i, I don't even know what i assumed they changed it or it was a yeah. different different bible or it's just i'm in the same church and they're saying you know different things i'm like oh, okay and there was a couple of times where they would bring us down I, why am i having these memories now um they would bring us down into the church and we would they would have us recite a prayer or whatever and then they would, they would tell us what was going to change and this is what this is how we're going to say it now what do you mean and we would just go ahead i know i'll tell you what um what's that's that's wild that's no, I'm having these memories now, and it's blowing my mind, too. I'm like, wow, they did do that. They would say, okay, just for something simple, they would just say, okay, when you end that prayer, don't say amen. Don't say amen. Just end the prayer. Um, father, another one was father? very possible. I think that might be mass, it. In mass, some of them, like, peace be with you. And, and with your spirit, right? That, it was never in with your spirit. It was, and also with you. So, yeah. But, and also with you, yeah, exactly. and that's changed. Yeah. What's the change, change there? I don't know that one. What is that one? Well, it's like the priest will say, see, I'm trying to remember exactly how it all first came out to me. but And, and also but, with you. I've never heard of this one. Yeah. So that Peace was my memory. You. And also with you. Peace, peace be, with, be you with, you. with you, and and, and the priest would you. say, "Peace be with you," and the rest of the, in the Congress or whatever would say, "And also with you." And now it's what? Yeah, and now it's and with and with your spirit, and with your spirit. 
Peace be with you. And with your spirit, it's how everybody else responds. Yeah. At least in the parishes I've been to. So, and I was like, what? And then my aunt, my 70 year old aunt, I was, because I went to mass with her in San Diego. I'm like, what? She's like, oh, that's uh, Vatican II. I'm like, BS, that's not Vatican II. That's not a change, man. So, what denomination? What denomination is that? What the, what, what denomination are you listening to? Well, where what I what I was just sharing with you is Catholic, right? But Catholic, I've okay, and that's where I was getting it from as well. That's why I wanted to know. That's yeah, what, yeah. I'm getting yeah, yeah. it from so the Catholics. That's, yeah. So in the various parishes now, I can't remember if it was in San Diego or if it was in Oklahoma or even Germany. I can't remember which one, but I do remember going. Wait a minute. And then when I asked my aunt about it, it was like she had forgotten that. I'm like, because I, I was with my daughter and she was much younger then, and I was sharing with her. Now remember, you know, this is what you say. And it, so my daughter said it the old school way, and it was like that wasn't it at all. And so I was asking my aunt, and she said, "Oh yeah, that's Vatican too." I'm like, "No oh, shit, that is not Vatican. That's that's, that's way. That's like a change. Like when did this happen?" You know, like, I couldn't get my head around it. And that was even <laughs> a long time ago. That was like, oh, that was like 2007 or eight. Wow. A long time. Yeah. Long time. So hey, we listen. talked about, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I'm, I'm ready to stop winding this bad Larry down. We've been going for like six okay. hours, but you can certainly finish your thought and then we'll get out of here. No, I was just going to say that, that for me, I think anyone, because so many people perhaps do know scriptures or whatever it might be, like Isaiah 11, 6, the lion and the lamb, people can revert to that almost across the board when, uh, for a commonality, you know, for a common roadmark, if you will. I think that's, that's that if people know that now if they don't then you know it's hard for them to go back to that place maybe they're jewish or atheist or whatever it might be but uh for me i think that's always a good place to kind of figure out like when did you first notice that you know changes were happening that i that's kind of a solid thing because people may not know john deere or whatever but anyway thank you thank you all so much for allowing me to come on to your yeah. show i always enjoy them you nice guys meeting make me you. laugh Nice to meet you as well. Yeah, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you all. All Have right. A great evening and happy. Hey, no fear for the solar eclipse. Just definitely no fear. No fear ever no fear. on this channel. Nope. Just riding, riding the wave. That's right. That's right. Thank you so much for calling in. Have a good night. I'm not. So, I'm not not looking at the eclipse because of fear. I'm doing sound, something different. Damn sound well. like it. You sound like it a little bit. Uh, you know, it's all the weed. Don't blame the weed on you being a bitch. All right, it's the alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely the alcohol, and I know that. <laughs> all right, let's get out of here. I am hungry. I want to pass out. I got to work. Wait, a, long wait week. a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, jeez. What's up? Well, you know how you want. You know how you want to end this. You need to promote something. Tell everybody where your channel is and all that, and we can get out of here. No, no, no. I don't have to promote Scarab Performance. What about him? <laughs> Listen, you're gonna be I, on there. I, Are you doing another show? You can promote it. I when he does a show uh, Friday or Saturday night, I'm on. I'm on. I'm there. I'm there for him. Why don't I you drop it. a link? Why don't you drop a link in the chat to his channel? Well, I was just kidding. Really, I don't want to touch anything. I, I, I will. I'll <laughs> drop a link for his channel. Are you kidding me? Oh my God. I, I, I just I just thought that link that I sent you would be a nice way to exit out of here. It's just one of those previews. Oh, I'm not prepared to play anything else. I am ready to crash. So oh, okay. All right. Plug your All channel, right. plug Dan's channel, plug whatever you want. Oh, and I'll see you guys Wednesday night. I have a live and yeah, I have an interview. Right, let's get out of here. I don't know if it's live, but I'll let you know. I have a show Wednesday night, uh, Mandel Effect interview. All right, it's going to take me about a half hour to plug anything. So Yeah, really? we know, we all know that you grew up in built Tataria and you're not computer literate. All right, give me one second. I got this. I got this. Just 
just talk for three more. Yeah, talk for two seconds. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I'm here with the boomer named Suso. I'll be back Wednesday night with an interview. I think I'll be live, but it yeah. might be pre recorded. And either way, I'll be back next weekend with a live show for everybody. I'll be working all week. I don't know what Suso, I mean, Lex Luthor will be doing, maybe waxing his head with Mr. Clean. Uh, other than that, are you good, bro? Go. I'm ready to crash, bro. What do you got, bro? What, what do you got? What do you got? I want to go to bed. <laughs> I, 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 I put one in. I'm going to put mine in. Nobody, you don't want to. I mean, Suso. I, and you know what's funny? You know what sucks? You can, If you go type in Suso in YouTube, you, you never get to my channel. Got a good 10 what is it? Just a bunch, a bunch of Italian dudes grabbing their junk and selling pizza? There there are other Suso channels. Would you think? <laughs> I mean, is that amazing? Yeah, I would, dude. <laughs> All right. Check out Suso's Awakening interview. 